And we're live, Painkiller Already, episode 236 with our guest, Jericho. This episode of PK <laughs> is brought to you by Authors on Acid, the latest and greatest and the funniest new game to be sweeping your app store today. So check out Authors on Acid. There is a link in the description, and we'll talk more about them later in the show. Yep. There's a code on the side you can scan while you're watching us. Yes, Do you that. Can. It's not a code to There's give you a thing. discount because it's free. You'd be a fool not to download it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where do we want to go to next? What were we just talking about before the show? It seemed, well, I remember we were talking about the shredder, oh, my the dog. Um, we went a lot of places. Gay people. Uh, it, 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 it's totally my fault. Like, it, so yeah, I no. wasn't ready to do the show on time. I had some Woodycraft emergency I had to deal with, and these guys have just been riffing for like an hour and a half, waiting for me. Could have been playing Counter-Strike. Well, bronze. I was, I I was playing Counter-Strike. I played a little Civ, if I'm being honest. I sat here uncomfortably. I played with my auto blow. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm cool. still, I'm still, that's like the first time that I, I didn't even know that kind of product like existed. Like I thought that was what I like, yeah, dude, I've got, you know, I've got myself like, uh, look at that thing. It's all right. I have two. <laughs> hey, Tucker, Tucker, what kind of doll's penis house? has been in there? <laughs> <laughs> I just like, uh, I wish they would just make it. What is that like? What kind of doll? Hold it back up, Kyle. Cause I want to, I, I know it looks like a it looks like a, a bigger fleshlight. What kind of doll does it look like? Doll's mouth. D O L L. Yeah, I. What do you mean? What oh. kind of doll's mouth? When you're walking through a store and you see children's dolls, as I'm sure you often do, as we all do, what kind <laughs> of mouth does that look like? What kind of doll? I I don't I don't know. It looks it looks like a fish to me. I don't know what kind of what you're insinuating. It looks like a cabbage patch kid is sucking your cock. Right, well, see, see, here's the thing: is I've never been like face to face with a cabbage patch kid enough to like analyze its lips. Oh, I've never sexually fantasized about cabbage patch. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm so morally superior to you, Taylor, <laughs> Mr. Fucking Cabbage Patch Masturbator. Oh. Yeah, that's strawberry shortcake. <laughs> no. That is Ew. the best one. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, but yeah, we were talking about uh, segways, <laughs> Billy Mays. Dead people. My yeah, dog. that goes right into. Although, I want I do want to say the last two times I've come on here, I've been forced to watch like really terrible things, like really miserable things. So it'd be awesome if we had one episode where I didn't see somebody or multiple people get murdered in front of my eyes. I offer no guarantees. No, no. no guarantees. <laughs> yes. We're yeah. gonna end up there. Somebody's getting burned alive. Great. <laughs> I'm ready. So I guess like, you want to talk about gay marriage first? I was going to say is. some what I consider to be good news. We could do a happy topic. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Supreme Court just ruled that gay people can get marriage. And it is now, if I understand this right, the law of the land across all of America nearly permanently. Yeah. It's yes. actually, there's no way to repeal it without like a, what is it? It's a constitutional vote. They have to do like some crazy An like, amendment, right? Yeah, it's like a 70, 30 crazy shit. Yeah, that's it's not going to happen. It might even be more with that, more than that. It might be like 80, 20. I don't know. I guess the Supreme Court could rule again in the future, though, if, you know, the justices change. You get more conservative and fewer uh, liberal like, yeah. justices. You know, I, I, I often... actually don't think that's it's... possible. I don't think the Supreme Court can then like just be like, yo, by the way, about that ruling, like let's just take that one up. And That's not a thing? Like you couldn't overturn Roe v. Wade with another Supreme Court ruling? I sure. feel like you could. Well, it's e it's got to be one way. It's either got to be a, con a constitutional Scared amendment or it's got to be another vote by the Supreme Court. One of those things has to... Because they've um, they, they've changed things, their amendments and such. Yeah, I just I just figured the only way you could do it was with like a constitutional amendment. Like we need I to go figured. back and watch that cartoon. I'm just a bill. Just we need to go back <laughs> through there and pay fucking attention this time so we can figure this mess out. And not just be like, get off my TV. I want to see Incredible Hulk. In any case, <laughs> maybe that's uh, me. yeah. It's a, it's great news for like for, for for everyone, I think. And it, and it was about time because I don't know if you pay attention to like uh, Reddit, but every time some lesser country, if you if you take my drift, uh, would legalize gay marriage, I'd be like, Jesus, Ireland, they're leaving us behind. Yeah, like Ireland and Mexico, and like Canada's like, had it for ten years. They're just like. All right, cool guys. Like, cool I feel like Saudi Arabia and Egypt are gonna do it, and we're still lagging behind. <laughs> it's just like it's embarrassing. So only, it was. I had a Scottish guy. So we did the Woodycraft team building event, and one of the guys I flew in was from Scotland. And our general consensus was that, like, in terms of um, social issues, we're maybe ten to fifteen years behind the UK. But yeah. in terms of like some economic stuff, and of course military stuff, we lead the way. So, yeah. 
Silver yeah. lining. Military. Woohoo! That's our swinging dick. <laughs> it really is a big. But like now dick that gay marriage is legal, wouldn't it be like not good, but wouldn't it be a little bit funny if like new groups started popping up? Like one step closer. I want to marry my toaster. I want to marry my horse. I want to marry my. Bullfrog, which is like. Gotta be careful there. See, that's the argument that conservatives will sometimes make, and it infuriates. Uh, yeah. Like, like anyone who's gay, because it's like you could, or you compare what I do with my with my husband to fucking a dog, and it's like, well, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying, like, where do I we mean, draw the line? But yeah, I think I don't think we argument. draw it anywhere. I think yeah, if you want to marry a turtle, marry yeah. a turtle. Go like you're not gonna your... affect me. Go fuck your car's tailpipe. Like, that's a thing you want to do. If that makes you happy, go for it. You I'm know? a little more judgy in this thing. I, I feel like whatever it is you're fucking, like, we, we should get its consent. Look, once you put a ring on that hoof right, or, or feather or whatever, that's, that's your business. <laughs> okay, okay, now let's break no, no, that no, no. down. Like, with the hoof thing, and you guys have heard this before, with the hoof yeah. thing, probably whatever you're fucking has to be into it. Well, it's but a baby deer. What if, you're, what if you're a baby deer fucker? I don't even want like to get just, into like, like you're just watching Bambi just really stroking like, it. I don't want this <laughs> you're that to guy. be a thing. I was gonna say with Woody, what what I was, you know, I was just being sarcastic. There, there's like a very clear line, and it's like, is the thing a human being? Well, then it can't legally sign this document, so there's not even like an <laughs> argument for it. Like, you, like you might love it, but like you're not getting. What I don't their need discussing is. But they're no. not even they're not even talking no. about like the the like is it okay? It's just like in the eyes of the law, you get the benefits of other married traditional married couples. So it's like oh. if your person's dying, go to the deathbed, but they're not going to let a horse in the ER. You just put the paw oh, in Oh, now you're being specious. I'm <laughs> You're right, I am. <laughs> fuck your horse, Woody, but only oh, in your own time and in your own business. I can't fuck my, my horse. Children. I'm still in the refractory period from the previous time. <laughs> don't I... fuck my, don't fuck your horse in front <laughs> of my children. I feel like I feel like uh, certain animals you should be able to marry. Like if you wanted to marry a dolphin, I'd be cool with that. Or a gorilla, I definitely would. Like, panda? Like, no. Well, I mean somebody needs to be fucked. Someone needs to fuck a panda? Right? No, but like, like that's fucking. If you want to fuck a panda, like go for it. Like if you, I mean, but the panda's gotta like come on to you. I'm just saying, like marriage for like there is no arg. It's just it, what it is. Is it's are you allowed to have the same benefits as like a married couple, which is like you know tax benefits and like uh, you know ability to go see people on their deathbed. It's not even like uh, is it right to be able to marry a dolphin. It's just. In no way, shape, or form will dolphin ever be able to be granted the right to go into a hospital. A long ruse to get free admission to SeaWorld. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like... I mean, clearly, I think the line should be drawn at people. Like, is it yeah. a person you're trying to marry? Yeah, then go for it. Who gives a shit? Like, uh, finally, finally, there's no longer this big smoke screen that the media can throw up every time anything that's divisive about the economy or our military spending, where they're See, like, oh, fuck, people are catching on. Gay marriage! Poof! I feel now, like this is... That, you're right, though. Taylor, I feel like this is another area in which the United States is lagging. Like, I think in Ireland and New Zealand, they're fucking sheep on the regular. And Scot <laughs> Whoa, Scotland. Yeah, time out. There's a lot of Irish... There's no Scotland or Scottish viewers that watch this, I guarantee it. They're all Irish. Kyle, back me up on the Irish thing. Scottish, These people so. don't have internet yet. That's a fact. True. We've been we Too we made sure that sheep. we've actually blocked it so that Irish people can't watch the show anymore. Uh, we we had it up to here with their bullshit, and we just didn't, <laughs> we didn't want their fucking business anymore. If you get what I'm where I'm coming from, but we're okay with New Zealanders. We reserve the right to uh, reserve service I'm to okay. any and all. I, I, New Zealanders fuck sheep too, but they're like cool though because they're like Australia's brothers. So yeah, like, we don't mind sheep fuckers around here, but yeah, no, no Irish, not Scot <laughs> no no Scottish. The Irish are cool. No, no, Kyle hates the Irish. Kyle Why? hates people who don't live in this country, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, well, I mean, you can't trust those people. No, you can't. I didn't know that New Zealanders were known. I didn't know it was a stereotype that they had intercourse with farm animals. It's an ISIS thing too now, right? Like it, like ISIS? A, I feel like there's been repeated videos coming from like the heat sensing like Apache like uh, videos of like Taliban and ISIS guys fucking animals. Like, Lots of goats. I don't think yeah. it would take me long to find it on YouTube. Her you frame is the most expensive porn ever shot. From yeah. a Black Hawk helicopter in <laughs> Using that. their Ford and looking <laughs> infrared. You're not wrong though. A million dollars a second, yeah. 
That's great though. That's like that's that's tax dollars at work. Somebody had to legitimately like call that out to their superior like we have two people unidentified like I think one's a sheep. They're going like he had to live commentate sheep fucking on his millions of dollars of infrared technology flying from a, a death machine. Like that's what he had to do with his life. But yeah, what I remember seeing about that. Oh wow, that's Like he amazing. probably said something like Got a couple of sheep fuckers, and the guy on the other end was like, "Hey, yeah. good lord, dude! Like, stop with the racial awfulness." And he's like, "No, literally, I, we have two people fucking." Sheep <laughs> Kyle, now. you found one also. No, this um, is blazing saddles. I don't know. Oh, what can we videos. watch mine? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> which, which link? Of the top or the bottom? Uh, the wow, bottom link. they don't fuck around with the name. Taliban has fun with donkeys. <laughs> 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 Cute zero. Uh, I'm just trying to get the picture. I can't wait to right watch size. a grown man have sex. What was that right. saying 90 seconds ago about not wanting to watch something yeah, gross? Yeah, what is this? I was going to say, it's <laughs> taken us eight minutes and we're already here. We've Three, already arrived at animal sex. That's Three, two, here. one, play. Taliban scum yes, meets his he, match. match. Do they have music? In they have sound effects. Yeah, sound effects. They uh, have music! What am I listening to music-wise here? This is brilliant. Oh, it's really your romantic. He's getting into it. <laughs> oh my God. Look, you can see, like, he's leaning back. Like, he's. he's... Look at the indifference that that animal has. <laughs> oh, wow, they're walking. No, it's he's walking. It's just it. eating. He is really getting up in there. Does it even notice? Who is no. playing their audio through the speakers? I am not. Okay. Listen to this music. This and is then horrible. there's a quick montage of people dying. A little heavy metal while you watch 30 people die. It's like 40-second outro. I feel like this is their standard outro they stick on every video. Just like death after death. Their next video. Oh, this is not their next video. It's a different channel. That so, bolstered Woody's opinion about animal fucking because that wasn't like pinning a chicken down. That thing did not even notice what was happening. It didn't <laughs> care. It was it, walking it, away point, actively. Kind of leaned back like it was gonna nip at him. I thought, yeah, like, he hey, stop like, fucking me. I feel it, like he was just playing hard to get a little bit. Like if that donkey didn't want it, he could have prevented that, right? Kick. Kick. Yeah, he could have kicked. He could have galloped. Right. You know, lots of things were on the table there. I. I I mean, it was an implicit consent, I suggest. So, so, so I have a video here. What'd you say? If, if a donkey's running around all sexy like that, someone's going to fuck it? Exactly. You can't, uh, it wasn't wearing anything. It was missing <laughs> its tail to and fro. Wow. Listen, you can't say that the way it's dressed is how, you know, that it's asking for it. Just because it's not wearing clothes, okay? It's what I nature intended it to wear. You know what? You're right, Jericho. I apologize for my inappropriate remarks. Thank that you, donkey you. is as sentient as any animal that deserves to be. <laughs> I think that's a mule. And it needs to be pleasure. Well, at least it's not going to have a baby. It's a mule. So I have a video. Oh, and when We were talking about the Irish and how, well, you know, they're just awful. And it, this video came to mind. So if you skip to 25 seconds, this is a little quick scene from Blazing Saddles, which is a real classic. It, it, it is. Good, yeah. good movie. All right. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm at 25. Is everybody else? Yep. I'm good to go. Three, two, one, play. Oh, oh no. damn. Well, shucks. Can we start over? I, I accidentally yeah. pressed a bad I'm button. Fucking video again. <laughs> I'm at 25. I'm sorry. I have buttons on the side of my mice, and I can screw it up. Three, two, one, play. All right. We'll give some land to the niggers and the chinks. But we don't want the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Jesus. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> and then everybody's like, all right, all right, we're fine with that. Like, okay, ooh. Oh, that's oh, the best part. I didn't part. put it on the big screen. I was I not ready for that one. <laughs> like, I was not prepared for it. But we don't want the Irish. I love that. That's a great movie. If you've never seen Blazing Saddles, it's a, it's a must watch. It's a complete parody, though. Like, you can't yeah. go into it thinking that it's a serious Western. Because it's, it's got not... Dean Wilder in it, right? That was it's uh, Mel Brooks, no. right? How bad was perfect? the anti-Irish racism when they first came to the country? Oh, like, it was bad. I saw like pictures of old-timey shops where yeah. uh, the, the placard on the outside, in like I don't know, like nineteen teens, it was like whites ten cents a day, blacks five cents a day, Irish need not apply. <laughs> well, it's like it's like the hate for like 
his fa- or like it's like the hate for Hispanic people in like the deep you know the deep South. I think it's pretty comparable where they're like just they have that like deep seated irrational hate for somebody, but it's not like they're not. I'm I'm gonna be honest, like it's not the black versus white hate. They're not off color like they're not different color enough to be like yo it's your skin it's just like you're different fuck you dude it's just like the uh the irish in in the what was it like the i feel like most of us down here have accepted the uh, the hispanic population have you of- yeah yeah well, I mean, we, we all like taco bell of course so we're big fans of that and yeah, uh, it's kind of they, they use that to kind of win our hearts and minds <laughs> with, that, with that little fucking dog and everything and uh you know since that's happened i'm i'm on board yeah and sure. what did the irish win like beer they just like after the prohibition the irish were like yo we have a lot of beer and well, the irish like- don't sway me with their bullshit so <laughs> I, I couldn't hey. say quite frankly i'm not sure why they become so accepted those cocksuckers, so i couldn't say <laughs> What could the Irish do to win your favor? If you say nothing, then you're just a bigot. You have to give them an out. What Virtual yeah, reality give porn. Me an out? If they would renounce their U.S. Citizen- citizenship, <laughs> find themselves passage back to their home country, as they call it, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and reapply for citizenship so that we can evaluate them, Irishmen by, by Irishmen, to see if they're actually worthy of coming over here. I yes. think that would do it. Then I could forgive Ireland and perhaps... See eye to eye with an Irishman, but not till that day comes. No. So you want to send them back to their home country, as they call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to boat them up. Yeah. This sounds so fun. Ship them back. Well, I, I think, um, I, I think England should probably just go in there and mush all that up, take it for their own, and, uh, and then that maybe they could get those barbarians underfoot, like they did, you know, in other places in the world. That's true. A lot of areas with Irish. What do they call it? Prima nocta? Is that what they call it? When you when the nobleman gets first sexual rights with your wife if they get m- married under your jurisdiction? Maybe you could breed the Irishman out, like uh, like what's his name tried to do with the Scots back in the day. Oh, from uh, Braveheart. Yeah, yeah. William King Wallace. Or King. Uh, well, the king. The king. Well, you know, William Wallace was the whole thing was that William Wallace didn't want his uh, his like wife bride. Oh, I re- oh, that was the thing. I forgot. Yeah, they got he got ta- or his wife got taken for wedding or like you know first rights. Oh, well, like, no, time. and then he got racked. Yeah, I read up on that, and I, I was trying to find that after like the last time I watched Braveheart, which was like probably eight years ago, right. and I couldn't find anything. I don't think that was a real thing. It was that a real thing. King yeah. actually went and fucked all these women. That's a lot of stamina. Yeah. I do like, remember it's, that. It's not the king. It's the nobleman that they were going to put in charge over those lands in particular. Uh, I don't think it was everyone. It was the ones they wanted. Like, they could call upon that rule to fuck your bitch. Yeah. If it yeah. was, like, a good-looking one, though. So They just, weren't going to be like, I'm obligated to fuck your 400-pound heifer. Like, yeah, they had to... Well, the, Fucking Peggy Potato Head over here. I gotta get the deed done. Like, like <laughs> that did not happen. It totally is a thing, though. It's it, it's. I, I may be pronouncing it slightly wrong, but I think it's prima nocta or something like that. Yeah. I don't think yeah, that sure. happened That's in real. Like, I'm said. not saying prima nocta or crema nocta or whatever it is actually like never happened, but I don't think that's what the William Wallace deal was. I don't. Mel Gibson wouldn't lie. Yeah, Mel Gibson wouldn't lie. He tells the truth about everything. And wife, one day everybody's going to wake up and Google see that. William Wallace wife sex. <laughs> we'll see what... You uh, think Mel Gibson's ever going to make a comeback? Is, is, is there any way for him to come back after those crazy, drunken, anti-Semitic, racist, uh, homophobic, and uh, you misogynistic... Know, one of the remarks? things that he did wrong, I, he got old when nobody was looking. Like... You know, I, 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 when I picture Mel Gibson, I picture Braveheart, I picture Lethal Weapon, stuff like that. But if you were to see a current image of him, think like Gary Busey or something. Like, he's fucked. Ah, oh, come <laughs> on. You're really like Gary <laughs> Busey You're level? So harsh. You're so harsh. You think Gary Busey. Think Gary Busey has brain damage. Come on. <laughs> You're right. He does. does he like, yeah. He, he got in a motorcycle happened? accident. Oh, yeah. I thought it was just crazy. No, <laughs> he used to be Jeez. normal. He had a motorcycle accident, no helmet, smashed his head on the curb, brain damage, and they just let him keep acting. That's why he's so fucking nuts. But, but he like he like owns <laughs> yeah, he, he like that. knows he's nuts though, so he just owns it. He he's, owns it. <laughs> but he's, he's pretty like, smart about it. Just, I'm fucked. <laughs> like his TED talk. By the way, the TED wiki, talk? Yeah, he does. The wiki <laughs> says that. Wallace reunites with his childhood friend, and then they get married in secret, so she does. She doesn't have to spend the night with the local English lord. It's not like the catalyst for anything, but it's like a notable plot point. Okay. I, so, 
I guess it was like a thing. Oh yeah, Wait. in the movie that's totally like the main part of the plot. Like there's this whole scene where the king uh, is having this meeting about the Scots and uh, the bride, the French girl comes in and he t and he kind of says in front of her, he's like, let's introduce Prima Nocta. If we can't control the Scots, we'll breed them out. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm and, sure and it, you're right. Yeah. My, the, the Scottish guy, uh, Ethan, he was at my house this week. He, uh, he hates that movie. He, he's very proud of Scotland and the historical inaccuracies of Braveheart just infuriate him. See, so I referred to it as a documentary all week long. <laughs> Let me see why he's wrong. All right, so here's why he's wrong. Okay. I, like, I know going in that there's tons of historical inaccuracies, and at the very least, William Wallace wasn't present at all those battles. At the very least, let, it, and the inaccuracies don't end there. But it's sort of, uh, you know, it's focused on a Scottish hero, a guy who really did do some great things for Scotland, and they, you know, they, it's Hollywood, but you should still be proud of it. Like, I, when I see Daniel Boone or Davy Crockett, uh, you know, represented in a movie, I see John Wayne up there. I don't think, like, that's not how he did it. Come on, you're, you're disgracing his legacy. I think, well, you know, they're, they're doing their best to make a hero out of this guy who's from where I'm from. So I think it's a great movie. I love Braveheart. And if you really want to enjoy, enjoy Braveheart, uh, if, whether you've never seen it before or you've seen it a bunch of times, there is a fan edit that I don't remember what it's called. But many consider it to be a superior version. And basically, they put the end of the movie, no spoilers, the very end of the movie, that thing that happens, you they put that... It came out in like 1997. Yeah, this movie's so old, nobody's going to be like, <laughs> well, fuck, Kyle. <laughs> they, <laughs> but, spoilers, you know? We'll, we'll spoil Game of Thrones that came out a few hours earlier. <laughs> you spoiled the book. <laughs> the Mel Gibson's character dies at the end, and in the re-edit, they put that at the beginning of the story. So you see him die, and then the rest of the story is is all uphill from there. And if you watch it that way, I think it's more enjoyable because you don't get like this. Right, the, the arc is different. You don't like peak, and then oh shit, they're ki oh 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 oh, I feel terrible. Eh, that's okay. And then the movie, and then credits. You go from oh, this is going to be intense. Oh, they did that to him. Why? Why? And then. It's uphill from there. It's well, a much wait, better wait, way. Like, how do they... They racked him. They explain that they go back in time, and this is what happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, because the way they, you laid it out, you're like, well, first they kill him, and then he rises from the dead. No, they don't play, he's like, <laughs> they don't William push, Wallace is the I, Scottish I, Jesus. Like, <laughs> I, you can't just play movies backwards. <laughs> <laughs> the passion of the Christ in... in <laughs> and it's a really uplifting tale. Like, yeah, I saw but, a prank video once where... um. Some guy built made a DVD of um, Toy Story three for his mom, yeah. and, uh, and if, if you guys, I'm gonna ruin Toy Story three, so be prepared for a spoiler. In Toy Story three, there's a part where all the uh, toys are headed down into incinerator, and it's awful. It looks truly hopeless. I cried. And and you, yeah, I cried at that part. Cried. I was like, they drug it out for like five minutes. I'm like, yeah. fuck, just kill my friends. And like, it really yeah. seemed like they weren't gonna get out, even though it's a Pixar Disney film, like you're like these guys are fucked. There's really no getting out of this, and uh, and then the guy cuts the movie there, and it just <laughs> credits. It goes credits. to credits. It goes to credits. He doesn't. And yeah, sad music. It. And so it, I think he changed the music from "You Got a Friend in Me" to like. It's like sad piano music, and you're just like, yeah. And the mom's like, what? It ends like that? How can it just end? Oh, and she's crying. Dude, she's upset. It was, it was great. It was great. You'd hear her like a wail from every theater. <laughs> Dude, like when the, when that incinerator <laughs> part was going through, I distinctly remember thinking, "But it's a Pixar movie." And then I go. Yeah, but like, you know, like this legitimately how in the world, like they'd have to have some divine intervention bullshit. And then I'm like, but the movie's been going on for like an hour and a half. And that's really long for a Pixar movie. It's we're yeah. wrapping up right now. And I was like, oh, my God, they're going to kill off my fight. One's going to survive and he's going to be like burnt with no arm. Just like it wasn't worth the risk. But like, and you know, by the way, not as if they haven't like killed off or done. Like, weren't there like, yeah. a cup? like, where's Bo? Where did Bo go? Right. All the army people were gone. You're right. You know, they, like, like sold him off and shit on the like yard sale. You're yeah, like, the yeah. difference between him selling off his toys and him mutilating or having them burned alive. Like, there's no way they were gonna end a Pixar movie like that and then have a blank screen with the credits, like the dramatic ending of Game of Thrones episodes. Where there's no <laughs> music, oh. music, and it's just silence, and you're like, mm. yeah. 
I like, hate you, that. I hate that. Down in there, that's pain. I, hate that I, I feel like Game of Thrones needs to more uh, occasionally. It needs to go dark and then come back and give us five more seconds. No, I don't want the old Lord of the Rings fake out where I am like. I love that. One at a, once a year. Once a year, it needs to come back on and show off maybe one of the many characters that they should have been focused on this year but just weren't for whatever reason. Like, come back on and show me Bran, like, riding a fucking Tyrannosaurus. Or, like, you know, something crazy. Show me something. I want that. Never... But you don't want too many of those fade to black and then come back scenes because it's tacky. Like, you remember the end of the Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King movie, where I love that series and I like the books. And even I, at the end of that, was like, oh, thank God. And it's not over. You got a whole other half hour of them. You know, I loved it so pirates. much that I'm very forgiving of that. Because I remember being in the theater, and the first time you think it's over, I was like, oh, it's over. And then the second time you think the movie's over, you're like, oh, man, it's over. It's really done now. And then the third time, you're like, oh, this is really softening the blow here. <laughs> like, like, this is like a breakup with someone that, that like, goes over the course of a week. It's like little by little, it's ending the movie for you. And by the end, you're like, well, I guess they really wrapped that up. Like, I wonder what, 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 what all the minor characters are doing. Like, I, I feel like they should have had this part at the end where the credits are rolling, but it's like, like each of the minor characters and like a quick biography. Like, he went on and like started his own gold mine and fucked like a bunch every, of... <laughs> every like sports movie, like, he later went on and you know, graduated from college and went nowhere. He's working at Dairy Queen. Like, yeah. okay. That... Those at the end of sports movies where like one guy will like, will like jump up in an action scene and freeze it and it's like, Ted Daniels went on to run a branch at Monsanto. And then yes. the next jumps up and is like high-fiving. He it's died like in an Oldsmobile Johnson crash in the fall. He on cocaine that night. Like, <laughs> Dude, that, that's my fun part. Yeah, like, like the, the cocaine that well, night is a thing. But listen, it, it, yeah, never, like, never, it, they'll be like, a lot of them go on to be super winners, right? Like this guy's a doctor at the local emergency center. This guy went on to be, you know, a senator of Massachusetts. This guy, you know, is currently unemployed, hoping to get a job as a lumberjack. And and it's like, oh, Wolverine. It's tough to be that guy. Well, but like honestly, the remember of the remember the Titans again. Spoiler alert from a movie that's been years, whatever. Do uh, like dude's best friend gets paralyzed from the waist down and he watches them yeah like fucking heartbreaking like every everybody celebrating fucking mm, the t-bone like you're just like this is the worst way to do it man watches the team win from like the the hospital bed and he can't walk again and then it's I, like he went on to win a gold medal in the paralympics and then it's oh. like and it's like you're like yeah and then it's like what the other guy was like yeah it was like uh, number one draft pick for college and like went on to NFL and then one of the dudes was like uh, is currently like working at a uh, working at like a children's like uh, a children's rehabilitation center uh, for like the last six months and you're like wow that was a real like notch down from everybody <laughs> else there that one and then work way up did you exactly, see basketball right? diaries no. no sounds awful oh do I have the name right basketball diaries it basketball was... I just don't it sounds like a really shitty ESPN special Basketball hey, good, diaries. Good no. sports documentary is Red Army. You guys oh. should all watch Red Army. That is about, incredible. It's about it the Russian uh, national hockey or the Soviet Union national. I told you to hockey. watch I don't give a that. fuck. The only thing I care about really is good. America winning. No, okay? they did win in 1980. I know. I watch Miracle over and over, but only the ending block. This is from the Russian point of view. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if do you get to feel crushing defeat and like hopelessness and like the fall of the USSR with that loss? Because I'll watch. A it. little bit. Yeah, yeah. But you like, appreciate like how hardcore they were too. You see how hardcore they are. Pretty metal. Are, where it's like the U.S. team is treated like royalty a lot of the time when they win, or if they lose, like you know, you did a great job representing your country. The Russians, like if they lost, they were scared that their family I, would go missing yeah. in Syria. I've got and, like, it. Like the North Korea. Oh, have you, got you, it. have you seen Hoop Dreams? Hoop Dreams sounds way more familiar. Dude, Hoop Dreams is incredible. So, sounds like a Coolio song. Um, what they do <laughs> is they find these two like inner city basketball players. They're black. And they both show like tremendous promise. And the high schools are recruiting them. Oh, thanks, honey. And they follow them throughout their entire high school career. And it's, it's live. It's, it's like it's, it's not like a show. 
and uh, it's not live. It, it's but it's real, and uh, it's amazing. Like the 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 one guy, they both get recruited to this like private basketball school, but one yeah. doesn't hit puberty enough, so he gets kicked off the team. He doesn't hit puberty like soon enough, and then the other one goes on. He's look. He's like breaking Isaiah Thomas's records, who also went to this like select private high school, and then his knee gets jacked up, and he's like only three quarters of the player that he used to be. Meanwhile, the one that hit puberty late is leading his team to like the all city whatever and the coach is like i wish we had you right those are now. so crazy man it, it was incredible and uh but it doesn't end well See, no it, both it, of them it, end it, up like not doing much army, when like they would come back from a loss and the coach would be like yelling at them and then walk up to a guy who failed and be like igor you did not score today nikolai had two assists maybe nikolai get your potato and like just <laughs> like, <laughs> like they they didn't give a shit. They treated them like garbage. Like they, Did you see they, how they trained in the summertime when there was no ice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're at the beach moving these rocks. Yes. They're just like moving rocks around, like picking a rock up and carrying it over like there. Old school it. fucking yeah. Rocky Four training where he's like carrying wood in like Russian winter. Just yeah, like... they, these, yeah, they're lamenting how, how like they, they didn't like training in the summer because they just had to carry the fucking rocks and shit like that. Like, it it's better excellent. when we have ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's a hockey team. Explanation for it as like. You know, we carry we carry ice to make our hands faster for shooting. It's like we we carry rocks because there are nothing else to do. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. The uh, and their coach was just ridiculous. Uh, that's a really good documentary. And I liked it a lot. We should all watch that Red Army. There's story. a lot. There's a lot of like uh, what ifs with uh, North Korea during the World Cup when North Korea played and they got like shit stomped like eight to one or something like that and like a couple players defected because they were so scared they were it was like in france they just like stayed there they're like we're not going home we're gonna die <laughs> like we just lost eight to one we're fucked and i'm like yeah you know what playing for an oppressive dictatorship probably sucks a dick like there's no yeah. good scenario for you well, i mean keep your family locked up there how like, do they you train today how do they practice against other teams you know they like don't. like if you're american at least you kind of know where you stand and what it takes to be an elite soccer player or football player right if you're in north korea good luck yeah, yeah. it doesn't make like there's no they're just playing the next best <laughs> no one wants to come play with us <laughs> actually so, like, that's not true though uh north korea actually gets a ton of american basketball teams the globetrotters dennis rodman hooks them up a bunch the globetrotters don't count. over there the globetrotters don't count as an american they're basketball all pretty team, goddamn though. good basketball players good. Though. even though they yeah. do like bullshit shit you know they still can shoot but there's not a North Korean basketball team that gets to, you know, have regular practice against the Globetrotters through some... Yeah, there is! I swear to God, there's a whole the Vice documentary on this bullshit. I like, love I just that the North Korean... Like, they, they, they just, like, see how they stack up against the Globetrotters. Okay. <laughs> but that's what's funny. Uh, yeah, like that so... style of basketball, everybody's spinning balls. Like... <laughs> yeah, like, they get the major competition, they... They're like they're all trying to what the do 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 It's some six foot eight black guy just fucking dunking on them. Like, what the yeah, fuck yeah, that? Rodman, Rodman fucking sets up basketball games and then ships out like top academy teams to North Korea to play their team. Rodman's out of his fucking gourd. Going yeah, but he's bros with a man. dictator, so like that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and at what point is the dictator like? I think I'll cut your head off today, Mr. Rodman. Yes, we'll cut your head off. You bring the snips. Yeah, and like, True, like but Rodman's like I so bad at this game. <laughs> I wonder yeah, how crazy he is. That's what I want to know. Like, like, or if he is, if he even is crazy, right? Like, he wouldn't be the first country to get nuclear power and then suddenly get America's respect. You know, there's more than one way to become a global player, and one of them is inventing a nuke and then just being like, all right, now we want more favorable trade terms, whatever. We're, we're, Didn't really we'll work it. out well, though. Not so far. Um, yeah. But, like, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, every time America has a conflict with someone, the first thing they tell us is that that guy is a madman, that that country is led by a madman. They did it with Saddam Hussein. They did it, I mean, it, fuck, they were, like, remember what they said about the French when they didn't want to fight Iraq with us? I don't because I was too young for it, but I They renamed I French fries in the capital Freedom Fries. I remember that. They literally passed a law. Like, they, the, the, did that. the Senate voted on it. That's so bad. <laughs> I remember my lunch yeah. room did that, where they we were like, yeah, I want a pizza and french fries or whatever. And like, I remember freedom fries. And it's like, <laughs> no, fuck yourself and give me the same thing. Like, <laughs> that's I, so yeah. depressing that I, that's a thing. I find the Declaration of Independence, to, to, no, 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 the, um, the Pledge of Allegiance depressing. 
The pl- like the, it, it's, there's a lot of that that like makes me gives up like really uncomfortable culty vibes that just I'm just like if anybody like if we weren't like one of the prime powers like everybody would look at us like we're just like you know like Hitler-esque kind of crazy like repetitive bar- it's weird I hate yeah, it they it all weird. get up and synchronized pledge allegiance to the flag <laughs> and with their hands over their hearts it, it this is serious Hitler shit we did it in school every day my yeah. like forever they like get I bet everyone here knows it I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And, and that's exactly so creepy. Yeah. May God strike me down if I do not enforce his will upon the lesser men of the land, the black <laughs> and the Jew. You guys didn't do this part? No. <laughs> that's just Georgia. <laughs> the only, yeah. only, that's I can't. just you, man. <laughs> like it's going to be like that Sith ending where it's like, <laughs> strike me down. I will come back more powerful than you can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we did that every so day. Uh, you know, we looked at the flag, the whole thing. I uh, would like not salute, or I would just like you know sit there with my hands down, like like sort of like kind of protest. You get in trouble for that shit. What a rebel! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm kind crazy. of a big deal, yeah. John. No, I mean but I the same in like church. I I wouldn't like <coughs> sign of the cross or say like the Our Father stuff because I mean low key back when I was like 12 I was just like this is really like this is culty like this makes me feel weird like I've seen YouTube cult documentary videos where people act the same way and I'm like looking around and everybody's like just zombie like and that was like one of the big factors that I don't want to go on a religious tangent that got me kind of separated from that whole culture so I just thought it was just really weird that there were so many similes between you know the Pledge of Allegiance and like so did you have to do like the Our Father Art in Heaven? How will be that? Yeah. Name? Like, um, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But everybody did it like monot. They changed it to singing finally because it literally sounded like you were reading from a manuscript, and everybody's just like, "All right, here's my soul today. Like, <laughs> like take me. Like, oh god." Well, see, you have to do that because the priest needs some energy to build off of because he's about it's to like go Goku's up, spirit like, bomb. He's just like <laughs> Our Father. Like, yes, <laughs> you know. Latin. So yeah. He needs, he needs someone to. He needs, he needs an opener for his act. That's exactly what it is. In so, here. all right. So I wanted to talk about the paintball thing real quick. Mm. So many of you know you came to our last paintball event a couple months ago that we did in Chicago. Uh, we're doing another one, and it's kind of coinciding with a big uh, scenario game that they're also having there that weekend. So it's July uh, 11th and 12th. Those are the two days we're going to be out there. Uh, on the 11th, it's, it's going to be our group. It's going to be FPS Russia and PKA fans. Uh, playing together, so we'll probably be, probably be able to do some small games and you'll get to play with us and be more of a one-on-one uh, scenario type thing. And then the next day, like I said, they're having their big scenario game, which is um, uh, World at War. And, they, and I think a lot of people know they've got a map that looks exactly like Nuketown. Uh, so that kind of plays into it. They open all the fields up, make it one giant field, and I don't know how many players are going to be, but you know, uh, maybe 1,000 versus 1,000, that sort of thing. And as I look at it right now on pbbomb.com, where you can pre-register if you want, they've stacked the fucking deck against us, and it's bullshit, all right? Like, like Wait, I see what? This, they've stacked the deck against us. So uh, you, there's, there's two teams. There's the resistance and the coalition. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what, what that means or whatever, but there's two teams in this scenario game. You and I are on, this, are, on an, are on one team with Mr. H from HK Army, who I didn't know was really a player. I thought he's just kind of like their hype guy and camera guy. I mean, he's a nice guy. I've met him a bunch of times. Watching but- this. This is horseshit. <laughs> like, like, okay, so I know Mr. H. It, he's like, he's, he's, he's funny. Uh, he's goofy. He makes humorous paintball videos. But if you need a ringer, he's probably not the guy you call. No. Right? Akimbo's- and he doesn't bring others with him. He doesn't have like a, a group that, that, come, that come with him. Right, he makes funny paintball videos. There's another guy, Akimbo Assassin. I really like him. I saw him again uh, at the last trip. He shoots pistols. He carries like 10 bullets with him. He's very good at what he does, which is killing like 10 people. It, it, us, who play, I, I, I don't know, Mad Frog, I don't know this gentleman, or Pistol Pete. Do you know them? 
I, I do know Pistol Pete. He's the guy who, uh, who 3D printed me uh, that cool camera setup and that big magazine. Uh, he's a good player, but once again, he usually plays like uh, MagFed or Pistols or something like that. The real issue is that on the other team, Wolf uh, is there, and Wolf brings, yeah, Wolf brings a bunch of guys with him, and they're very coordinated. Um, I, this Necro guy, I don't know what he does or anything, but I've seen him at the events. I know, uh, I think he's friends with Kitty. He's a nice guy. He also is a good player. The Skeletor guy is just whatever, you know, they're just individuals. But the real problem is that Mike Phillips, the guy who, uh, who runs Tech PB, is going to be there. And he is like the ultimate paintball tryhard. Mike is so hardcore when it comes to paintball. He's doing wind sprints for, uh, you know, leading up to events and stuff. This is a, a 40 plus year old man who takes paintball as serious as anyone in the world and, uh, and he's probably going to have, you know, I don't know, 20, 30, uh, 40 players with him that are all co coordinated and uh, uh, motivated. So we need as many of you uh, fans out there as possible to come and play with us so that maybe we don't get our asses kicked too bad. And uh, maybe we'll get to beat Mike, which would be really wonderful. Maybe but we can get Wolf to join our team. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's fine. They already printed the thing out. I love this. They really stacked the table against us here. This is. This is. This is Damn it, you Romeo. So, um, oh, I have a thing though. So here's the deal in paintball, the, the like mechanically. I don't know. The, the the better guns make a big difference. We have had seven or eight people beat seventy or eighty people because we had you know so much more firepower. I would pre-register so that you get the good guns. If you get the shake and bake. Titman things. Titman ninety eight. Yeah, it's not the same experience. So pre registering so will make you get the the gun that you really want. It's something yeah. to consider. Yeah, you definitely want the electronic marker and uh it's just so much nicer to when when you pull the trigger, you know something's gonna happen and you're gonna it, you know, those things shoot so fast. It's brrrr, and to spray people down. And that's what you're gonna you're gonna need that firepower. because... Uh, it's gonna be a fucking uphill battle. I was when I saw that earlier, I was just like, What the fuck? Why did they they, they really fucked us in the they ass. They really here. should have split up Wolf and Mike. It, yes, at the very least. What they should have done is put us on their team. Like, it should have been us over there instead of, like, Skeletor or something. Like, that's what it should have been. Like, like fuck, it, it, it's just gonna, gonna be annoying playing against Mike because uh, Mike is a tryhard. He, 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 that's, that's how he plays. He likes, he likes pub stomping. You should and, 1v1 Mike. There's you no 1v1-ing Mike. Mike. Fucking yeah. 1v1 Mike Nuketown, dude. No scopes only. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bring the gun up. You have to hip fire that bitch. 360 no scopes 360s. only. <laughs> only 360. In that case. Yeah, you're shit on him, dude. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a fun time. Uh, I really liked the field last time. I really enjoyed the event uh, last time. So come on out, pre-register, and uh, come play paintball with us. Yeah. Very cool. I thought you guys were both on your team. If he's on the other team, you better hope for a lot of fans to show up, not even to be tactical with you, just to be like that first wave of orcs. That <laughs> <laughs> elven archers, just to <laughs> up some rounds before you get there and do some damage. Because that you're, makes you're, sense. Yeah. The peasants with the pitchforks, like, nah, they just get mowed down. Tip, he'd be like, tip moons forward. <laughs> yes. March. Like, like, Who has a tip you man? Just, Me? You just hear, you hear like 50 of them come walking by. All right, they're low on ammo. Everyone else, come on. <laughs> like, no, it's going to be fun, Stop. but uh, I, I hope the first, I think the first day is going to be a lot of fun because it'll be just our group and we'll be able to do what I envision us doing that I think would be a lot of fun is if I got myself like, we did like a pickup basketball where like I pick eight guys and Woody picks eight guys and, and Chiz picks eight guys, whoever else is there, and we have some little mini tournaments or something like that. Uh, I think that'd be fun, especially for like picking players and trying to keep teams fair-ish. So yeah, that'd be a good time. Has Chiz actually played before? Yeah, he played with us last time, and he's played before in the past. How uh, was he? Like, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he held his own, did his thing. Yeah, he's got a. He went and bought a gun, uh, like mine. He went and bought a Geo after our last trip. Yeah, I have not paintballed in a long time. Ah, uh, I, I I played. I haven't played in, I guess, about a month. The last thing I did was Airsoft, which I really hated. Uh, that was, it was I, fun. It was so lame. I hated it so much. It, it didn't it, hurt too much? It, it didn't hurt too much. It smarts. Although it does hurt. It does what smart. It, the, the, problem, the problems that I saw were all the other players were wearing, like, many, many layers of clothing, like tactical vests, like hard stuff. Yeah. So they weren't getting any pain. They were wearing all these helmets and stuff, and I'm in there with like a paintball mask and a t-shirt on, because like that's how I feel like you should play. 
That way everyone has the same level of respect for getting shot. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like everybody was all armored up, so they really didn't care. And wearing their juggernaut suits. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. exactly how I felt when I played. I, I wasn't a big airsoft player or anything like that. I played paintball several, you know, ten times or so, but, like, I only played airsoft once. And we went up there, and people were, like like you said, like, in tactical vests with, like, mags in there. And I was like, oh, that's cool. It's just, like, useful. And then it wasn't until I got shot the first time because I was in a T-shirt and jeans. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, that hurt way more. I'm like, paintballs are way more painful. Like, you know, no, that's a dense plastic ball just hitting you. I was like, I that's why I, they wear, the, wear those. Well, the thing about airsoft is there's also, I, I could be wrong because I'm not as experienced in paintball as Kyle and probably not as experienced in airsoft. But when we used to play in the backyard, there's like, even though there's a huge difference between a Titman and what Kyle uses, it's still firing for the most part, the same projectile at about the same speed. With airsoft, there seems to be a huge gradient between like those Walmart ones that like, sound like an auto blow and just ying, 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 <laughs> and it's like barely like floating yeah. towards some guy has a bolt action sniper with heavier balls that just feel like a hornet sting on the side. We have a full auto, full metal AK, like, uh, you know, with gas. Gas was like, if you had electric, like the Walmart one with a pistol, like, you know, they could just like, boom, boom, boom. You, you, you just like, you're like, you get hit with it. And you're like, I got hit. But the gas ones, like I did a, uh, I did a video with it. I got shot and it would, it would leave like blood pelts like you got shot with an uh like a paintball from point yeah. blank where it would just sit there for like three weeks you just have it there it's that's it i shot so i think that they all shoot right around like the the, the same feet per second because I, I know they just turned all the guns down to a certain point when i was playing i think okay. it was like close to 400 feet per second like 390 or something but like the that spring-loaded walmart guns go like 180 like it's, yeah, yeah like that's, 225. That's, that's, you wouldn't even be able to play you wouldn't be able to bring those and play at this place people that's, do the uh, the rentals that we had people. The rentals that we had were like uh, were the battery powered ones, and they looked like AR-15s. Uh, but there were plenty of people with air powered submachine guns and long rifle things, and ha lots of pistol players. And uh, I just got shot up really close a one, bunch of times, one, and it hurt like a motherfucker. One thing I liked about airsoft is the scopes worked. Like you yeah. could you could legit use a red dot, and the ball would go where it was supposed to go. And the trajectory <laughs> was way less, you know. There's less arch to it. It, it shoots faster. And with paintball, which I also enjoy, but at least me, I kind of shoot the first one and then adjust from there. You know, right I out. shot some simunitions at that gun show, uh, and those were so fucking cool. You just, um, I mean, they look like regular bullets. They go in a regular magazine. You put it in a regular AR-15 with a different bolt, and then it just works from there. And it shoots these projectiles that are going like 375 feet per second. Pretty fucking accurately. They, uh, they, they. And you can. These are like non-lethal rounds. Yeah. This is yeah. just begging for an accident. Like they look yeah. like regular bullets, and they it, shoot from a regular gun. They, well, but it's <laughs> non-lethal. <laughs> what could, it what could go wrong? It would be impossible to like do it the wrong way because the way that, the way the system works, it changes when you, when you use this thing. It it changes to a rim-fired cartridge, and uh, it's a whole different bolt. You can't even close the dust cover on the side of the rifle when you've got the the bolt in. Um, the Glock is a whole different slide. It's there's no way to fuck up. They they I could tell they definitely put a lot of thought into like making sure that nobody fucks this up because it would be easy to like you said. Do you but do, th oh. those are cool. Do you want to do AMA questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's see. All right, I'll uh, I'll link everyone in case they need a fresh link. So if you don't know, we do this thing with um, the Patreon. I, I forget which level it is. You can check patreon.com slash PK. There's a link in the description for the different donator levels. But um, one of them lets them ask us, ask me anything questions on the show. Which, by the way, on, on a side note, I am flooded with like personal advice mail Monday questions on Reddit at this point. Like every time I open Reddit, there's six more people who are like having some sort of personal crisis or one investing advice or something. Um, it. I don't know how to say this without being get a, your own fucking advice without being a douchebag. But I, it's too much for me. Like I've got like a couple full time jobs already. I, I just I, I, I read it and sometimes I reply, but mostly I'm just like I feel bad because I can't reply to to this too. You can't be too personal. You got to lay down the line. People don't contact my business email for personal stuff because I ain't got time to respond to that shit. They like do, I apologize for your problem. <laughs> But I am not the person you need to come to. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I want to help you out, guys, but gosh, like, I, 
Accused. If you want to ask Woody questions and pay some fucking money, we'll answer. <laughs> yeah, why don't you donate to the stream? Pop up with your message. Huh? <laughs> so, which one of these paying customers? Let's look at the first one. It caught my like attention. Have you ever considered doing Painkiller Nearly? If you don't know, we do a midweek show called Painkiller Nearly. It's just for Patreons. As a more raunchy show than Painkiller, any possibly hosting it somewhere other than YouTube where you could show nudity and other things that YouTube doesn't allow. This would allow you to make the show more to shrink without alienating your core viewership. So, should PKN have a porn flair, Kyle? Like, how do you take advantage of that so much? Like, like how does that benefit your the show uh, enough to justify taking it away from YouTube or our standard, um, you know, sources? Like, I don't even, I don't know if we can still put it on Podbean or, or, or like iTunes or whatever if we start getting too raunchy with it. I don't know what the rules there are. But, like, like where would we go? Like, you're a family man. I, I mean, I've, I've got a girlfriend. It's not like we can bring, like, naked chicks in here like Anthony Cumia and, like, have titties on our show. Like, literally, I don't think that's going to happen. And, like, what are we going to do? Show you some porn clips? Like, you can watch those porn clips anyway. Like, just because we blur them out on the screen doesn't mean you can't go to the site yourself. So I don't see what we would gain, uh, but I see that we'd be losing a lot. So it doesn't really make sense to me. And at the end of the day, even though a lot of people do watch it, people aren't watching this intently, like watching, like, flashing between faces and everything. And on PKN, they're, like, it's, it's audio-based. So, like, do you really want to just hear porn? Like, it's well, not it's vi that's video based too. The, the one video, but I mean, uh, most people consuming it aren't watching it like a TV show. Like, they're listening to it. So, you don't want to make it too video porn based, or at least that. Would I be like fun. it. I like making it video based. I don't mind that at all. Uh, but, but I just don't think that. I just don't know where the show. Like, like, I guess this guy should have explained to me like what he thinks a show would look like in this new, uh, more raunchy version. Like, like, what would that entail? Hey, can like, you? Is this not raunchy enough for you? Like, I have personally watched so much shit with my own eyes that you can watch, like, there's links provided. Like, you can do that along with us. There's countdowns. Like, shit, what do you want? Like, I've seen people's throat get, like, slashed. Like, ugh. <laughs> hey, I don't really know how much more raunchy you can get at this what point. The question, like, it popped into my head is I, I've been watching a little bit of Stern lately. They have it on YouTube, even old uh -huh. stuff. I envy the cast of characters and clowns that he can just snap his fingers and draw up. He's in New York City. People will stroll by where the thing is recorded that are good guests. You know, whores, homeless people, crazy people, people with weird lists, people who were willing to do stupid things to get Some on the show. The, now, I will say this. I, I, I never suggested it before because I feel like it's a little hacky, but... Um, What's his name? The uh, you, you know the black midget on the Stern show? Um, I can't no. think of what his name is. Oh, God. What's his fucking name? He's the black midget. He's retarded. Uh, yeah, and he's sort of deformed-ish, too, right? Yeah, like his, he's head really ugly. Like, yeah. his head's shaped like an ice cream cone. Uh, but anyway, um, it, you can, you can, you can like rent him out and to, to come on your show if you, if you wanted him. Um, and you know he'll agree with whatever you say if you've ever seen his Stern show appearances. They're hilarious. Yeah, uh, it's not Gary the Retard. That's a white guy. You know, I'm never one to just take the Beetlejuice. High, but Beetlejuice. I don't think rent a retarded dwarf to come on the program and agree Holy with us. Shit. So you're saying that in this day and age, you can only rent black people? Because I think that's horseshit. How much is? Oh it? my god, <laughs> how, dude! <laughs> how much to own Beetlejuice? <laughs> uh, I think Beetlejuice makes quite a bit of money. His fee was his fee was not a small amount. Um, he. he his his website is like happydrunkdwarf.com or something like that. What is it? It's too much for me, man. Let's see. Beetlejuice's website. Oh, come on. This is sad. I just Googled this guy. Can you link me? So oh, his, his appearances visible? are hilarious, though. He's a really funny guy. Is he, like, he's having fun with it? They're not, like, making fun of him the whole time? Oh, yeah, they made, uh, one time they had a porn star come in and shave his balls, and then he, like, teabagged her. What is the he, Jolly Dwarf is it? Jolly, Jolly Dwarf. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Jollydwarf.com. Oh, Jolly. what? The oh, shit, dude. Oh, my God. You can get the whole crew from the Howard Stern show to come to your bachelor power. That's Ronnie the limo driver, the, and that's, uh, that's Sal, and I think it's Richard on the right. The, Sal and Richard do a lot of really, really dirty stuff with each other on this the show. This is really fucked up that, like, you can rent this guy. Here's a number, 732-616-9162. Um... How much? I don't. I think Beetlejuice is like five hundred bucks for like half an hour or something like that. Like he's not cheap. Jollydwarf.com is making some updates. Be back soon with a slamming new site.
He's an outstanding looking individual. Uh, you can check him out on Twitter. Uh, see how he's doing over there. <clears throat> he's like, got 8,000 followers. Only? <laughs> well, I mean, you know. He's, he's no been... Oh my god, though. Here, all right, I'm sorry. I have to show you this juxtaposition. This is outstanding. <laughs> Look at look at his I like every picture I've seen he looks like a normal size. Look at him compared to these bikini clad yeah. bowling pin wielding strippers. Oh yeah, I've seen this guy do some really disgusting like, stuff. He's like half the size as these women. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He he's on the Stern show. Uh he used to be on the Stern tiny. show. He's one of the whack pack. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> you know what? I can't even hate like I hope to God, I hope he just makes so much bank off of doing whatever the fuck he does. Because there's so little room that a person, unfortunately, a, poor, a person in his situation can, like, <laughs> succeed in life. Uh, that, that, like, like, I hope he just runs, <coughs> it, runs with it. I don't know if he's, you know, I have no idea what he is or, or Last you know, thing I heard, he's he making he hundreds does. of thousands of dollar, dollars a year from this whole... Good for like, fucking him. I wonder, I don't, what, like, to be what a Howard Stern hanger on, does it take much talent? Like... Like that, who, Ronnie the limo driver, is he actually like pretty funny and personable and like, you know, no, no, he's a real scumbag. Like, like, all right. So like, I, it's different. So some of the whack, so Ronnie's not in the whack pack. Ronnie literally, <laughs> he, he was, uh, he was Stern's driver for a long time. And now that he doesn't really drive as much, I think he's like head of security. It's like a, he's like, he's like Stern's friend and he's got like a job kind of for life type thing is the way it seems to me. And then guys like Sal and Richard, they're show contributors. They write bits. They do prank phone calls. If someone needs to like dip their balls in chocolate and then sit on somebody's eyes and give them like some sort of panda ball eye face thing, you know, they're the ones on call to do that. As but then you there's do. Like, panda, then there's like, yeah, like, panda balls. On. Then there's a group <laughs> of like retarded people and you know people with lots of things wrong with them who make up the whack pack they're extreme fans who are extreme in their own right you know they live at home they're they're freaks has, has stuttering john beaten his stutter yet like, yeah stuttering, gone? I, yeah yeah pretty like like 90 percent gone uh right. i don't see him on the show that much though there's a there's a bunch of guys who like i'm not really sure what their affiliation with the show is anymore because on sirius you get like so many replays from like the 90s and the early 2000s that like I'm not really sure, like, if he's had a falling out with Jackie the Joke Man or, you know, what the deal with Artie is exactly. I know Artie's gone from the show because of his drug problems, and, uh, you know, I don't think he's coming back anytime soon. But there's a lot of characters that kind of float around like that. But yeah. the Whack Pack is what I love. I love that, like, Bigfoot. Bigfoot is, like, a huge fucking nasty guy who, like, recently had this relationship with this transsexual, and, like, they, they're talking about how disgusting. He's huge. He's, like, six foot six. And he talks really weird, and he's just like, he's got so, all the whack packers are so weird, and they've got so many, like, disgusting issues. Some of them are, like, really overweight, and they're, like, eating themselves to death. Some of them are literally just not fully functioning adults. Like, they, like, like uh, Wendy, is, there's, there's a girl named Wendy who's retarded who calls in a lot, and her gag is that she'll agree with anything you say. So Howard will be like, Wendy, did so-and-so rape you? And, and so-and-so will be there on the phone and be like, yeah. Did he force you to suck his dick? Yeah, and like she'll can like go on like this for that forever, and the other person's like, no, I don't know this person. So, uh, I love the whack pack. So yeah, you could rent this guy if you want. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll get world, some, man. We'll Different get a quote. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a quote. Man, a yeah, quote on that handicapped midget you got over there. We'd like yeah. some time with him. I thought it was fun that time we called the the, the tranny, and I think everybody thought it was going to be a real fun gag. And then she starts talking about like the discrimination and like the fear of living in Thailand as a transsexual, and it was just it just really brought us all down. I don't think we've really done any prank phone calls since then. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like it was such a downer. She's like, "Oh yes, in Thailand, I have to run in fear." And it's just like, "Oh shit!" I just wanted to, you know, right. have some we fun just wanted with to this. goof off on this. I thought yeah. that was a really more accepted thing in Thailand. Well, it got Baby real boys? very fast yeah. with with, uh, with this. It's particular. like a big thing. Over there. It's very sad. Sexcations. Um, probably won't go. I go twice a year. Yeah. Three I'd times. Go. I go to Thailand. Kyle, would you hang that giant sexy Kyle poster up on the wall behind you? I yes. mean, if you'd send me a frame to put it in, I certainly would. I, I don't know what size this is, but I think I think it's <laughs> Huge is probably the the way. Yeah. So you send me a frame, I'll. I'll definitely <laughs> you can't just like right putty up. the top two corners or something. And I, honestly, I really don't have the putty 
Uh, you don't have a rolled up piece of duct tape you can just, you know, put in a circle. Well, I, I certainly don't want to damage the print. Someone oh, with God, an awful no. lot of You're uh, right. You trouble. can't do that. Well, Kyle, and, can you pull up that picture again? Because if I look really closely, I feel like I can almost see a camera lens or something. <laughs> like yeah, you can look into my... It's, it's such a high-quality picture. You can see the reflection of the people in my eye. Outstanding quality. The paint from... <laughs> the yeah. So you got any more AMA questions you wanna you wanna look at there? I'm sorry, my whole world is bouncing around here. Oh, um, it's okay. I, I'll yeah, find one if you want. Some problems with the? Uh, are you still having uh, Minecraft problems, Woody? <laughs> yes, I've got 99 problems and they're all Holy fucking Woody fuck, Crafts right so now. So many questions. <laughs> Just pick one at random. I'm sure we can figure one out. Um. How would you spend ten million dollars in twenty-four hours? Dollars is spelled wrong. <laughs> that really offends me. But dollars. <laughs> dollar. How would you spend ten million dollars? I hate those questions. It's like I don't know. I'd, I'd buy a bunch of gold so that I wouldn't have to rush my spending decision. I'd buy some assets with it, something that I could turn around and liquefy back into there cash. Are, so fun there at are four music. rules. Everything you buy has to be in your possession at the end of the time limit. No one else can spend the money beside you. Don't give half to your buddy. Don't everything, have to. everything you buy has to be paid with cash. Time begins where you're sitting right now. So you have to like go find ten million dollars worth of gold. Yeah. That you God damn it! I couldn't just I, put it in the market because it's you Friday honestly night. Do that? that sucks. Yeah, we do. No, if you had twenty four hours, you could find somewhere. Just go to Vegas and buy po poker chips. Like like. There's something. There's always something you could do with that money. You just go and you'd you'd put it in. You'd, you'd spend it I on something. I want it in something physical. I feel like a target. You know, like it, to me, I. Physical. Nobody knows that you, a poker chip is this big. I think that's the reason they added that stipulation so that we couldn't do some ringamaroo of like, oh, I'll just do this and put it in the market, or I'll invest in stocks. Like you could at least say you'll buy some high value real estate that you know is going to appreciate, or something like that. But yeah. I think. Thing is a little bit it'd be easy you just spend it on things that, that that aren't money holes that are that are at least moderately good investments real estate would be perfect yeah, yeah. i wish it was more than 10 million because it it amuses me that jay-z and beyonce were trying to buy a house and they got outbid by notch the Minecraft 73 guy. million dollars yeah I I just want to fuck with Jay Z. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> oh, you like that one too? Well, that was mine, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, it's two percent of his entire like total net worth right there on seventy three million dollars. It seems. I've been like... in the house. It's a it's an outstanding piece of property that I would never want to live in. Like, why wouldn't you want to live there? The sheer size of that house is not something that you can appreciate. Like once, like. Most people that are watching this show probably live between, you know, you might live in an apartment, you know, 10 or 1,000 square feet. Maybe you live in a large, large house, like 3,500 square feet. This house is 22,000 square feet. Wow. It is the size of like a Walmart. The fact that the, <laughs> when you walk into the, the living room, the distance from you to the kitchen is a full football field length of marble floor. And nothing but marble floor and paintings. It is, <laughs> and it, it is it, it is a depressing amount of space. That's I was there with 150 people, and I swear it felt like there were 10 people there. It was, that, that it is, was, I, yeah. I, that was first of all outstanding. Now I understand. Like I yeah. get it. You have fully explained it. My house is 6,500 square feet, something like that. Which is a huge house. It is a pain in the ass sometimes. Like if you're in the kitchen and you realize like you left your socks, which we store in the uh, the master closet, you're like, oh, like I, you want a fucking skateboard, like to go over <laughs> yeah. there and get the socks from the other part of the house. Yeah. And twenty two thousand square foot home. Is that a whole makes it like a reality that if you're standing in the middle of the living room and you get sudden diarrhea, you might not make it. Like, <laughs> like, like, and it's all white. It's all like you're shitting and there's a trail. <laughs> uh, favorite part from that that night it was it was honestly I was only there for two hours because it was like towards the end of I don't think there's a way you end up at that house before like 11 p.m. anyways but uh, they only had brown liquor out on the on the full scale bar that was unmanned by the housekeepers that were walking around collecting plates of food from everybody like he just had people there 
Um, and I asked one of them, I was like, hi, you have only brown liquor. Like, do you have any vodka? Because that's all I drink. And she laughed at me and then said, choose one. And I was like, that's great. But there were no bottles. And I turned out the whole wall is just vodka bottles. Like, it, it's all handles of vodka, about 300 of them in rows all the way down on this 10 foot ceiling. It's just, and she just, take one. Like the house is sponsored by this brand of vodka. Like <laughs> they will fill this. Like you can bring that home with you if you would like. I was like, oh, like that comes with the you get 73 there? million. Uh, through Fwiz. Through uh, Fwiz is friends with Notch. And I was there with uh, Vanoss and uh, somebody else. It was just so, like a random thing. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Sponsored by, you know, Absolute. It wasn't absolute. I had actually never heard of nice the brand. Regular drinks they had. You had to have vodka. You didn't want some no, like they had thousand dollar whiskey. They had like nine bottles of brown liquor of various types and sizes. Did, I'm not like a. Did you go to the pool? The pool yeah, is the what sells that house to me. Way smaller than I thought it would be. Uh, like like uh, you know when they see the the shot. So if anybody doesn't know, just go look at a picture. It's like a huge like crescent shaped pool that overlooks this gorgeous view of the entire Beverly Hills. The view is awesome, uh, but the pool itself, you could not dive from like one edge of the pool comfortably without like forcibly slowing yourself down before you hit the wall on the other side. It was like a good. 10 feet of space between one end and the other. So it was like way smaller than I thought it would be. Uh, still gorgeous because there's like three feet of three inch water where you put your chair in and you lay in the pool and whatever. Mm -hmm. But like when they, when you look at the video or whatever, it looks like a huge, huge, like Olympic sized swimming pool. When re in reality, it's like a very skinny, very long, beautiful though. Infinite. Is it because the yard wasn't big enough for more? Yeah, there's no space in that yard. I don't know if they... They probably could have made it bigger. I would have had a smaller house and a bigger pool. I know. Uh, yeah. Why not put an indoor pool in the football field of Marvel? That's what I'm saying. Like, see, this is why we're not millionaires. Probably because we're not the type of people that can appreciate football fields of marble. <laughs> it's probably where, like, three million of the house went to. I don't know. Well, probably. Marble. He could have had, like, a half indoor, half outdoor pool. I had a really rich friend who had one of those, or his grandpa did. Those are and pretty fly. Really nice pool. Half of it was outside. The other half, like, you could swim inside, and then, like, you press a button, and, like, a gate closed to, like, oh, seal. Oh, shit. Doing, during the winter, so the outside would be covered up and frozen, and the inside is heated. That's awesome, and, actually. That'd be so cool to just manufacture crazy Willy Wonka ideas of a house. But he could do that. That's what's crazy. Like, you could do that, but he, I mean, and no, like, more power to you if you're able to be like, yeah, I do want that house, and, like, I'll get it, and there's, like, no qualms about it. But I feel like with that amount of money, you would build that Willy Wonka house where, like, maybe I want a room that just has 13 subwoofers in it. Like, it's just a room with 13 subwoofers. I, because fuck you. Like, I'm going to go listen to music really loud in that room. Early in his career, Shaq wanted a house where the bed came from the floor. That was like his thing. He's like, like I want a room up. where a king size bed emerges from the floor. Like the, the <laughs> sides open and the bed comes up. Oh, and he shit. kept talking, like he was kind of responsible about it. He's talking to his financial manager and he's like, no, no, no. You need to have this much set aside before you're allowed to buy that. He's like, all right, call Nike, see what we can do. You know, like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I think he got it, but, um, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. He wanted to be that's that. That's awesome. He did a show with Shaq in it, like, a couple of years ago, and it was just like one of those shitty reality shows that's probably not on anymore called like Fish Tank Men or something. And it was basically these men who would go around to really rich people's houses and like demo like $15,000 fish and like $2 million tanks. And Shaq was there just like explaining how he wanted like a whole room with like every wall being a, it's fish, just a tank. fish tank. He's just like <laughs> this huge warehouse. Like, yeah, would like, that not be I, sick though? And I'm like, that eel? How much is this one? It's like that's a whatever the fuck electric eel. That one goes for thirteen thousand. It's like, yeah, three of those. It's like, it's like, Jesus Christ! It's like, how much money do you have that you can buy thirty-six thousand dollars worth of eel? Like a low-end Mercedes worth of fish that are gonna die eventually. Five years. There's like yeah. a. Have you? I mean, this. I know we're getting like super off topic, but like, there's a. Uh, there's a good video that I think it was a League of Legends streamer. And I know there's like 800 different like variations of this. And it's somebody donated him $1,000 and he's like, fuck it. Like, you know, obviously he's like super thankful. And somebody's like, holy shit. Like, I can't believe that somebody would waste $1,000 on you. He's like, look, with all due respect, the guy who spent $1,000 on me, he has 
it, you know, he's told me that I'm okay to say this. You know, he has about $24 million in his bank account. So he like goes and shows $24 million in $100,000 units. So $100,000, $100,000, $100,000. Yeah. So he takes $1,000 out and he's like, that's 100000 gone. It's like a page of 100000 He's like, he probably wouldn't notice it that much. And he's like, so imagine how much a billion dollars is. It's like 13 pages of nothing but $100,000 just posted out. And he's like, remove $2 million of that. And he's like, it's gone. I bet you, I bet you like all that money, no way in hell they would ever notice that amount of money missing. Like there's just such a huge scale of money that you can get to where it's just like that 13,000 bucks, like it's like going to buy a newspaper for you at that point. If you were that rich, wouldn't you want to like surprise people with just like, boom, yeah. Now. In there, like I've said this before, like you know those cannons they have at baseball games where they launch shit. I would just put like hundred dollar bills, like a ten thousand dollar wad, like a or <laughs> and just ride my limo down the street through really dangerous area. Not well, not really dangerous, dangerous enough that I'm still okay. And then just like pop out of the roof and just fire it at some random homeless guy, and it hits him in the chest, knocks him back, and he's really pissed for a second until he notices that he's covered in. Tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Other homeless people come and tear them to shreds, but everybody comes away with like five hundred bucks, so it's a net win. Yeah. Society. Dude, I mean, it, it was yeah, ten like ten thousand dollars is a lot of money, right? And, and if you just drop it in a person's lap, it can change a lot for them, right? Like it, it, maybe that's the amount of debt they have, and suddenly like this crippling stress thing that's in their life is gone. But on the other hand, like ten thousand dollars. It fits in like a brown plastic, like a brown lunch bag, and yeah. you can blow it on a good weekend in Vegas. Like, it, what you do with it is pre can be pretty. Like, there's a, there's a wild disparity of what ten grand means to different people. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the scale of it. Uh, well, the the whole thing is uh, that there's that. I think it was like Neil deGrasse Titan in his uh, uh, TED talk is how much money would it or how much would it have would it take for Bill Gates to say. No, that's too that's too little money. It's not worth my time to bend down and pick it up. So he's like, you know what? If I'm walking down the street, you know, I make the I make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year. If I'm walking down the street and I see a quarter, I'll probably pick up a quarter. If I see ten cents, like maybe not worth my time. It's there, it's dirty, but like a quarter, I can use that to pay my parking bill. And he's like, the equivalent amount of money that Bill Gates would be like, that's a quarter. Like I'll pick down is like forty one thousand dollars <laughs> in cash. Just the point where you're walking down the street and you're like the greater than the average amount of income per household in America, like, I don't really want to bend over and pick that up. Like, so somebody could, else can grab that. Yeah, he could see, like, an Audi A5 sitting there with the bow on it with the keys He's in like, it. It's uh, like, hey, someone drop this. It's up for grabs. And he'd be like, ah. What <laughs> I am have I to do? get in it. Tucker, no room to get in it. Tucker, what yeah, are you driving state. nowadays? My 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix, 200,000 miles on it. Broken front headlamp. What do you approve? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if you followed the, uh, yeah, the, the, the playbook, the YouTube playbook, and bought GT. yourself a, a re an expensive car. I'll get car. there. I'll get there. I have I, my priority right now is moving outside of Los Angeles. Like this, Los Angeles is a stupid expensive city. If anybody is even like remotely considering it, just like look up the price of a one bedroom apartment and then reassess your entire life decision because. You know, at the point in my life where I'm very fortunate enough to be like, yeah, I'd like to own a piece of property. There is not a single piece of property that is for sale under half a million dollars in the entirety of Los Angeles County that is more than two bedrooms and is not in Compton. And like that, like you, if you don't believe me, go to Trulia or Zillow and put your maximum 500 and then look at every property that's not a foreclosure. There's about three, and they're all in South Central. It's it like, like astounding. I, I can see why you'd want to live in L.A. if you had to go to L.A. all the time. But you just need to be close enough to take advantage of like networking opportunities. Like yeah. You can drive 30, 40 minutes or whatever it is. Well, we're looking at like Washington. Cause, dude, okay. So, so the, you're, you're finding the networking opportunities aren't worth it. No. All right, so I live... Uh, Actually, we're not going to say whatever I was about to say right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's great. Living where I am is great. Just like, you know, I'm sure living where you do in, in proximity to these major cities works out well for whatever you need to do. Or, you know, it, it works for me because there's a lot of gaming industry in this area. Like, I didn't have to leave my house for E3. I stayed here every night. I took Ubers there and back. It was really great. You know, I don't lose that day to travel. But... 
the income tax on California's like state, the state income tax is 13.3%, which is 4% higher than any of the next highest ones. And it's absurdly high. Yo, kids, you're going to love tax season when you get to it. Uh, <laughs> Washington has 0% income tax. Mm -hmm. And if you live in Vancouver, Washington, which is actually where quite a few uh, other YouTubers live, Gold Glove namely, uh, Oregon has no state sales tax or, or has no sale tax. So you can go to Portland, Oregon, do all your shopping with no sales tax. You can live in Washington with no income tax. It's a one minute drive over the border because they're literally across a river and you don't have to pay 13.3% income tax in California. And the internet's sufficient? Yeah, they, uh, Portland's getting Google Fiber. So. Right. Yeah, so am I, know, supposedly. Yeah, it's rolling out slowly, right? Dude, it's just living here sucks. It. I got an for, email. Like, I got an email. This Did you? Week. Yeah, it said that they've switched from the design to the construction phase. They're like, "Have you seen us out there with our shovels and our hard hats?" I'm like, "No, no. <laughs> <laughs> not not even a single time ever." He's like, are "We're you, coming to you." Are you in the zone? Like when you looked it up, like you're in the zone that should be getting it, right? I don't. I feel like they haven't designed. Like they haven't defined the zone. The purpose of the email they sent me was, I think, to like gather interest. You know, they're they're looking at who's checking to see if it's available. And that's going to influence where they build first. So, you know, I'm okay. certainly letting them know that I'm interested, but right. um, I, I'm not going to be toward the top of their list. I think they'll be looking for more densely populated neighborhoods than mine. Business Triangle Park area. I'm in like there. That. Yeah. Like, oh, I, okay. Yeah. I, I, I have a Raleigh address, but um, I just, you know, my little, my little corner of Raleigh, like I've got a 14 and a half acre plot here and like that. oh okay you're not like in raleigh raleigh you're just i in the area. i have one of the bigger lots in raleigh and oh, God. uh um so I, I just feel like i'm personally one of the less attractive targets we'll see when it gets to me kyo you have some really shitty internet don't you out there it's uh it's not awful it's gotten better over the years i think right now it's like 14 down and like two and a half up which is shitty by you know, comparisons with anything out there near LA. Right. But around here in my little rural area, that's not too bad. Pretty and good. I can I can do everything I really need to do. I can't live stream, but I can you know, I can watch H D videos. I can stream H D video and watch that. It doesn't Yeah, fourteen down is enough. You just can't live yeah, you, know, you can't upload crazy shit. Yeah, and I can do this, you know. I, I, this works out pretty nicely. But if I ever want to download something, torrent something, God forbid, uh, you know, it's a wait. And, uh, you know, yeah. new, uh, new console games when I've got to do, like, some 17-gig download. It's like, well, I guess I won't be playing this game today. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a question that, I, that came up with me, uh, you know, because I have a girlfriend, so everything that I do has to involve, you know, her... Would you, Woody, knowing that there is, if, all right, so let's just say Google Fiber just misses you, and I know you're already settled in, but like Kyle and Woody, would you guys move for better internet? And we're not talking like you're moving for the chance of better internet. We're talking, <laughs> 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 we're talking like, you know, if you move here, you're getting the one gig down, one gig up Google Fiber for a hundred bucks a month guaranteed, you know, and you're moving to a similar area, but you just have to put up with the shit of moving to get there yeah i'd probably do that yeah i think if as long as i'm not moving too far like if i can still accomplish all the same things I'm, i can do here like if yeah. i'm 45 minutes away like yeah totally yeah probably yeah. yeah when we bought a house internet is a big thing and i feel like that's not everybody but it should be you know if yeah. i told you like hey this is a really great home the electricity's spotty your lights are going to be coming and going and and you know your oven doesn't get the full temperature but otherwise, the drywall's nice, but the electricity's, you know, it's kind of shit. No, no, no. <laughs> the internet is a utility that needs to be good. When we, the, the sellers, when I told them that I was having better internet run from Time Warner, were like, you could do that? They wouldn't do it for me. And they, they told me no, too. They're like, we don't service right. that area. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't service it? I'm like, everything's for sale. Give me a quote. And, uh, and we work from there. So... Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely internet. It, it, to me, it's a important utility. I wouldn't buy well, a place yeah. where the water sucked. I wouldn't buy a place where the electricity sucked. And the internet has to be able to to do what I needed to do. It's crazy because when we were moving out here with Trevor and myself and Brennan, when we were looking at a house, it was actually between this house and a house in Beverly Hills with a pool. I mean, you know, like right in prime area. Beverly Hills house was going to cost three hundred bucks a month for five upload between three of us. 
and it was just like we we can't live here like mm-hmm. they're like we moved here for a job no matter how nice the house is if you can't do your job you're not living here long enough so we're just like fuck we'll get the lesser of the two but it has way better internet boom three fios, FIOS lines there? Here. yeah we have three fios lines of 150 150 into the house so yeah. it's awesome that is awesome like I, yeah. part of me wonders i mean obviously there's more to live streaming than just internet connection but quality is a thing you yeah. know, if you have a strong PC and a, a Fios channel, then you just that gives you an advantage over other streamers. You can oh, look absolutely. better. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, their Twitch caps it at thirty five hundred kilobits per second, which is good enough to have ten eighty thirty, like really crisp ten eighty p thirty frames per second, or really crisp seven twenty p sixty frames. It is not good enough to do ten eighty sixty. It looks a little bit ready, a little bit pixelated. YouTube lets you do it at nine thousand right now, so. Uh, I'm expecting Twitch to bump it up, but like if I was able or if like you're in Google Fiber, if they had no bitrate maximum, bitrate for the people that are watching that aren't sure, it's the amount of data that you can that you're pushing to the stream. So it's like, you know, the higher the bitrate, the better the quality. So, you know, you could do at like ten thousand bitrate, you could do like ten eighty P sixty FPS and it would look like you're watching a ten eighty P video like, you know, eight full H D Netflix or Hulu. So you're right. You would get like a huge, huge, huge advantage over somebody who's only able to do seven twenty P. It would look it would look way different, leaps and bounds different. Yeah. Yeah. Like standard def versus H D. Heck, I'm watching the three of you and your picture is better than the other two. That uh, is be that is because of the the camera that I'm using though. Like I have a what what this is is a uh it's a canon g30 that i have an hdmi out like it's like a full like camera and then i run it into a uh, a a capture card in my pc so it's like a full 1080 60 fps camera now what are you doing for lighting uh, i got an led panel right there nice. i've got a laptop with a green <laughs> camera and a window behind me i mean but it works i don't there <laughs> but it works like that's all you need to get started too like i i'm I, I always get sick when people are like holy shit like you have thousands of dollars in equipment you're like yeah i fucking this is my job i like spend a lot of money on my equipment but like what taylor's got is it, it more than sufficient to get the job done and get you going it's like, a that's start. all everybody had i, I feel like the, the the investment you put in shows off in the product you know like it does yeah you know. it just it scales like that or it, it has like diseco- or diseconomy of scale so like the more you put in at a certain point it's like you have to pay yeah thousands of dollars to get a slight bump in in it quality turns once you hit that critical that's mass. what it diminishing recur- re- yeah. returns yeah so Crazy much money. shit let's see uh any more amas that you noticed kyle while you were musefully looking about <laughs> there, there's a few here uh, you know they're, they're this isn't our best uh you guys of AMA. suck at asking questions. Well, uh, let's see. I mean, I mean, here's one. When Kyle builds your fence, would you consider putting a couple head of cattle on your property to help on taxes? If it were me, I would put some Longhorns and show operating, uh, show 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 that I'm operating at a loss. I guess he means on your taxes. Uh, so far this year, the shows have been great. Keep up the good work. So the question is, Woody, do you think you could save money on taxes by starting a Longhorn <laughs> cattle business and uh, having it lose money on your property? Funny you mention that. Jesus. <laughs> so funny you mention. I got a like, letter. How do you have a tangential story for this? Like <laughs> right now, when I bought this place, I knew that the homeowners association expired soon, and it expires as I look at this in like five or six days. And I didn't want an HOA. Like that was a thing that I came in here thinking. Now they want to re up it, and it's just and, and if the, if I sign this, it's just going to keep getting re upped and re upped. And the HOA is not that restrictive. There's no cost, like no monthly fees or anything, but it prevents you from having swine. And it more importantly prevents you from putting like smaller houses on this land. Like if you look like past where I live, there's all sorts of like medium density housing and and it's zoned for even like townhouses and condos and something. Like I think there's some areas where you can put like 15 units per acre or something. Your house is zoned for townhouses and condos? I need to double check on that, but I think it is. But you think it is. Okay, I got you. So that would be preventing people from just being like, all right, fuck my house. Let me build a townhouse right here in the middle of the neighborhood. Exactly. Right. But I have enough land that I kind of feel like if they put townhouses, and a lot of my neighbors have like two acres. So they're like, let's not all, let's all agree not to put townhouses. And it's like, you've got an acre or two. I have 14 and a half. Like when we all agree not to have a developer do stuff, we're really all agreeing that I'm not doing that. <laughs> and it yeah, you're turn- not putting shit on one acre land. 
Yeah. So it turns out I have the tie-breaking vote that, um, yeah. And now, like, I am deciding whether or not this homeowners association <laughs> keeps going or not. My attorney <clears throat> called me back this afternoon, so I'm going to send them all the documents and stuff tonight after the show probably. And, um, and I have to make a decision on this. And um, one of the things that the other people are saying is like, look, if this HOA goes away, then the taxes on the, the real estate taxes can be based on the best use of this property. So it might go to like $12,000 a year, your real, my real estate taxes, which is about doubling. On the other hand, if I put a farm on here, they'll cut in half. Like, yeah, you know, fuck it, Woody. You got so much land. Fuck those people. <laughs> and like, you can put a farm on it and then you can say, fuck the farm. Let me develop on it. And then you just double dipped and you're all good. It seems like your llama farm really might come to fruition. Like, <laughs> there we go. So, really, so know, if the HOA doesn't prayers. exist, there's nothing protecting me from like $12,000 a year property taxes. But if I put a farm on it, it'll not be 12. It'll be like three. It'll be less than it is now qualifies as a farm like, funny you asked i've looked into this it, all you need <laughs> is a thousand dollars in sales and i was talking to someone they're like yeah that might be tougher to pull off than you think a thousand dollars is a yeah kyle okay here's the deal i'm giving each of you 500 bucks you know, and i'm selling eggs at 500 dollars a pop do we have a deal here i'll take two <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could sign the the flank steak and send it to a fan for 500 bucks like you know yeah right even, uh, like put effort into this one. <laughs> i'll sear it in like a woody's gamer tag i like you know, heated <laughs> thing Wait, is it just the farm itself or the llc that the farm is based off of because you could just fucking sell Woody's Gamertag branded searing steak prongs. I, I don't know how it works exactly, but the, the farm has to produce $1,000 a year of, and not profits, this. revenue. You have to sell $1,000 a year. Bruh, you got uh, it. Right, yeah. Not even, I, is it gross? I feel, I feel like gross is like before taxes stuff, but yeah, just total income, sales, sales. Yeah. You get 1000 yeah, in sales. That's not a problem at all. I'll buy a llama calf from you if that's what they're called for a grand and we'll be all good but the question is like what kind of farmer are you going to be because you actually going to have to do this you know you are like yeah three three grand versus 12 grand versus probably five or six grand like easy decision llama time yeah is somebody going to pay you five thousand dollars to take care of a llama like you're not going to say no that's fuck that's an experience you got to get yourself a llama don't llamas spit at people yeah but that's that's, that's fucking hype no, no llama spit Llama yeah, spit. llama spit. Yeah, I watched a woman go in for a kiss to a llama, and she's like, and the <laughs> llama's like, right, right at her. She's got oh, she got covered. It was awful. But um, llama, may, may, maybe ostriches. Ostriches are hype. Those can be dangerous. Though, I don't know if you've ever seen oh, an yeah. ostrich yeah. up close they and personal. Kick. They're big. They could kill you. Like like yeah. they've got like these thumb talons, like a velociraptor, and they oh, could just fuck. really. Disembowel you if they. They're that they, badass, dude. Yeah. dude it's seen, so like, big, and powerful. Yeah, I've seen ostriches like run, keep pace, like while locking eyes at like forty miles an hour with a guy in the car who like. By runs. the car, yeah, yeah. They're and so just, big, dude. And emus are, are are really big too. Like when you like stand next to this thing, you're like, oh fuck, you're like much bigger than me. Like like its head is like eight yeah. nine feet up there, and he's walking around. His legs are like Dangerous. that big around. What if I steer away from the dangerous ornery animals? Just get like four sheep, one chicken. Sell Kyle a get pigs. Pigs are super nice. Eight hundred dollars. Miniature horses. Yeah. Right. All right, but that. Oh, that's but kinda those good. are health issues, and horses are stupid expensive. Like it. Like people have pigs as house pets. Like apparently pigs are super loyal. They're like dogs, but really dirty and it's taste funny. good. Pigs so. are like the other thing that the HOA currently doesn't allow. How funny would it be if I didn't sign the HOA and started and a swine farm? And you just got farm. a fucking mini pig. <laughs> 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 Call it fucking pig farm. Yeah, yeah. I like them pigs. I, yeah, you could be brick top. This would be great. Get pigs. So I, I honestly don't know for sure what I'm going to do with this HOA thing. I am waiting on my attorney to get back to me. We're sort of cutting it close. All right. Well, but. here's what I recommend you get, Woody, because I think this would be easy and like super easy to take care of. Get one cow. Like They're a not cow. A cow. All right. A Holstein cow, like the black and white milk cow. But what about like the cost of like if it gets legitimately ill and you have to like make that decision to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, I just feel like the cost of like recouping a cow is way more than the cost of recouping a pig. About 15 cents. <laughs> <laughs> and a whole. That's that probably I mean, how you do it. 
I mean, you got to. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't be paying a vet to come look at that. No, we, we, we'll go get a vet involved, but at a some point, you got to cut your losses. What the There's hell gotta is it? There's got to be some good fresh steak. My yep. Scottish guy was really adamant about having the best cows in the world. What the? They look like yaks. They better be Wagyu. Highland or cows. Not getting them. That's what you need, Woody. You need to start your own official Wagyu cow business so you can import Wagyu meat. That shit's like $10,000 per pound? I don't Wait, know. Scottish guy has cows. Is it like uh, organic cows where you know how they say like free range or these like freshly fucked and regularly pleasured cows? Dude, <laughs> they're like emo cows. Here, I'll give you a picture. Emo cows? You'll see. I hope they have the haircut. Just... <laughs> Those are more like like California surfer dude cows, man. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I've seen these before. Yeah, he was really proud no, of them. Don't get don't get some ridiculous like no. Irish cow. Get a get a southern cow so your neighbors don't laugh at you. No, don't want the cow. Cows can cost a lot and they can die more easily than you think. Just get a bunch of chickens, easy to replace. That's it. That's but, all you need. Easy to feed, easy to take care of. You got enough land that they can just do whatever the hell they want, yeah. and you'll actually get good eggs from it. And like I've an seen venom. chicken fences. They cost like ten cents a foot. Exactly. Like for it's, me to fence in a cow it's pasture. Wire mesh. Yeah, a cow pasture. This is a serious investment in like fencing and. I figured you were already doing that fencing to begin with, though. Chicken coop is all you need. I'm not sure. So far, our dogs. Have, ever since Jack died, we just opened the door, let the dogs do their well, business, and then open it again, and they return. We need to get the king of cocks on the phone and figure out just uh, where to go from here. Then I think. Another thing, cocks. If you're just the king of cocks. You're not familiar the with king the of king of cocks? of cocks. I'm sorry. Who is it? Wings of Redemption. I was about to say, is it wings? But I didn't want to bring it up because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wings. You know, wings used to sell like fighting chickens, and I always thought that a great reality show would be like the king of cocks with Jordan Jordan, and like like he'd be wearing like, just, a like gold. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a gold like t chicken medallion like the outline of one and he's yes. wearing like a shirt with like roosters all over it and, and yeah it'd be great no Smoking joke aside outstanding. wings would make a much better reality show <laughs> than a lot of the reality shows on tv i, I mean yeah. th th he can speak he can work to a camera he has a crazy cast around him and like you know because people say being a rally star takes no talent it does talent. take a talent you know you have to be relatable if i take a camera and point it at most people you get nothing from them if you point a camera at wings he'll have a thing to say he'll have a story to tell he'll he could do a thing and uh yeah he, he would so he just under has, proper direction i feel like wings is a real gold mine i've always thought i don't think i have the skills because i've never made a tv show but i feel mm -hmm. like a tv producer could go in there and like take what he has and turn it into a legit ra reality show that would be fun to watch. We're not making a new Seinfeld here, but we're definitely like several levels above like trash TV, like Honey Boo Boo, like legitimate drama, um, funny characters. Uh, that's, that, that's Wing's life in general. Like there's, 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 there's highs, there's really low lows, there's all kinds of drama, there's interesting people to meet every step of the way. You're never quite getting the full story and you're always longing to like get more information about, well, who's that old guy? Who's that lady? Is that a boyfriend or a wife or a husband? Like who are all these people? You know? to, I guess it was his daily walk vlogs, right? And then you'd be like, hey! Player fours entered the ring. Who's that? <laughs> like, Who's that guy? Yeah. That's mama's boyfriend. All right. Well, shit. Let's, let's talk to him. I didn't know, you know about him. Let's see what yeah. he's got cooking. You know? It, uh, yeah. I find wings to be uh, infinitely entertaining. Um, I, I've, like, like, I always introduce girlfriends to Wings of Redemption videos. And, and like... It's funny to see what someone who's like the opposite of his regular demographic, you know, like a 24-year-old girl. It's w interesting to show a 24-year-old 24 24-year-old girl a Wings of Redemption video and then get her reaction because right. generally they like it. Like they're like, "Oh, that's pretty funny. That's ridiculous." Oh, no. Like, well, "All right, let's watch another one. Where, where did we go from here?" Yeah. You know, it's it's a relatable uh interesting story that is his life. He's a character. He's a character. <sighs> exactly. Yeah, totally. I wish he would do some more. YouTube thing recently, hasn't he? I haven't checked his channel in a long while. Yeah, I, you guys are my only source for Wings news. I think he's <laughs> streaming a little, but not as much as, um, not regularly, not what I would call regularly. And I don't know, his uploading pattern has seemed to be kind of slack. I, I can only guess. I, I, like, so we know on Facebook that he got a prescription for antidepressants, right? And he's yeah. starting to feel better and his world's looking up to him. But I think the lack of like pressure 
you know, the, the, the internally driven like concern about the mortgage in the future and stuff that was driving him to produce content. And now it seems like he, he does a podcast and, and he does um, live streams, but it's like you get eight pieces of content a month out of him and that's everything. Whereas, is he working at all with uh, whatever his name is? Not to uh, my knowledge. It, see, that's the problem. It, he, he has a hard time balancing, uh, you know, the different Jordies, I feel like. It seems like every time, every time he focuses really heavily on fitness, uh, it seems like he starts slipping in other areas of his life. And then, like, so right now, I, the last thing I heard from him was that he was going to focus on streaming because that was where he thought he, his money was going to come from. You know, his focus was paying the rent, you know, paying the bills, et cetera. And he just didn't feel like he had the time and energy to invest into weight loss. Um, so I don't know where he is now. I wish him the best as always. Uh, you know, he's the... I, he's, I talked to him this is a couple of weeks back, but I, I know that something about the receiving of donations while streaming doesn't sit that comfortably with him, you know? And, and it's uh, like, I, I've been there too. I try to find the balance between being appreciative and not being like the dancing monkey. And I, uh, like, I, I see, I don't want to... I don't, I don't know how I live in this world, man. I know. I, I'll call yeah, you because I have beans, Tucker. man. I'm not talking about you. I, I guess what I was going to only no, Blade thinking, no. shows up on live stream fails a well, lot. Well, we I was going to let Tucker like like name names. See, that's <laughs> yeah. I was going to. I'm going to name names. There's a several. There are several people out there that uh, and like I should note that when um, when the streaming and taking donations as part of like the stream became more accepted as like a as a as a thing. In the back of my head, I was always like, look, I feel uncomfortable when people give me gifts on my birthday. Like, I'm not the type of person that's going to feel comfortable when somebody who I've never met gives me $5 or $50 or whatever. It ramps up crazy. But <clears throat> at the same time, the way that it went about was people would ask so much that it genuinely annoyed me that there were so many people that were, like, upset with my lack of method of for them to, like, directly contact me and have, like, an a, an intimate moment with my stream so they'd be like let me like let me donate and like get this thing so you will see it and like it might suck but like if it doesn't suck like that's great so then i'll read it and for the very large majority they're very like hey man thanks for producing this or doing this you know i appreciate this or you know hey are you gonna do this xyz and all always it's very like you know thank you for doing this i appreciate you supporting the stream but like you know it's very hands off like this is not necessary there are certain people out there one of whom most recently really pisses me off her name's pink sparkles or is pink sprinkles pink some you'll find her very easily if you search yeah uh she she wants to basically and it's it's not it's i'm trying to phrase this correctly she's not representative of other females that stream in the space but she i have watched her draw uh cleavage lines like with mascara so she could fucking uh get more like while on camera just like oh is this better so you guys can see my cleavage better and then she'll get donations that'll pop up and be like you fucking whore whatever 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 and uh and, it, and it'll show up like the voice read it out so it'll be like you fucking whore like and then she'll fake getting really upset so people will donate more money oh what she a great a show <laughs> so it's a great sh that's exactly it's a great show for those who understand it but the annoying part is she'll have like donation goal zero out of five thousand dollars no like just like please you know begging for donations and you know putting on this act specifically to get only donations and that's where the line is just like Incredibly way I was, I was <laughs> very shameless chan. i was on 4chan today and they yeah. were listing like uh it, the, the whole thread was about uh like twitch whores and they like had like what what are those things web m's or whatever you know you web m web m gifts the like 60 fps the best gifts yeah. yeah um so like there's tons of those of like the horriest whores on twitch and it was wonderful like there's one <laughs> chick it's outstanding who, <clears throat> lots of like, like like they're wearing like these super tight uh like it's i wouldn't call it leather it's some sort of uh, like synthetic fabric mm -hmm. that at first looks like leather um, kind of shiny, shiny, but matte, or almost. Yeah. yeah, but when she bends over, you see straight through to like her ass, and like you can see the outline of her thong, and you can see like mm -hmm. a camel toe in the front. And she goes over and like marks this board for like every time there's a, she a, a writes subscriber. the subscriber's name on. And, it. Yes. and the way she like squats, her, her 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 skirt flares up in the back, and you see her ass for like a split second. And she like does it multiple times. It's like every time some money comes in, you basically get flashed a little. I, and, I could go on for 
hours and hours about the and I want to I want to LS there there it, it is I I don't hate the people that are doing this because they are playing the game the way that capitalism's meant to be played they are taking this like niche uh like it's not even niche they're taking this community of people that get off on making other people quote unquote like break and like oh god like you're right I am just a whore but like stop donating like it's killing like you're so offensive like they know how to play the game and it's genuinely an impressive like no. cycle to watch. I feel it, like you're, and I hate them for getting like. Well, there's well known a thing. Of like we had Cat Gun on the show, and um, oh, Cat, yeah, that's a nice lady. She seemed to not enjoy some of the people who say you're only successful because of your boobs and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. There's a very. She didn't like it. On the other hand, she did also seem to play to it. Like when she showed yeah, up on this. Like, yeah, sure. she, she showed up on this show with the cleavage I'm cam, and her, she had um, a minion shirt on, if I remember right, and there was an eye on each boob. I and, will say, I'm not seeing enough cleavage for my taste out of Tucker right now. I'd like you. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're right. I'm like, I like. Oh. I know. Oh, he's got the chest hair. Ooh, Taylor. I will say that this like was a huge big uh, thing that came out where and it's like an incredibly touchy subject in the area and I just like try and stay as far removed because it reminds me so much of being in high school where like you get like super catty people again super like overly aggressive like dudes just like fuck you you only use your boobs so like they you know the the thing what you're saying with cat and not necessarily just with her but with a lot of girls she's, is that she's they, halfway there right like she it, she she wants the upside without the downside i don't know a better way to say it like you know there's no way to go about it. you're gonna offend somebody with, when you say it. basically there's a they want to uh there are people out there that want to be able to wear what they want to wear without being labeled with the same negative tendencies that the people Perfect. that use it exploiting it specifically for that reason are are using it so it sucks because yeah i personally like great when my girlfriend goes and streams in a tank top which she does like once in a blue moon i'm like yeah more boobs like i like your boobs that's why i date you and it's great like i'm glad that you're comfortable now we know why wearing those. right yeah it's just her boobs <laughs> i'm glad that you're comfortable wearing that but at the same time she doesn't want to be taken as the reason that people watch me eh? <laughs> yeah that's got nice the reason that people watch me is because of my boobs so i get it but there's no real comparison that dudes can have. It'd be like you wearing like it'd be like you having a calf cam, Woody, where you're just like the calves <laughs> are like on the screen and people are like, Woody, I love your Minecraft gameplay, but like you have your calf cam up there and you're just like, But it's just my calves, baby. Like that's just part of me. Blade's you know? doing a thing now, and I, I don't wanna like at first I you say don't talk. <laughs> I don't yo, he has the I, at first I, watched I him thought it was like a mistake. I wasn't going to mention that one in particular. But I, I just recently I watched him take his shirt off and lick his nipples for a donation. And, Wait, uh, who's this? Only use me, Blade. Ah, uh, hi, Brian. At first, it was Why? like, oh man, you know, this isn't going well. That's not a good look for you. You know, with the finger up the butt and everything. Now it's like I, I feel like drinking and streaming is his stick, and it's like, hey, go watch Blade if you like seeing men lick their nipples. You know, it's uh, you know. He'll get shirtless. He'll argue with his. I think that woman is his girlfriend. I know it's the roommates. Yeah, they I, I, go crazy. Um, oh, you remember? I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, right? not really. I but it, it, to me, what he's doing, like the the show and the donate for uh, actions and stuff, it, it, like okay. there's the guy equivalent. Yeah. All right. So there's I like, feel like he would deny it. I feel like he would embrace and say like, yeah, no shit, I did that to achieve this. He's not yeah. doing the two-handed where it's like oh i want to be recognized for this but when t shit gets a little rough and i'm not getting donations and i'm not doing this i'm going to kind of tweak it a bit and do this while still mm -hmm. maintaining that i'm not and upholding some you know fictitious uh pillar of standards when if you just admit it and say that's what you're doing that's fine but it seems like there's a lot and i don't even watch twitch so i could be totally off here but it seems there's, like there's a falsehood of it where it's like you're there are you're not yeah there there's like there's a there's a very distinguishable line that a lot of people that understand the issue of allowing people to wear what they want to wear and feel comfortable wearing it because there are I should say that the the more the serious side of it is if you go and you're just like watching the random channels if you're just scrolling through and you see a girl there a lot of times and I'm guilty of this and I know a lot of people are you click on it and you're like oh god like you know is this another person who's just using their themselves to like get attention via one way or another and you have and it's that that mental 
like uh, coming into streams that have brand new female streamers with that mentality is like super damaging to not only females in the gaming space, but Twitch as a whole as like a community. So there's like a very noticeable line between those that use it as a as a leverage point and you can like draw singularities between like, hey, I'll say it like, you know, I'll go on my free cams and they will do the same thing with like, there's a whiteboard, somebody donates tokens, they'll write the token name up there. They'll be like, thank you so much. And they'll do a little dance in their outfit and they'll go sit down and it encourages donations. Like people will do that on Twitch. And for good reason, it's a proven thing that gets you donations. But like, it's like that as a whole, there's no denying it is damaging towards people that are really just trying to make a name for themselves as being like, you know, genuine streamers gamers so like it's pretty obvious when somebody goes out of the way to use it there are people that play both sides kind of shamelessly but for the most part you know blade is like doing the equivalent of what you know pink sparkles does like holy <laughs> sh like literally outlining her tits and is like you know is this better is this better like you know whatever works for you i'm not gonna hate like i had a hard time against tos I, like, so at first I didn't even acknowledge donations and follows and stuff. And then I stepped it up a little bit where I just say thank you and maybe read what they have to say. Right. Um, it, but it, it's gotten to the point where it's like, well, you know, should people get some sort of value for this? And you know, people were mad that I didn't acknowledge a donation. There was actually threads on Reddit about me not doing it. And uh, like now I kind of get it because like I am... Um, so we watched a guy named Filthy Robot. He plays Civilizations. He was on the show. We like him a lot. Yeah. And uh, I donated to him and it popped up and I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And I did the next stream and he had computer issues and it didn't pop up. And I was like, man, what I feel like I bought was the pop up. That's yeah. what I bought. Like, you know, you may think that that donation is because I want you to have five dollars. But to me, I purchased the pop up and it didn't work. And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of. And I do the same thing. Like, I'll donate to my own girlfriend. And, like, I, I'm not losing that. That's just like, here's $5. Like, I, I just want to, like, say something stupid to you. Mm -hmm. But if it pop, if it doesn't pop up or if it pops up but she, like, takes a while to read it, I'll be like, well, fuck, man. Just, like, read the donate. Like, I have something clever to say in there. Like, I don't care, like, I don't care that you got my $5. Like, that $5 was worth it to get to the point where you read this. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely he was playing relatable. Civ. And he was like, all right, I don't want to be at war with this guy. I'll take the furs. You take the salt, etc." cetera. And huh. uh, I'm like, you know, fuck that guy. Take them both. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. And it didn't pop up. And then, like, he read it, like, 15 minutes later, and the moment was gone. And I'm like, man. I like that he would name his, uh, his cities whatever yes. we wanted them. And he would even name his, like, units, his workers and such to yeah. what we wanted, like, you know, it's it's the kind of game where like you know you're looking at the cityscape dozens of times throughout the gameplay. So it's like, yeah, that's Woodycraft city. That's, that's totally. I would pit my Minecraft server on his stream. Like this, he's got Woodycraft. He's got yeah. factions fire. I'm naming his cities <laughs> with my donations. And he's that's a cool like, guy. That's like uh, a yeah. tasteful way to do donations too. Like that's mm -hmm. the tasteful way to be like you're not you're you're doing this with the understanding that people like you know that the donations are there for other things not necessarily they are related to you but it's not like woody here's three hundred dollars i don't give a shit what you do with it like i don't care about the pop-up here it is like i want that three hundred dollars plus the whole chat going holy shit three hundred like you're so generous and like i feel good you feel good you know you're a temporary celebrity yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. i understand He's, it completely uh, to get your yeah. name there and I think it's fine if people want to do the you know tracing your boobs or uh, you know licking your nipples or whatever Blade was doing like that's fine do I that just, I just think it's silly to do what you were mentioning earlier where it's like they're kind of playing a video game and it's mainly just that's the medium that they need to be in the environment where they can yeah so yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. like Under don't hide it yeah embrace and you're what you're gonna do who actually wants to play video games and get noticed so it's like go do that on a on some cam horse site yeah, like where yeah. you can actually make probably more money or something i don't know how much you make right money. that's what i wonder because there's a thin line there but like you're you're there. usurping a position. well i know that selena 22 chick like i i know she makes a ton she's like uh i i we, we see that's we've a seen thick stuff. line though she's not near twitch girl she's an actual porn star now that's true I, I think yeah. I feel like that's where. Well, you know, just go ahead and cross over to that line. I that's would like it. I think that all hot girls should cross over to that line. Yeah, absolutely. You, <laughs> you, you guys have had. I don't mean to throw you on a bus. You guys probably have more understanding of like how tokens work on those sites, like the free my free cams and stuff like that. Like you probably know the estimated amount of whatever a thousand tokens is. I can't. But I, I all I know is I can go to like uh, there's this one 
streamer who popped up. Her name is, uh, what is her name now? Fuck, it used to be Jugs Cast. It's Christine, <laughs> Kristen Plays. I've got to pull up an image for you because I know that none of you have seen it. She I'm on the was way. A, yeah, oh, you are? She was a porn star. Um, and you'll understand immediately why this was a very lightning rod of a, uh, of a streamer because this is the most modest thing that she would ever wear. Um, and her title was Jugs Cast. It's like, wow. like 30, it's like 34 double J cups. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got a gun and, she, and she would put in her description links to her Kickstarter to get her bigger boobs. Hell like, yeah. Like links like donate $200 towards <laughs> my next breast upgrade and you'll Fuck get like yeah. uh, my, my I, kick and my Snapchat. They but I would say more well, if she did them one at a time though. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I want this one to be this big. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Be, if she did one, and then you had to donate you know, to match them. Coming, 2016, the left titty. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I want to be part of that Patreon. Yes. Terrible. Yes. Those look like they'd be as like hard as cobblestones. Like oh yeah. Forty yeah, absolutely. pounds. You could total twenty pounds each. I've never oh, touched yeah. a fake boob. Right, never happened. And I like. I believe Kyle could make it happen for me. I just need to get permission. I want to be like Jackie. <laughs> like. Uh, it's not even a sexual thing. I just want to know. Can I squeeze one boob? We're going to we're going to Chicago. Kyle's got like I don't know three or four women out in Chicago with the I could choose. Not 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 now. Just you know like the hypothetically. Kyle could arrange it. Kyle could arrange it. I'm sure. You could just put a couple phone calls. Like, can you send your best fake titties out here right now? Yeah. Like, come my on. My friend Woody's never felt them. I one need tweet best. from Kyle would have six of them volunteering to let me squeeze. He's like, <laughs> really. That could ruin his, his future endeavors in trying to do that. If it's like, oh, now every time he tweets, he's just got some old man with him who wants to get <laughs> <laughs> so up the fuck Kyle. He just had this old dude who <laughs> it, I got the fuck up out of there. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Right before I fuck Kyle, this old guy squeezes each boob and then heads back out the door. <laughs> no, he just was a doctor. I'm not sure. <laughs> he was checking me for a doctor? lumps. But I doing it not even in like a sexual way just like pensively like <laughs> like really trying to oh i've I'm, I'm seen enough yeah like, just, like, moving your finger like, i feel like if you're polite like most women will let you you know get a get a get a grip on there especially if you can it's very easy you just you kind of get into the conversation just basically naturally you would say really well i've never i've never even touched a fake breast i i wouldn't even know where it, are you sure those don't sound like gonna work me. And then yeah. it's going to go, for, well, touch him if you want. Like, the, totally. Every time I've ever gotten in that conversation, it ended with me grabbing somebody's boob. Like, like, sure. like, like, it's because they paid for it. They want to show it off. Like, that, uh, so, Kyle's somebody. not 72, so, like, it's probably that not going to work with, like, yeah. with Woody. I know. Like, hey, uh, well, Woody I, play it off as just, like, a senile stumble, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a thing, though. So... I, I haven't had fake boobs, but I have had this testicular torsion surgery when I was 15. And even... The same thing. What? Yeah, yeah. I was sitting... What at, happened with your balls that you needed to untw untwist your balls surgically? So, it, it, I, a lot of people have heard this before. So, in fast forward, Kyle took his headset up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in fast forward, um, I guess, I don't know if it's your vas deferens or whatever, but there's some sort of like tube that, that holds your testicle and mine was longer than normal. So um, it allowed the testicle to, to turn up and I'm sitting there in biology class in 10th grade and it hurts. Like it hurts like a bunch. And I felt my jeans were too tight or something. So I kept like pulling them down and giving myself a, a little more breathing room and it's not resolving the problem. So, um, so I go to the nurse and I'm like, you know, my testicles really hurt. Like, you know, one of my testicles is a lot of pain. And um, the nurse didn't want to, like, you know. Props for you for going to the school nurse. I would have been like, look, you need to let me call my mom so I can, like, have the pediatrician talk <laughs> to me about this one. I, it, I mean, like, it, props maybe, but it, it hurt a lot. Like, I was, yeah, I was so getting was a little concerned. And, um, and the nurse didn't want to, like, cup them and, and check it out. So she got, I think, a gym teacher over who may have had some sort of first aid training. Coach, and, Coach Paterno, over here. Pretty much, yeah. So the gym, Woody's balls. <laughs> the gym teacher comes over, and I drop them, and, he, you know, he, he touches them, and, and he's like, you know, like, I, he's like, look, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but there's something going on. And we need to get this guy. Let's to get win. Sandusky over here. He'll know. <laughs> oh, shit. 
and it makes some like gym teacher pun like huh, that's no dodgeball and then just <laughs> send you to the hospital and at, at this point i'm like moaning and stuff like i'm in pain and uh, uh, they like they're like you know what it's between classes right now we can get you on a stretcher and into an ambulance nearly privately you know it, if if we just fucking get on the ball presto and that's what they did they got the ambulance there nobody even knew and uh and we're headed across like it, it's hard to describe it but like this road that's on a bridge at 45 mile an hour limit we're going like 80 and uh and i'm like in the back like moaning and like like oh god like I'm like, all, like you know <laughs> and i'm like can you go faster cuz i'm looking for some relief from this and the passenger's like yeah you know dude can you go faster and he's like i'm going 80 like like it's pretty quick for an ambulance in a 45 like it's not like maneuverable and uh we get there and I'm, I'm in the um, the emergency room, right? And we're all separated pretty much just by curtains, you know? Like there's a lot, it's like a big room with just curtains dividing everything up. And uh, and I'm like the noisy one. And my father, he, he literally, he's like, they're, they're taking care of you first, keep it up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because like, like, like you can walk in there with a broken arm and if you're like, oh dude, sit. it's chill, you know? Then they're like, all right, you know, but this guy over here, we don't know what the scoop is. And they, they wheel me into a room that says nuclear medicine on it, which, like, this is, like, the early 90s. I've seen that room. I, I always think, like, I want to go in there. Maybe I'll come out fucking supercharged. I'm going to get up in there. I don't need that shielding. Don't give me that lead vest. I just Prior hide to that, the machinery. Prior to that, my calves were like toothpicks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they wheel me into the nuclear medicine thing, and, and I guess they injected my, like, circulatory system with something see i'm gonna want some of that too mm -hmm. inject me with right something in there, man. <laughs> and, yeah. and and then they're able to like i guess blast me in some way and they can just see where the blood's flowing and i like it's, it it's not flowing to my balls like it's sort of a hulk to. type thing yeah sort of and so uh, they're like there's something wrong with your balls woody we gotta yeah well at i this thought point, it was something cool like you you had like done a kickflip <laughs> and like the skateboard and like twisted your nuts. Like, you know how you seal up uh, some bread when you're really that's exactly and you want to you want to eat your sandwich and you're just like. <laughs> that's what happened to his balls. That's all uh, I thought. He it was. almost got castrated, uh, like so they, self castration. So it sounds like they went in there and uh, and they, they slice right down the t there, down the sack and uh, and I forget. I don't know what color he said they were. It was gray or dark blay or grack or what or black or something. Like they're supposed to be right. Yeah, he's like it wasn't good. You know, he's like we saw these things and and he just sort of unspun them in place. And uh, he's like <laughs> immediately they pinkened up. Like he was very pleased with the reaction to being <laughs> unspun. Like, mm, those are some healthy testes yeah, right there, boys. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, you know, I think we're gonna be okay here. And uh, by like day two, I think I spent two nights in the hospital. Um, Damn, he, he was just like, dude, it's good to be 15. Like you were bouncing back. Even your stitches heal quicker. Like everything was good. And, um, you know, I was worried about my fertility, but those questions were later answered. Hey. And, uh, um, and that's it. I actually have a couple stitches that hold my testicles in place right now for life that stop it from ever happening again. I want to yeah. get that as a preventative measure <laughs> you huh? can touch mine and see if you like them if you yeah. feel just right you're like oh yeah there's the stitch yeah, i'm okay, telling you it is a real upgrade oh, <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> stitch ball sacks jesus fucking christ i hate that story every time you tell it i just want to check the fuck out every <laughs> single time because it, it, it just sounds like the most aching i know what it felt like i, I know it sounds silly but i know what it felt like i Everybody imagine like, a dull aching pain that goes like from it's testicles to, to like, like belly right button, yeah, and it goes all the way wide, and it just hurts, and and you can't even nail down exactly where it hurts because so much stuff is hurting in that area, and it's just excruciating. You're crushing just, like, right it. That's exactly goes... what it's like, and and we probably all felt that, but it goes away in like what seconds? Seconds, like even thirty seconds is weird. You see it in UFC fighters a lot, like they get kicked in the balls, and then they're like, "Can you still fight?" And 30 seconds later, he's not even sh like, am I, should I go back? Like, I, I kind of at 100%, but mine yeah. lasted for hours. And, and that's oh, the no, right. Thank you, dude. Yeah. I didn't get it on that. We were talking about titties and whores and, and having a good old oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the, the whole reason that popped into my head is during that procedure, nicely done, Kyle, um, I developed hey. kind of a, like, I, I lost my, um, 
what is it called? Like not vanity, but like I, I lost my shyness around this uh -huh. inhibition, maybe. You know, and like doctors are walking in, just like looking at my ball sack, and I'm like, you know, so better. <laughs> you know, what do you think now? And uh, you know, almost like a pregnant woman, you know, like like by the time they're ready to deliver the baby, they're just like, whatever. Here's my hooch. I've been showing it off for nine months now, and uh, and it's it's they're just like not private about it anymore. Is it a sheer lack of inhibition, or was it like some Vicodin? Oh, it could have been. Check I don't know. Balls, Doc. Check them out. <laughs> I don't know. But but just yeah, having like a, you, like you know you had a whole team of people in the OR and you had the doctor and the nurses have been checking it and like replacing your bandages. So this woman, who I think has had like many boob surgeries, is probably just not the same level of shyness as someone who hasn't. So there no, it is. Yeah, I, uh, I I find that something I, to hide it. <laughs> through it's like you know, removing a tumor or something like that. But this most is women aren't very shy about their boobs as long as you're not a weird creeper about it. Hmm. That's true. There's a very fine line you have to walk. Yeah. I call it, I call it the titty line. <laughs> <laughs> it's a razor's edge. <laughs> and it's on it. it absolutely is a razor's edge because you have to be interested in the breasts, but you, ha you can't be like stroking yourself while you, while yeah. you do it. You know, it has to be somewhere in between where like. <laughs> now I know where I'm going wrong. We're like clearly <laughs> interested. Are those, are those real? <laughs> yeah, part you have to be you have to be at least sixty forty split, where like sixty percent of your interest is like medical and scientific and general curiosity, and the forty percent is just general attraction. And that way, you don't come off as a real weirdo. Feign, yeah, you have to feign more curiosity, so it's like, more. Yeah. Oh, you. No, you, those aren't. No, yeah. those aren't fake. No way. No way. Those are real. Can, can yeah. I? Can, can yeah. I give them a little? Little? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, like, 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 you know, something like that. Then you, you get some titty squeezes in. And we could totally get Woody hooked up with somebody with some fake boobies, I'm sure. I'm sure there's dozens there's of... There's probably someone stuff. watching this right now who's like, you know what? He can do it to me. You know, I, yeah, don't wanna, I don't want to let that poor old man die without ever or, having touched Or maybe maybe your wife boob. out there. Maybe she's got some fake titties that Woody, Woody could give a, give a haunt. We're looking for some big ones, though. We don't want, like, some... We want, like, some big, giant stripper titties. So really? that, like Somewhere I, yeah. between... At and what we're seeing here in this picture, because this picture here is frankly just unappealing. It it looks un, it looks like a video game character that a twelve year old got out of control with. And <laughs> so here's the deal with the, with like the way fake breasts feel. It really depends on a few different things, and one of them is how big the breasts were before the enhancement. Because if if she went from like a B to a C, those are some nice boobies. If she went from a C to a D, those are some really nice boobies. There's lots of like real booby on top to like feel when you're yeah. like touching them before you mm -hmm. get to the enhanced part which frankly feels like a bag yeah, of too small pollution. and you jump too much then it removes all the density of the titty flesh and so you're yeah. just feeling that bag of viscous is it saline now is that what do they do saline uh, silicone yeah. it depends uh, but but you know it's very hard it's the skin can be very tight it doesn't bounce or do cool stuff that's not always ideal but you know to each his own it's pretty if, logical there's no such thing as a fake titty anyway. If you're if uh, if you can touch them, they're real. That's my that's my book. Uh, yeah, so. I, I I've never touched a fake boob, <laughs> but a lot of guys are not fans of fake boobs. I uh, it's, as are liars. It's I was gonna say it's like all depend on what Kyle says. Like if you have somebody who goes from like an A cup, like there's not a lot. Like you just put it underneath the muscle. So like if you don't have a lot there to begin with, and you go up a couple cup sizes. Like, yeah, it's probably not going to feel that great, and it's going to kind of look a little wonky because it's not proportional to you or something like that. But if you get proportional boobs, like maybe up one cup size from a B to a C, like he said, or a C to a D, like it's going to look normal, it's going to look good, it's going to feel pretty normal, but at the same time, like, you, you can tell. I mean, it's like you can, you know, like a good squeeze or two, and you'll be like, there's not, something's like not... Something's it depends. Right here. I, I think I've experienced that four different times. Um, oh, there was there was one lady who one. was who who's had just very very big boobies, and she was actually older. Like she was in her late thirties, I'm gonna say. But mm. she had went from like a C to a D seemingly, and those were excellent. Those felt real, and they were like big and like unnaturally perky and all that stuff. Those were excellent. Those are like, yeah. But sometimes I, I've I've also known very tiny girls who it was clear like just didn't have any boobies at all. They had like an A cup or less, and they had gone to like a C. And in that case, it's just like super tight skin, like like two half half circles just pop, like stuck yeah. to the chest. Like a drum. Um, 
a drum skin, like a snare drum almost. Yeah, like, yeah, very, very <laughs> tight fitting. Dead, it's, tight. Uh, yeah, that's not the best. Um, no. Uh, so, so it really depends, and I've also known girls that went from like a B to like a big C, and that's pretty nice too. But it just really depends on the surgeon as well, because I know they can do like a, under the muscle or over the mus musculature, and I think you want it to go under. I think ideally you want them crammed in through the armpit, uh, mm. and in some cases, you know, they're moving the nipples around. They're cutting the nipple off and moving it somewhere else. You don't fuck with the nipple. I don't want you to make sure you don't get all like crazy. Yeah, I'd like like <laughs> <laughs> something with those nipples because like. Yeah, I feel like that's a big part of what makes breasts Some attractive. Really it's nipples. like, you know, symmetrical nipples that whether they like turn up or go straight out and look at you. My or taste in nipples changed as I as I went through puberty. I like all nipples. There's no it's bad nipple. There's there are like bad Amazonian nipples. Amazonian three inch nips, just like fucking you know, so any size really. When, any size I, I I'm with. Yeah. But I'll say this. What happened was when I like the whatever nine year old version of me like small nipples right that was this thing nipples should be smaller the smaller the better that that was just like tight perfect put together etc and then um as Long i got older like dude like, nips they yeah like that, dude you know nips. what's funny because as i got older it was like you know what i don't like a, nipples that look like mine are not what i'm looking for anymore i want <laughs> nipples that look like hers I don't care. I like all nipples. Like redheaded mm. chicks have like tiny little pink nipples, and those are cool. And like Filipino chicks have like these really dark brown chewy nipples, and I like those too. And uh, you know, <laughs> uh, they, they can be big and red. And I like, love that they're chewy. Yeah, they're chewy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <How laughs> so nasty. Like yours, like very short, or like a pixie stick cut in half. I don't on. care. Like, like they could be long. They could literally be like you know, like an inch long or something. Or they could be like really All tiny. Right, you can up. like I'll... give a blowjob to a girl's nipples. Like, yeah. there, there so... needs no. <laughs> I'll one up Kyle. Like, we need to I don't care if there's a hairy right circle. Down. That nipple, boy. I don't Get care. Get down there. Get it down there. <laughs> I don't care if there's a circle of hair around the nipple. I'll still do it. Wow. That is you not. You'll a... suck some dick. First of all, I'm not surprised. But. So, uh, <laughs> But let me just say, that's a no fucking go for me. Ah, uh, like, see? Like, I if you have a hairy nipple, yeah, then I will can. bite what the hair, yank it out, and then leave. <laughs> I'll be like, get the, I'll come back when you finish the job. <laughs> like, like, so I, gross. I have an AMA question. Leave while berating her. I just did you a favor. I'll be <laughs> control. And then you just storm yeah. out. I I, uh, I got no problem with like pubic hair or anything like that, but if there's nipple hair, that's way too much. Uh, and if there's a happy trail, I know Woody was just like creaming in his pants every time he sees one, but like I'm kind of so checking out on that too. too. Same way that women you feel to have like, a nice belt matching nice shoes. That's how Woody feels when he sees a little bit of nip hair matching <laughs> the happy trail. He's like, oh, that's excellent. The tone uh, brown, brown, nice. You didn't mix it up. Like uh, well put together. Like I like the consistency here. Like. Air everywhere. A few episodes, Kyle suggested that each of the hosts get DNA tests to determine their racial makeup. He's if you so were now. to do that, is there any particular race you'd like to find in you? Is there a race that you'd be disappointed with? Hmm. So what do you want to find in yourself, and what would you disappoint? It sounds like low-key racism. I, I would right like here. it. I would like it if my ancestors had come from a long way away. Like I feel like if you trace my lineage like straight back to somewhere, like oh, they're they're from like. They're Germanic, and then from there they came from the Caucasus Mountains, and from there it was Africa. Like that's kind of lame and boring and, and vanilla. But if they were like, if if I had some like some Asian ancestor or something like like, and it was clear that like it, it not just Asian period, like like a very specific yeah. region Genghis of like, Khan, no. Japan or Genghis Khan, you know. Somewhere I mean, we're all related so, to Genghis Khan. Yeah, right. Like if if it were something cool, if if for me to be here required a few extra steps. I think that would be interesting. I would like to know that that like my ancestors took a few boats uh, through perilous passages or like crossed a strait somewhere before it before a land bridge disappeared or some shit like that. Uh, right. But I I don't think I would be disappointed by hearing any race if I found out you know I don't think there's any races that I I would be disappointed or that I would try to hide. I know Ben Affleck found out that his family owned slaves and he tried to conceal that and I don't blame him. But um, but as far as like a race, I wouldn't care. I am. Um, I'd like to have something in me that allows me to complain about shit, right? Like if I don't want to weed whack in the summer because I'm part Eskimo, then that would be perfect. Yeah, or, like something. I would like to get a casino <coughs> or something like that. Some of those benefits that, that that minorities get, like if it turned out that I was like one sixty fourth Cherokee, 
and I could get on some of that casino money. Like yeah. I'll be fucking chief, pay my ass. Like let's make it happen. I don't care. Or if I, if I had like some Asian ancestor and that got me like extra college credits or some bullshit, like sure, I'll sign up. <laughs> you just get college credits for being. <laughs> that's Asian. how it works. So you're on Asian, the other oh, hand, here's your five math credits. Like fuck off. That's how it works, right? Like that's yeah, what I heard. Totally, dude. With everyone else. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like you have a little bit of Japanese. We'll just pass you right on to Calc three. How's that? <laughs> Uh, if I find know, out that I'm Irish, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I, think guys. Money, the, I don't want to hear that. The I just, no thing, you're a hundred percent on. Like if you found out that you were just enough <laughs> to take advantage of it, that would be the ideal in this day and age. I think just to be like, well, I'm one twenty fourth, this or that. Yeah. Like, give me something. Give me well, something. My ancestors came from Italy. We <laughs> came here for <laughs> about this and that, motherfucker. Like, it'd be nice to like jump on board one of those groups that has like money behind them. What are you, Kyle? Right now, I'm just a white guy. Are you? So it's like, are you German? Are you Nordic? Me? I'm trying to guess. Uh, Germanic, I'm afraid. Uh, from uh, from the marshlands of Germany. Probably some Nazis in there, you know, right? I, I feel like uh, some mis th that that may be in my my heritage. I hope so. Uh, it'd be nice if I could maybe uh, look into that. I think we should do the the, uh, the DNA test. It's only like a hundred bucks yeah. each or something. If maybe there were Nazis in your heritage, that's almost like a success story of like, look, just a hundred or you know, eighty years ago, look what my ancestors were doing. Look what I'm doing now, firing guns on the internet. Not even hating Jews, uh, even, not very much, at least. You know, <laughs> I oh have God. several. I have several Jewish friends. I have, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, so totally, that's the totally, go -to, like, yeah, yeah. Jews. I'm like, I'm your black friends. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I like to point out that I don't hate black people. I even have a black dog. Yeah. <laughs> black dog. Um, uh -huh. it's... I can vouch for his black dog. Mm -hmm. To find out, I was like, well. I had like some Norway or Sweden in me, which I, which just because that'd be so weird to have Nordic in me, because like everybody in my family is so dark complected. Like my hair is pretty much black. My eyebrows are black. My entire. Like you got some uh, some some Italian in you there with that curly hair and everything. Well, I uh, like I have some Italian, well, Sicilian, Sicilian. I specifically. But oh. Tucker, what are you? Little I'm, sorry, I'm fucking the worst. Yes. Like I'm, I'm, I am, fifty percent Irish, Kyle, yeah. and I'm uh, fifty percent German, like right down the goddamn middle. Like I, I get what you were saying. It'd be cool to have something interesting. Like I have the most basic bitch ancestry. Like somebody was like really poor, or starving, or I, like I maybe Nazis, and then they came to America and like. It's something something and now I'm here like nobody fucking marched across the plains of Africa to get to where I am now I don't get to be I, like feel like the chosen one of my I, ancestors. I literally tuned out after you said Irish what was the other one German German okay Bonner German! <laughs> I would love das that if Germans! I had yeah, yeah I, I feel like someone needs to look into it uh what was that Taylor uh, my girlfriend just walked over and tussled my hair oh okay it. Oh, it's yeah. just a little tussle. I caught a little something there. I was wondering what what had happened. Yeah, I think we should do that DNA test. It seemed like if you like after if you if you did like more than one, you got a, a price break. So like three of them were like one hundred and eighty dollars versus three hundred or something. There was a discount. I'd totally be up for doing that. I think they just mail you a thing. You like swab yeah, your mouth, send it to them. Um, and it and comes out with like a good printout of like exactly like your percentile breakdown and like it's pretty cool. So I was like, yeah. Far enough, you can like everybody came from Africa. Like True. you just have to see how long ago it was. Like probably yeah. way longer. For I'd us. love to know. I, I'd like to know how uh, black is the blackest of you three. Like that's yeah, what right? I like I, who's the blackest of you all? I get oh, this big second. Probably question. not. It's probably Taylor, honestly. I, I, I would, feel like Sicilians yeah. are more black than like like. I Nordics. think there's some Mexican in me. Do you? Uh, I think would be, yeah. I think Woody might be the most Hispanic. I think like realistically, I think I'm probably the most black. Probably. Uh, Kyle is the most. Well, who hates the Irish the most? The most likely to have some hate probably. crimes in his. Uh, <laughs> I'd say someone in Kyle's family participated in a mass murder at one point. For sure, right? They're gonna be Armenian and and German, <laughs> like Armenian genocide and like. Wow, your ancestors Armenian. have shown up many times throughout Let's history. Go. Genocide after genocide, Armenia. <laughs> like going somehow to related to Stalin too. It's amazing. It's like wow, great. Yeah, you hit all the axes of evil. <laughs> Kyle's grandparents. Chairman Mao, <laughs> like oh, somehow God. snuck his way in there. Your mom had a fling with him or something like that. Yeah, maybe yeah, I, I, I that'd see be cool. Kyle maybe being like Bosnian. Maybe like there's some Bosnian there. There's some, some block uh, states. You're a very block statey. You have a block state face. You know. You have a very Eastern European look. 
Yeah, you look like you could be in the gulag. It's not just like, because you kind of in the wrong time period. Thank you. I appreciate You're welcome. that. I, I, I've got to work on this face. I've worked to cultivate that Eastern Bloc gulag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like to think he'd be the prison guard, though, right? He wouldn't just be in a gulag. He'd be the torturer. He'd be the one that knew what was going down uh -huh. and didn't have the, deniability, the plausible deniability after the war. Like when they were showing the video of all the atrocities and all the other soldiers were like, you know, burying their heads in shame. He'd be the guy in the back with popcorn like, I did that. You see me? <laughs> <laughs> See me waving? Like the past yeah, increased the production at Death Camp 14 by 80%. It's yeah. like, I was a goddamn good killer. It was like, our to go off into the air. I hooked it up to the barracks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. We should do that. Uh, I, I really would like to know. Uh, maybe, I've got, maybe we've got some, uh, some evil in our genealogy. That'd be fun to root out. We to make a yeah. wager who was the most of everything and so see how wrong we were. So you got uh, superlatives for your genealogy before you even know it. Like who's the most evil, who's the whitest. Who's the <laughs> I like that. Most I, likely to be eradicated by some strain I, virus. I'd like to do like a, a, a bloodline thing that, that, that let, let you know what your ancest, ancestors actually did though as well. Like I'd love to know if they were like slave owners or if you know he was a merch, on a merchant ship or like a That's Ancestry.com. You can do that too. I did that one time, and I just lost $80, and they never sent me anything. They're really, really shitty. I don't know. I, that's just always what they're like. Find <laughs> your history. And you're like, oh, cool. I'm almost positive we didn't own any slaves at all. Wow. I I, you sound really disappointed about that. You're like, didn't even own people. Yeah. I think Tucker would be the whitest. I'll we never own I'd a people, but I might rent Beetlejuice. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. I don't know if you've ever seen any of his, uh, uh, his work. Uh, but he's hilarious. He's he, he literally is. I mean, he's retarded. I mean, he's like a circus freak or something. He's a uh, he's very interesting. I feel like Stern has a huge advantage in terms of putting on a great show with that cast around him. You know, he does. He has a huge wet repertoire of weirdos and freaks and just misfits. Yeah, and celebrities. He is. Uh, I was I was listening to the show today. He had Channing Tatum on. Um, it wasn't long ago he had Madonna on. He's he's always got a list guests. So. One amazing Who's thing, say no? Stern can do a cool thing, which is he can get celebrities to like answer inappropriate questions, right? Like, uh, I forget Taylor asked Chris Hansen something. Maybe it was an oral question, and he just wasn't going there. But I feel yeah. like if Howard Stern did the same thing, you know, he would go there. Like either because he's Howard or because Howard has a has a knack for it. But, you know, he, he, he I, I saw I'm sorry to butt in. I Go saw ahead. you guys had Howard St or uh, you had Chris, um, Hansen. Chris Hansen on here. That was the crazy. I was just scrolling through trying to uh, show Sonya what you were doing. I was like, holy fuck. They had Chris Hansen as a guest on this. Pulled it up. I thought you were joking around like there he is sitting right there. That was a big fucking catch. That's awesome. Thanks. He yeah. Podcast. He's really pushing his new show and I really hope it gets made soon. I don't, yeah, that, that was just like, I was so shocked to see that, just like chilling on the podcast. I was like, great. We have some really cool ideas that I, I, I don't want to mention them because one, I don't want them stolen, and two, I, uh, you know, I just, uh, I don't want to like let people down if we don't execute it, but I've got oh, some, we've got some neat stuff coming up that I'm pretty psyched about. Do it, man. Did the, Kyle's, Ky did the tires Kyle bought actually suck? No, no, Wings is just, uh, uh, Wings is just an asshole about certain <laughs> things. Like it, you know, Cooper tires are just another brand of tire. Like, it's not a it's not a lower grade of tire. I think I paid like, I think I paid like eight hundred dollars for that set of tires or something like that. Maybe nine hundred or something like that. They're expensive, fucking like special Can you give a story to this. What what about tires? Somebody was shit talking I, tires. Wings came over, and I think I was in the process of or I needed think Kyle. New I think it was on the show, and Kyle was buying new tires for his Camaro. And he's looking at Coopers, and Wings just was instantly like down on the Cooper. Yeah, and and I just had had this long conversation with Jeremy and a tire guy about why the Coopers are the way to go. How they like, yeah, yeah, you're actually getting this level of performance that these tires are at, but it's priced like this level of performance, so you're getting a top tier tire for a mid tier price. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, do that. I don't fucking care. I don't want the Pirellis were like. Twelve hundred dollars a set, or something yeah, retarded definitely. like that. So it was like I went with the Coopers, and uh, they've been just fine. 
he he made it sound like I was gonna I was gonna have a hard time driving down the road with these Cooper t- like bastard tires on my. Did car. Did he give you like a reasoning, or was he just like fuck it? I fucking hate the brand Cooper. Like he I, didn't give reasoning for it other than I don't know. Cooper. I mean, you know, like like I guarantee I've done more driving than Wings has. So like like, like I don't know why he has like a an opinion on tires anyway. I, I've I've bought I mean, five or six sets of tires in my I'm, life, which I'm sure tires are like pales headphones. in comparison to Woody's tire uh, buying experience. But I bet Wings has only bought two sets of tires. What did you say, Tyler? He said there's a, who knows, maybe Dr. John Cooper hit his grandmother. Maybe that happened. My that tires it- are bald as fuck. Like, they're so bald. That's dangerous, yeah. Woody. You got to change those bitches out. I, I, well, I actually ordered them. Uh, they, you I, should. Yeah, that, but, like, at first it was like, well, there's not enough tread. There's, like, I should have more tread. Then it was like, well, this wouldn't pass inspection. And then it now, at the, like, some of my tires, there's literally no trace of tread. They're racing slicks. How do you drive in the rain? Like, the ar- <laughs> I wouldn't be that scared because I live in California and I waited a while. But, like, even just wearing the tire thin is just makes it so easy to blow out. Like, on that's the side my of the fear. My fear is that they'll And that they'll fucks be you because then you just, you can't, like, I don't care how good a drive. You're going into the median and, like, somebody's going to die. It's you horrible. think so? Well, I don't, I've never driven with a blown out tire, but I've right. seen, I've driven behind one and it, I don't know who's behind the wheel, but it did not look like they had a fun time trying to drive it like within their lane. Cause they, they like, it blew out. So they immediately went towards the like front right tire. It like drug them into the right lane and then they like overcorrected. So their car spun out in the, like in between the two lanes and then they hit the median. And I was like, well, like, yeah, no, I ordered you know, new tires and then I had the team building event. So it literally might be like tomorrow. I'll, uh, I'll get oh, new yeah. tires. But, <clears throat> but yeah, they're bald as fuck. They're totally yeah. bald. Get so, I, uh, I think it is time for me to, uh, to tell you guys a little bit more about Authors on Acid. Our, tell me. Uh, our sponsor for tonight. So I have a whole little ad read here that, uh, that Chiz wrote me. And I think I'm just going to read it verbatim. So, this episode of PKA is sponsored by Authors on Acid, the world's funniest mobile app game. It comes recommended to us by uh, 9 out of 10 local binge drinking dentists. Authors on Acid is a game designed for friends, strangers, and just about anyone else under the sun to collaborate and compete in writing in uh, random, funny, ridiculously rude, and often hilarious short stories. Players can pass or throw the phone at each other in pass and play mode or play online games uh, either privately, amongst friends, or publicly. Each player takes a turn adding a sentence, but they can only see the sentence written by the previous player and the title of the story. This leads to some of the uh, stories making about as much sense as Arnold Schwarzenegger's political career. Chiz is hilarious. <laughs> Ch- God Ch- damn it. Chiz, you got me rolling. Once the <laughs> turns are complete, the full story is revealed and players vote on their favorite sentence, but that's not all. Want cheats? Check. Want funny shit to edit when you can't think of something? Check. Want to screw over your friends and delete their content? Fucking check. This game is Cards Against Humanity, meets Mad Libs, meets Draw Me Something, and we reckon you're going to love it. And did we mention it's free? Well, it is. So, click the link to download, click the link to download link in the description, or scan the QR code on the PKA overlay, and, uh, and play. And remember to share results for the world to see, but perhaps not your mother. There you go. I get it now. Did actually write that? He passed it along to me. Um, you, when you listen to this, don't don't throw your own jokes in there, buddy. <laughs> like, trying your best. What if but that's that, the advertiser's like, joke and we're ripping yeah, on our? Well, that was so Not bad, and they should feel ashamed. <laughs> no, it was excellent, Tucker, and you shouldn't speak ill of their their ads. Their copywriter. I was speaking il of whoever wrote that. The at woke. Oh no, we need to get the pictures back. What's yeah. great is the fact that you, uh, the last time we did this, you actually called it like three seconds before it happened. You're like, ready? I was just watching For what? It. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, oh, the call's broken four hours. We've been on this call for a while because of me, because I, I wasn't ready to start. Because you're the... not professional, Woody. Yeah, we were on this call for an hour and a half before, before we got rolling. But is it darker? Like, it looks like everybody's darker. That darker. It is darker. It, it gets like this. That's yeah. so stupid. God damn it, Skype. It doesn't stay that way, though. It, would, it may be... I don't know. I can maybe call it this way. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and didn't get it. God damn it. <laughs> I, didn't I was get really it. hoping. From a higher number. 
Maybe that's the the problem. I don't Start really want home. to sit here while you count down. Yeah, I think the counting down is done. But uh, yeah. that's I it. believe you. I can't see you, Taylor. So you went to E3, Tucker. Uh, I did. I'm gonna stop eating these. What were some of your highlights out of E3? Um, the, the, there was the controller. There was Fallout. Right. So you said that you guys talked about the controller. Uh, you know. You know. Let me. You know what was cool about the controller to me? I felt like. Finally, they had solved all of Ask a Capper's complaints, and, and, and he's, like, good now, right? Because, like, all he's ever been about is, like, hey, Probably I can't nothing. play fucking games. I play with my mouth and, like, two working <laughs> fingers. Cut me some slack here. And, like, it's he always went about it the wrong way, it seems. Like, he wanted developers to, like, put the map ability within their game. But here's a fucking controller that, that, sh that just solves all his problems. I feel like he's got nothing to complain about anymore. He should be loving it. I felt that way for a while. Like, I, I, it seemed like to me he enjoyed complaining about it. Like, like he, he picked the unwinnable fight, which is every game developer should have remapping stuff for, like, the 1% that needs it. And, uh, of course, this benefits from more than that. Like, like um, the big thing I used to remember is I couldn't go from COD to Halo and back very easily. Right. In particular, I think the reload button and, like, throw the grenade buttons were, like, the same... And that was always a challenge for me. But uh, instead of having it in the game, if you have it in the hardware, then suddenly every game has it. Yeah. And some people came out with it. I know Scuff has had remappable buttons for a while now. And he didn't say, like, you know, like, ah, oh, mission accomplished. It was like, no, let me s s continue fussing at developers. Well, I think he's probably happier that now there's a solution than to keep complaining about it because i mean I, I haven't talked to him in years but it right. seemed last like last time we had him on he just really wanted to play games without having to like because watching him play was really like he had to like have it balanced on his palms or something and then like move he looked like a hungry chipmunk eating a controller yeah he had to keep moving his like i couldn't move my eyes like this that much and still keep focused on what i was doing on the screen you know it's like he's playing piano while on acid and focusing on the screen or not piano yeah, but harmonica. pretty crazy <laughs> yeah well, he's definitely playing on hard mode I think that the difference with Scuff, so so Scuff, basically the remaps are just the paddles. So you can have two to four buttons that are remapped there. And it's not like you're remapping anything there. You're simply assigning the same button to those two buttons behind. So it's just, it's not like you're changing the A button to be something other than A. It's that you're assigning the A button to one of the four paddles. Which is great, and for most people that accomplishes what you needed to do for like the competitive thing you needed to like... Maybe sprint was now a click instead of you moving your thumb stick in, or some, or jump is different, so you don't have to move your thumb what, off of the aiming thing. Just in, in a few seconds, I broke my hand. Yet I was oh, like yeah? a pro YouTuber at the time, so <laughs> Scuff made me a controller where the paddle on the back was sprint, and I no longer needed to like use my broken hand to lean on that damn sprint thing. Like it, was, which is great, right? Yeah. I actually did that remap because of uh, my thumb would get sore after playing like you know hours and hours of sprint, sprint, sprint. You know, because mm -hmm. that's all you'd hit. These should be by the definition of first world problems probably like those examples should be like under the definition when they have those like italics examples my yeah. thumb would hurt from sprinting so much in call of duty <laughs> so i bought a 150 dollar controller so i wouldn't have to deal with it <laughs> exactly. yeah but i will say that the big all right so so i did get hands-on with that mlg controller and i thought that it was it was way better than build quality uh comfortable like you know just being able to be comfortable with the the fact that you know it is what it is having the placement of the sticks and everything i will say that while i love duncan duncan i love you're my bud you know who runs scuff but like that it's a first party controller the scuff is a modified xbox one controller no matter how you look at it it is a repainted controller with a paddle on the back but the xbox one's a, like elite what's up the the back panel he, he, he throws away the stock one and puts on right, a new he one puts it back in but yeah. i mean with for all intents and purposes it's just the xbox one controller he this one has, starts with an xbox yeah right this the 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 mlg one is built by xbox from the ground up without modifications so it, you know it's just Everything is meant to work in in with the remappable paddle. So it's not just the the three most impressive things were it was really easy to just take off the paddles and shit. They were magnetic, so you literally went pop, 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 they're all off, and you could just put them back on, but at no point did I feel like they were gonna fall off. So that that pretty much amazed me. But there were uh, 250 remappable profiles per controller, all stored on the controller. So you could have Forza, Hey, you know, every game you ever wanted with multiple different like remapped scenarios for it 
And then on top of that, every button and thumbstick and everything was, re was reprogrammable. So you could have, um, by flipping a switch, you could have like hair triggers. So you would only have to pull like a fraction of the inch. Or you could also have hair triggers on the default pull, but like the pull distance was, was actuated so you would only have to pull it like the same amount as a hair trigger, but you could pull it all the way in if you wanted to. Like there was just, you could change the individual thumbstick sensitivities. Like, you know, they basically, like it's first party shit. So they're just, they're able to be like everything our controller does, like you can now fuck with it, like whatever you want to do. So, I mean, while Scuff was limited based on like what they could do with the hardware, the, ML, the, the Xbox controller is just like, whatever you want to do, like, you can do it now because it's first-party stuff. So, I mean, I think that they did a really good job with it, but it's not going to kill Scuff. Scuff's still awesome, and they still have the pro brands and, like, all that shit. And the Xbox controller's still priced at the same price point at 150 So. Hmm. Until next year. Until next year. Yeah, you think it's going to go down to, like, 100 I thought they would announce it at 100 That would be crazy. Depends on the sales. It really depends on the sales, I think. I would imagine. I'll say that. I, I want to say if you really deck out a scuff, it's more than 150 also. It's mm. way... I mean, it's, like, 200 and some... But when you yeah, get, like, I think custom you get, colors and LEDs. I think they do a 225 one. Do I, they? I, I, I don't know. I haven't looked at their pricing recently, but it, I think it used to be you could get 250 yeah. or, or Okay. Higher. Yeah. That's, it's like, not, a serious thing. Controller. Oh. What's that? I don't know what Scuff is. Is that just a controller company? Like so a what Scuff right. would do is they take a Microsoft controller and they take the back panel out and the electronics out. And then now they put a new back panel on, which is important. The reason that's important is they used to just put paddles on the stock back. And they didn't yeah. mount quite right or quite as durably. Now that they have their own back panel, it's like it's grippier. I don't know it handles it sweat better. And the the paddles on the back. Yeah, you can see how you can see it's like a Remington. Like, you know how the Remington has that like raised grip, like almost rubberized paint mm -hmm. or whatever. It's got that Remington grip. I don't have the back panel, but basically there's two paddles on here. And then for comparison, here's the razor version, which has these two like rocker triggers that you basically put your thumb in or your finger in there. I preferred this and I used this, but they also have. Yeah, they also had an LED panel, so you could adjust the thumbstick sensitivities. I thought this, and this one only cost $69. I thought this was the superior controller to anything that anything anybody's ever released. I still think it's a better deal. It feels like you can program everything like the Xbox One controller. It's just build quality is way shittier than the, you know, any, than the scuff or anything like that. So is the scuff just like a redone Xbox so controller? It is, yeah. So yeah. they put a new back panel and they put the paddles on the back. Now the thing is, when you when you have a controller, you're really just using your thumbs to play the game, right? That's it. Some people do a claw, but that'll wear your hands out and give you arthritis. <laughs> so um, uh, you just use your thumbs, and then like for example, to reload, you have to take your finger off the aim, right? If you want to uh, jump, I'm trying to get my. Uh, I, I do it without thinking, but I think if you want to jump, you take it off and whatever. Yeah. Um, you know why? So that why would be like a. Switch. So like if you're aiming with this and this is jump, in order to get jump, you have to. You can't aim now. So instead of moving this, you basically remap jump to be a paddle. So you would be able to jump while still aiming. So it would compl You wouldn't have to ever remove your thumbstick from the. Mine has four paddles in the back. It's called the animal. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and now you, you, because you, you, I wish I had one in my hand, but uh, you like you can hold it, and you've got all these fingers in the back that are going unused in your gaming experience. Well, they don't have to be. So now you can jump and aim at the same time. You know, maybe you you find it difficult to aim and like do the tactical push down thing at the same time. Well, you can put that on the back, and it just allows you to do more at one time. Because do they do PlayStation controllers or just they do. yes, they do. Yeah, they do do PlayStation controllers. That Which is what's hilarious is that Scuff's main demographic is, I would argue, ninety percent of their sales come from Call of Duty, like mostly Call of Duty players. So then Xbox announces their Elite controller, and Call of Duty switches to PlayStation. So Scuff is relatively unaffected, considering they just sell PlayStation controllers anyways for scuff stuff so like when call of duty pros switch to playstation and all the kids that want to be call of duty pros switch to playstation scuff still sells their and control playstation are they getting their stuff first or are they both getting at the same time first now? same deal that xbox had you know that like one month exclusivity shit uh-huh but on playstation now so it's it just completely not, swapped yeah moving to that's weird so now our playstation player is going to get way way better they got no, dude. PlayStation players still suck. Do they really? <laughs> yeah, they're so bad at every video game. It's the greatest. 
<laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, the, the average skill level of a PlayStation player is way less. I don't even care what they have. Like, people are going to get so mad. But, like, it's just... It's a fact, man. Every game. Hmm. FIFA... Playing on play, like go look at the the FIFA pricing points for all the players. It's like fifty percent less expensive because nobody plays FIFA. There's like less players. There's less good players, so you just run into like shitty players all the time. It's great. I'm gonna get the new NHL game on PlayStation because I am tired of getting my shit packed in. <laughs> exactly. I play any game at all. Like I. <laughs> so good like i'll play a couple games on hard mode and i'm like all right i'm winning by like one goal but it's close and this is a really difficult mode i get on in some little you know xx stealthy mcgovern's 91 is just like 10 to nothing just like, <laughs> like it's not even close like he's doing button, you. he's doing button moves that i didn't know how to do like i just figured out how to like hold a and it's like oh i wonder if he's gonna expect me to move with the puck over here away from him and then he just like Knocks my stick up and steals it. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, what button was that? Hey, hey, what what button did you just hit? <laughs> Figure it out. Eat shit, faggot. <laughs> God damn it! I, I hate playing sports games online. I'm so. Bad. That's funny. I I had considered at one point playing Mortal Kombat online, but like I know better. I know better. There's no yeah. reason to do that, right? Like I can beat the game on hard. But it, it's not going to come Huh? Why would you put yourself down like that? To play yeah, it would be awful. I know I don't want to play against those motherfuckers. They're out there with game pads, and they've been playing Mortal Kombat for, like, like everyone that's ever come out. Meanwhile, I have pl I played one four years ago. Like, no, there's no reason to even do it. I'll, I'll just keep playing, like, people in my living room and enjoying that. Those fighting games are not fun to play against people who play all the time. Like, when I mash on that and I get, like, a combo, I'm like, all right, looking good. Like, looking like this guy is starting to, it's, everything's looking up. But they, like, intentionally are, like, XX, square, Y, whatever. Like, at, intentionally hitting these uh, <coughs> kestrel combos like their Mozart over there with their controller just consistently. It's great about that, though, because you can kind of, like, you can, like, hotkey those combos so that they, like, uh, they, they, they're, like, in an overlay on the screen. So mid-game, you can look, kind of just glance up, and there's your long-ass combo, you know. And you can have, like, five or six. I don't even know what the limit is. It's multiple this is combos. This so sad. We it's used nice. to just beat the fuck out of people in no, online I'm telling gaming. You, you learn now the we're, I, I, I know you're right. There's it, a learning the skill curve, Woody. Three, three, four years ago, it was like, I pity the fool who gets stuck in a lobby with me. I'm going to push your shit in. Now it's like, why would I be going online? They just hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, <laughs> because Call of Duty is like such a low skill level. Like, I mean, you're you you're like an old dude, and you could dominate lobbies. Like that's not how video games should be. Like you need to invest like 300 hours to be halfway decent in in at a game. Like that's not how Call of Duty is, and it's and it's and I love it for that. Like I love the ability to just jump, hop on, and fucking destroy a bunch of kids that are like, oh, this is so cool, first person shooters. I drop like a 90 bomb. Like that's great for me and my confidence. But Counter Strike, Mortal Kombat, like games that take. Like dedication. Mortal Kombat has has like different layers of skill it's though. When you scary. start countering moves and like when, no like on the fly. When you interrupt your a, own combo because you know they're gonna faint in, so you're like, ha, fuck you, bitch, going in with another one. You're like, yeah. oh, too much. Too yeah, much I for accidentally me. do that occasionally, and it rewards yeah. you when you do that sort of thing. And I'm like, fuck yeah, total accident, whatever. It's just like you, <laughs> it's like you're doing a combo, and then they like interrupt your combo with like three or four moves, and then you're like, I don't think so, and you're like, ah, and like rip yeah. their heart out and beat them with their arms. Yeah, Super Smash, right, Kyle? Like you guys I all Smash. Smash Brothers, right? You're, like Ooh, I thought it was Smash really Man. pretty sucked like that game until I started watching people online like playing with characters that I thought were shit, but it turns out that I'm just shit at playing. <laughs> and they're like doing like grappling moves, throwing them in the air, like comboing them just like combo instantly. combo. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I we um yeah. we we all played with uh, me and Chiz played with Filthy Robot a few weeks ago uh and Civ and just really got the shit beat out of us. So I I'm hoping that we're going to try that again at some point. He's coming to the PayPal event, I I think. I'm pretty sure he is. But uh, uh, that was an interesting game playing with him and his buddies. I don't know why he thought it'd be a good idea to like get his like his friends who are equally good at the game to play with us. But uh, we ended up getting gobbled up. It was rough. Even with him and his friends on your team. Well, there wasn't. It was a free for all. So like right out of the gate, 
like one of these guys rushes Chiz with like a ton of early, early units and just kills Chiz like outright, like 50 moves into the game. Basically, he takes Chiz's capital. And then from there on, it was like this weird bullshit where one player was leading in score so much that he could afford to give another player all these knights. So, and he was using those knights plus his own army to fight Filthy off. And meanwhile, like, I'm just way behind. Chiz is completely crippled, living on one little bitch city. And uh, the, the other guy was just playing everybody and just sitting, n- unwilling to help us fight the, uh, the other players. It was, just, it was bullshit. Eventually, we just quit. We just said, all right, fuck it. This, How many hours look, before you quit? I don't know, eight, like all fucking day. Dude, we started this thing at 10 a.m. I got up at 9.30 a.m. and took a shower just for a, for a Civ game. And we played from 10 a.m. until like 7 p.m. or something like that. I like the cows. It, like, I got up at 9.30 a.m. Do you like, recognize uh, the sacrifice? I know. That's exactly. <laughs> like, I, I got up specifically. Up. It wasn't day. like, oh, good morning. Well, it's time to start that. It was like, all right, I got to get up. It's the Civ game starts in half an hour. Like, the whole reason I, I woke up at that time was like the Civ game. Did and it just went. A blind panic of like, I'm going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I had I had enough time to get dressed and everything, but um, uh, hopefully next time we play, we don't just get absolutely shit on like that. That was not fun at all. That was not good. Yeah. Even Filthy got pooped on. It was a bad situation. Like, like part of the reason I did so poorly is because he, like, he and there was a great, uh, there was a nat- natural wonder between his capital and my capital, and he rushed in and took it from me. Like he, he he was like like I don't feel like it's fair for him to criticize how far behind I slipped because like he took my good city spot and then left me over here in a desert where like I had nowhere to go I had no no good city spots. But couldn't and, you uh, argue that he outplayed you to the national? Line? Oh, he totally did. Uh-huh. He totally did. Yeah, yeah, he definitely did. But like that set me back for the rest of the game, and he didn't need that city spot. He had tons of city spots. That's. He plays so wide. I don't know how he stays happy. I could. That's talk a, to him, but. Well, sometimes he doesn't. So you've got to you've got to think that each city is three unhappiness. Um, it, it took us a while to figure out how to play as wide as they do. They build lots of cities very early. You've just got to manage the happiness. You've got to settle on uh, real estate that has luxury resources. You've got to like always be doing trades with other players, and you've got to recognize which resources are valuable. Like all luxuries are valuable, but sometimes. There's a luxury there that's a unique luxury that there's only one copy of, and that's very valuable. Uh, so you want to do this thing? It was a topic they asked us to look into. I don't. I, I've heard of this, but I don't know what it is. So click on my link, okay, and then um, you know, open one. I, I like the top one, but essentially they ask Reddit if they are the asshole, and they just want to know, like, hey, like. I think for the game that they posted in the PKA Reddit, they want. Woody, they don't want me and Kyle or Tucker to look at this so that we get an idea of what the forum thinks as to whether or not who's the asshole. They want to get our opinion and see if we're right or wrong about someone being an asshole. Is that right? That's how I read it. That's how I read it, too. All right, so I'll take the top one. And then we read the, like, top comment and, like... And that apparently is the correct answer. Or, like, we just reflect on it. Yeah, we should, yeah. Okay. Go, like, top this week. Yeah, top all. I've never no, been don't there. do top all. Okay, top all has some shit. I don't know. Top this w- month if you're gonna do that shit. Um, <laughs> I went top Dr. month. Fiddiff. Top and, month. Uh, how do you do yeah. top month? Just Wait, go to top like, and then no, it'll. Answers. Oh, okay. I was looking at the answers. You no. Yeah, come on, fucking Kyle. What do you mean I'm looking at the answers? Like, what, I don't even know what the answers are. What are you talking Get about? Get the fuck off the web page. Thing, it Cheating says, asshole. This person is the asshole, or this person is not an asshole. We don't. We're gonna oh. guess what they are going to think. We're gonna we, figure out which one of us oh, thinks okay. assholes are yes. assholes. Oh, okay, fair all right. Enough. I like this. I'm gonna. I just like the top. The title. All right. Yeah, the length is pretty long, but we'll see. Am I the asshole hooking up with the girl who has a boyfriend? Yes. So I know. <laughs> I know that girl barely, but for a long time. We haven't had any interaction in the past couple of years. However, two weekends ago, we met it again at a big party. She was flirty, saying how good looking I am and how horny I make her. She's really good looking, and I'm not often the target of such flirty behavior. As the night went on, we fooled around, and she said she has a boyfriend. I wasn't sure what to do, but I was horny, and she was horny. And we were both tipsy, so we had fun that night. Fast forward to today, and we're both messaging each other a bit, and she still thinks that I'm bloody handsome. 
it's, I'm a bit unsure what to do. As I said, I'm not often the target of this much affection. So to be completely honest, I think the whole thing is kind of exciting. At the end of the next week, her boyfriend is away for a couple weeks and she wants to meet. The question I have now, am I an asshole if I agree? And there's a bunch of edits here. I don't know her boyfriend and I have no clue how their relationship is going. I only know that she hadn't had sex in a long while. Thanks everyone for actually having a decent conversation. I made my mind up. I'll meet her, etc. Well, okay. All right. Uh, this guy is not an asshole, and I'll tell why? you. So, this relationship is clearly over before it began. Like this, this is over. She's already cheating on him. It's done. It's it. He doesn't know this guy, but she's throwing him herself on him, and by not sleeping with her, she's not just gonna be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I'm just gonna go back to my boyfriend. She's gonna go sleep with someone else. Who will? So she, he's just giving that up to someone else. This relationship's over. The fact that she dropped the I have a boyfriend line, that was her plausible deniability of, well, I told him. I told him, and he still chose to you know, get together with me. This relationship's over. He seized an opportunity. But what he should do is make sure that not him, obviously, but somebody else tells in a roundabout way that boyfriend, like, hey, I heard that Stacy is cheating on you. Like, Again, this is some evidence for it, but make sure you keep yourself out of it so it doesn't seem like some underhanded thing to her. But that guy does need to find out. Yeah, dude, I'm all about that. I was going to say, at first I was like, yeah, dude, you're the asshole. He's not the asshole because there's nothing directly like, I mean, you could be like, yeah, you're an asshole to the guy. No, he can fuck the girl and then use that to be the savior and tell the dude and be like, listen, banged your chick horrible situation you're gonna want to dip out of this so he can sort of he can redeem his assholeness he's he's got if he goes in for the girl he's got to repay that by making sure that that dude understands that his girlfriend is not at all like faithful because you're right like she's not going to be like oh this one guy was like no i'm not going to have sex with you so i should just be faithful but he's got to repay the nookie with you know your girlfriend's a whore yeah, a little bit of justice kyle yeah. I think he's an asshole because he knows that this girl's dating some guy and that she's like making a clear effort to do it behind the guy's back and he's participating in that. Now, I'm not saying that I might not uh, fall right along beside him, but I am saying that what he's doing is an asshole -ish thing. There's a guy somewhere who would, not, who would think that he is definitely an asshole. Do I yeah. play? Do I play too, or just read the top? Yeah, comment? you can play too if you. I think the yeah. guy's an asshole. I think the guy's an asshole. He knows he's an asshole. That's why he's on the forum. Um, he can ask. He can say that. He can tell the girl that, um, you know, she's got to break up first. But uh, and, and I agree with with Taylor that the relationship is is, is not going well. That's why she's cheating. But uh, you can't just fucking. If she tells you she has a boyfriend and you're still doing it. I get his temptation. He's not often the the target of this kind of affection, but it's just you know, an asshole. What is one little sentence like of he knows he's an asshole, that's why he's here. Like that was like a slap in the face of like a little bit of logic of like you wouldn't go there if you didn't feel like you were being an asshole and like no on some level. So I think all of these people are going to be and I haven't read it, so I don't know, but I think they're all going to be assholes on a gradient, you know? So it's yeah. like wondering the degree to which they're being an asshole. So clearly this guy's not, or this person isn't in the clear. It's not like a, yeah, you go, keep doing this. But they're not like a complete, like, trying to sabotage someone asshole. Yeah, I want to, like, I was going to say, there's like a, they're on an asshole scale, especially if he follows through and makes an effort to make sure that this guy understands the situation. He's probably like at a solid three. Like, yes, he's an asshole to the dude. But he's far from, like, going in and, ho and, like, making an effort to fuck somebody who's like, I have a boyfriend, I'm not. And he's like, but no, you're going to have sex with me, and this is what's up. Not like, all he's... women, not all women at all, but there are women on Earth whose kink is being a homewrecker, right? Who, who thinks it's, like, they get an extra sort of sense of, um, like, uh, it's like there's ego dudes boost. Do. There are probably dudes, dudes like too. Yeah. But they, they're, 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 they get an extra ego boost by pulling a guy out of a happy marriage. You know, and, and that makes them feel good. Uh, he's not that guy, right? You know, he's he's somewhat less of an asshole than, than the woman I just described. So but like still an asshole. Five. We'll one say to like five, I'm going to two him. One to five is, on a scale of one to ten, with one to five being not an asshole by this standard, but still being an asshole. Because they wouldn't be coming to this forum for yeah. validation if they thought that what they did was on the up and up because they'd feel okay about it. And six to ten... 
is like you're legitimately an asshole. Like you are 100% not or not like 60 to 100% in the wrong. You're actively seeking out bad behavior because all yeah. of this, the nature of this kind of discussion forum, everybody knows that something they did is a little skeevy and they're looking for their feelings to be validated and they just want a big group hug of, you know, you, I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything wrong. You're all in the right. So, yeah, this guy, I'd say he's a, f on that scale, probably a four. four. He's, he's certainly underneath the threshold to be, he's, he's an, a like he, on our, on, on this scale, he's an asshole. So he's, he's underneath that. Yeah. Yeah. I put him on the cusp, I, five or six. He's right there. Wow. You're I'm lobbing good. him up there. Yeah, well, you know, he's he's. I understand both. He knows the girl's taken. Yeah. And, uh, All right. So, what's the top comment say? Oh, right. The top. One. Oh, the top comment says they are both assholes. Oh, so we all won. But that's <laughs> such a cop out. That's yeah. like I. That's not the the point. Is to figure out if the dude or who dude or girl, whoever is posting, we need to figure out if they are assholes or if like yeah they engaged in assholeish behavior. But the fact that you're here and like we understand the situation and can sympathize. You, like it's passable. Like nobody's gonna label you as asshole for Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll go to the second top comment. You're an asshole, she's an even bigger asshole. I was just saying Still that. a yeah. cop out, man. She's the he's the smaller asshole in the asshole, you know. Okay, third highest comment. You're an asshole asshole and she's a fucking cunt. All right. The, We're just like, from he's here. up here on asshole, and she's the six to ten. Like, we, you know, we're all in agreement here. All right. Uh, would you like another one? Yeah, yeah number two. I think this could be good. Am I the asshole for refusing to sell drugs to my mother? My mom visited me Ooh. in Oregon recently, and she insisted that we drive up to Washington where pot is legal so that she could buy some and ship it to herself. The problem was the post office was closed for Memorial Day, and she tried to send it, and she left the next day. Sorry, it's not well written. She asked me to ship it to her, and at first I didn't have a problem with it, but then I got to thinking. Sending pot across straight state lines counts as drug trafficking, and even in such a small amount, less than an ounce, it's punishable by up to five years in federal prison. When I told her this, she said there was almost no chance that I'd get caught if I packaged it really well. I still refused. Now she's getting a friend to ship it for her, but I can tell that she's really pissed. Is there something I'm missing here? Everyone I talk to says I made the right choice, but I still feel bad. So... Her okay. mom bought pot in Washington, where it's legal, and to ship it back involves her son taking a small risk. In Oregon, right, is where they they uh, are. That's right. All right, he's not an asshole. Simply because, like I, you know, the the laws for that are super, especially with like a border state between Washington and uh, border states on Colorado. They don't fuck around with that. Like they are very, very strict on that stuff. And the fact that it's a federal crime as well, state state lines is, are a very big deal. Hey, even even if it wasn't like a, 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 even if he was just like, can you go to Washington, buy me weed, and bring it back? Like that's still pretty fucked up. Like you're not an asshole for breaking no. the law, not breaking the law. This person is not an asshole. See, I was going into this until Woody got through reading, thinking like this was going to be a situation where she went to his house and she knew he would sold drugs and was like, hey, can I get mm -hmm. you know, hundred yeah, bucks? That's what I he was like, no, mom, no fucking way. Yeah sell to my friends and i was gonna be like oh shit, <clears throat> you dick but this is totally different she's saying there's almost no chance to get caught yeah your son could go to jail for five years yes there will chance on that that's really fucked up a modicum of drugs you are that guy is not an asshole he's doing the smart move not getting arrested for something that petty furthermore yeah, really mom's stupid. an asshole in this situation yeah mom, mom's mom is an asshole yeah mom how dare you put your son at risk for going to prison because you want to score pot fuck off mom it's not even that, like, you know, it's not even like we're talking about, like, heroin or, like, something that's, like, legitimately, like, I, you could go to a high school and be like, yo, I need some pot. Like, let's be real here. You're probably going to be able to find somebody who's skeevy enough to sell you pot. It's like, it's, you don't, you know, you don't risk federal prison over getting your son to ship you cross-country pot when you're just too lazy to go get, go out and get your skeevy connections yourself. Kyle, you want to weigh in? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you can't uh, can't be mad at someone who doesn't want to involve and in, be involved in criminal activity for you. Uh, <laughs> if you wanted to ship weed across state lines, you should have done that yourself. Yeah. The top-rated comments are pretty much the same, but I'm reading the second because it's better worded. Your mom is most definitely the asshole. Mothers and fathers are supposed to protect you and help you learn to better yourself, not encourage you into risky behavior. It doesn't matter if you're being a bit paranoid. It's an obvious crime and not at the level of jaywalking. 
There you go. There you go. Mom is I feel like that one's pretty cut and dry, though. That one was way less less morally fence walking. Yeah, that one's just like, you got to save yourself there, homie. Like, see if you yeah, can find some, like, more gray area so shit. I'll get a free point on that one. We're all up to two. Fuck yeah. yeah. All right. But yeah, that's, ah. Uh. I do but, like that this, I do like this idea, though. This is, this is a quality idea, whoever came up with this. Yeah, this oh, I like this one. Discussion. Am I the asshole for snapping at my friend for trying to advise me on my eating habits? This is bad timing given the current Reddit outrage. Oh, I see. It's right around the fat people hate. Fat me. people hate, yeah. Yeah. So I will give a quick background info. Basically, I'm currently at a healthy BMI, but my weight isn't the issue here. Irritable bowel syndrome is. Every time we get a meal together, he raises concerns about how little I'm eating. When I'm out eating with people, I get small meals because I fear larger meals will trigger a reflex which will make me shit my pants. I can't count the number of close calls I've had in the last month alone. And I told him that this is the reason and time and time again, and we are pally enough for that not to be a weird thing to, to discuss. He just doesn't get it. He's aware of my condition, but frequently he berates me about my attitude to skip meals because I'm a believer of only eating when you're hungry when I do eat out. We'll opt for the smallest thing on the menu. Sorry, it's red funny. This creates the illusion that I barely eat, but I eat heartier meals when I'm at home where a toilet will always be available to me. I'm not a skeleton. This friend isn't exactly inspirational in his own eating habits. Although he lost a lot of weight recently, which I'm very proud of him for, his idea of a snack is a 750-gram black block of chocolate polished off with a Coke and a half a bag of Doritos. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> after yet another comment over breakfast, I had a banana and a cup of tea and he had maple bacon and pancakes and ice cream. I finally had enough of his advice and lost my temper. I told him to stop giving me advice because he isn't at all empathetic about my condition and said I wouldn't take his advice on dieting. Admittedly, a not-so-subtle backhanded comment about his own shitty habits. In my weak defense, my blood sugar was low at the time. Mm, I, I see this is one of those situations. He may have oversnapped, right? He could have like, oversnapped. Yeah. But this is one where I could see how there are more details than are being brought to light right mm. now. Like, or like there needs to be more exploration. Yeah, this exactly. Area. I see this guy that's giving him advice as the guy who just lost a ton of weight and I guess now is like the grand poobah of health and dieting and wants to kind of like spout his, you know, platform. I think he's of a pussy. Why is he so, why is he coming on this thing and like asking all these people if, if, his, if his like friend at work's being an asshole or not? Like, I, is I that feel a like guy? He, yeah, it's, I thought it was. I thought they were both guys. Um, yeah. I just didn't. It it, I mean, it. Well, you're right. I guess it doesn't matter. I just. Yeah, I guess. I, I don't think. It, I don't think it does. I think he's just. Be, like, yeah, just tell him to fuck off. Like, like I, I've never had an issue where like Woody's been pressuring me to eat unhealthily, <laughs> and I just don't know what I should do about it. You know, I want the fruit salad, but he's getting the chicken sandwich, and I, I shouldn't I get something? Like, no. Stop being an asshole. Just fucking order whatever you need to order. And if he says something, just tell him you don't want to shit your pants. Like, see, like, and say it loud enough so that it, everyone hears it. See, he's not <laughs> saying that because if I guarantee, if these two guys are out and he's having his maple bacon, you know, fiasco pancakes, and the other guy's having a banana and tea, and the dude's like, "Oh, why aren't you eating more? You know, it's not healthy to not have protein." And blah 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 blah. He could be like, "Hey, dude, I literally don't want to shit my pants." <laughs> no guy's gonna come back and be like, "Well, you haven't thought about the sodium levels," and like they're gonna shut up because. And so that makes me think that this guy isn't actually being as direct as he's leading. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I feel like he needs to just the first time. Yeah, the first the time that, that that Tucker was like, "Nah, man, I gotta keep it light on lunch so I don't shit myself." Like I'd be like, "Ah, oh, all right then, maybe that grilled chicken salad then, or, or you know, whatever." Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. It just I sounds asked. like they're both. It sounds like they're both <laughs> not like you know, they're or like whoever the 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 person who feels that fault is just not upfront enough with whatever it is. And if they are, and the person's still like berating them, then fuck, you're not the asshole. Like by like, shut up. That bitch is so annoying. Then like that's a that's like a very. I I have my Another own. I just wanted to interject real quick is that I've noticed that when people use the word berating, they never actually mean what the word berating means. I sincerely doubt his friend was standing up at like I, just like, ber you like berating him. Pancakes. I can't believe you. The <laughs> That's berating. That's why I think he's a pussy because I think that somebody just gave him a little bit of tussling, you know, like, oh, pussy, what's wrong? Can't handle a man's breakfast. And he couldn't be like, 
No, not really. I'll shit, shit my shit pants. <laughs> <laughs> shit what my kind bridges. of adult diapers do you wear, George? <laughs> like, like, or, you know, like I feel like he's just he's just being kind of a pussy. That's what it sounds like. So I'm gonna guess that they're saying that 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 he is not an asshole and that his friend is an asshole. Uh, but that, that, there are things that can mitigate this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think there are mitigating factors that that mean that his friend is probably just enjoying his delicious breakfast and this guy is just a real bitch. What are you, what were I, you no, I, say? I think he's not much of an asshole. I, I'll, I'll get to that, Tucker. Um, I, I think, you know, probably he shouldn't have snapped and, and should have been more upfront, but not the biggest deal. Yeah, yeah I've this known people. It's not a life ending thing. I, I have no. my own Am I the Asshole story. Would you guys like to hear it? I'd yeah. love that, yeah. All right, I will submit myself to this judgment. So, I have a team building event. I have flown in people from Scotland, Texas, California, and North Carolina. And, um, and we're just all like pretty much the Woodycraft staff getting to know each other face to face because it adds a thing uh, above and beyond um, what, uh, what like, you know, over Skype does. That's outstanding, by the way, that oh. you did that. That's pretty cool. Well, thanks. So um, anyway, we're out here. We're like playing putt-putt golf, go-kart racing, laser tag and whatever. And uh, one of the guys, the younger one from Scotland, wants to get his dad a present at the mall. And uh, I'm like, all right, you know, we can work it in. Like, there's a mall near Laser Tag or something. We'll get a snack, and and I work it in the schedule. We get to the mall, and first he looks for new shoes. He's from Scotland, and the prices here are much better than he's accustomed to. So it's like a rare opportunity. And uh, also, I guess the exchange rates when he goes back into euros or pounds aren't as good. So there's some money lost by not taking advantage of this. Well, he doesn't find the shoes he wants, then he gets a present for his father, and then he starts looking for like other hoodies and stuff like that. And uh, um, it's all good and cool. You know, I love this guy. And uh, um, but as he's checking out, like the oh, rest, geez. seventeen. Okay. As he's checking out, the rest of the staff is kind of like, you know, this has been going on a little longer than it should have, or whatever. And. Um, like I knew that they were checking out, but they were checking out like 10 minutes ago or like 12 minutes ago. Like it's a long time in line. And uh, I go to like see, you know, what the scoop is, how much longer it'll be or whatever. And the cashier is this creepy fucking pedo stash jackass who is just like taking longer than he should, you know adding conversation to the cashier process and you're like taking too long or whatever. And then he's like, all right, I know you're ready to go, but I've got one more thing to tell you all about. There's a survey here on the receipt. If you go to this survey and do whatever, and I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right. You've had your chance. We don't care about your survey. And, uh, and, and we all like grab our stuff and go. And I still feel like I made the situation awkward for everyone. That no, I, no, you I probably I, did. But I wouldn't be like. Start fucking, look, I I got very very little patience for that bullshit. Yeah. If I'm at GameStop and they start trying to sign me up for shit and get me involved with coupon codes, I'm just like like no, 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 none of that. Like like fucking, I'll start swiping my card and it's not ready, and I'm just like chick 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 <laughs> like like doesn't seem to be working he's like well i'm just trying to get you to the chick chick <laughs> like five times and i leave that's my rule <laughs> like, you know at some point i gotta serve you uh, i don't so like all that bullshit i'm with you 100 percent. like i'll cut them off i'll be rude to them i was at a chicken pl- so i will i will i will give you a non-asshole stamp um and you guys can feed it can give him your, your thoughts on that and then i've got one too i think okay well i am saying you definitely made it awkward, but making something awkward doesn't make you an asshole. Mm. I hate it, just like Kyle, when I'm at some inconsequential f- fucking stupid store like Radio Shack that I go CBS to. Car- do you have your CBS card? <laughs> yeah, do you have a CBS card? How often do you need overpriced off-brand Doritos? If I come here! <laughs> I fucking never need those, so don't sign me up for a bullshit credit card. Don't offer it to me. Just bring me up. I don't even want a receipt, because I'm even if you charge me twice as much as what I bought here, it's still like nine dollars. So just <laughs> leave. Like don't bother me. Especially if it if they have that sales pitch to give you and they don't give it immediately. And yeah. they like, go on a meandering trail through, you know, shithead woods and nothing they say <laughs> matters. And then they get to it finally ready to leave that's just a terrible tactic when you're trying to convince someone to do something because they're already checked out they're ready to go especially when you can see there's a party waiting for them that's inconsiderate on his part not not an asshole not an asshole yeah dude. okay 
So I was at this restaurant called Chicken Express. It's like a drive. There's a drive through attached. They sell Go chicken ahead. there. It's kind of like KFC. Um, and their menu, uh, you know, the speaker at the menu doesn't work. Uh, so I'm parked by it, and a girl walks out of the restaurant with a notepad. Uh, but she didn't have a notepad, and she asked me what I want. And I'm just like, I've never been there before. I don't really know the menu. You know, at McDonald's, I know what a number one is. It's a Big Mac combo. A number two is, is two fucking cheeseburgers. I know this shit. But at Chicken Express, I've got no clue. So I'm just like, what uh, is this place called? Chicken Express. Oh, it's new to the, me. Go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I order my food. I'm like, I don't know. I'll get a number two with corn nuggets and a sweet tea, and she'll get like a number three with blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm not even really sure what's in this stuff. I just see like, oh, yeah, mashed potatoes, gravy, chicken. This will work. And so I get to the, the window, and they're like, what did you order? And I'm like, I'm not really sure. I kind of knew when we were out there. And she's like, oh. And, the, and she tells the other girl, he forgot what he ordered. And I was like, no, no, no. You forgot what I ordered. I, was like, <laughs> I knew, and I told you, and, and, and I, like, now you don't have it. And, and everybody kind of ignored that comment. And I'm just kind of like... Like she forgot what I ordered. Like, like, <laughs> can I like, get like, looking around for validation? Can like, I get some no, here. <laughs> and, and, and and so like she goes on and on, and then a leather lady comes. She's like, "You don't know what you ordered," and I'm like, "Yeah, I, I know what I ordered. I, I got like two different combos with chicken and mashed potatoes and corn nuggets and a couple of sweet teas." But like I told her, and she, I was, I said, "You know, if she had written it down when I told her the first time, we wouldn't be having this problem." And nobody really said anything to that. So finally, I was just like, they were still struggling with this whole thing, but like, like not knowing what to give me. So I was like, you know what? Here, here's, your, here's the drinks back. I was like, here, you can have these back. I'm going to go somewhere where they can take orders. And I, I made a big scene, and like, they acted like they were shocked. And I might have cursed a little. <laughs> um, but but I felt... You need to be able to accurately establish the situation. Honesty is paramount. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. but, and you can, did you say, here, take your drinks, I'm going to go fuck off, or were you like, go fuck yourself, your no, beverage is just I, like... I, because I was, I was like, I'm just going to go somewhere else, and she acted like she was shocked, and I was like, oh, here, take these, here, you can have these back, I don't, I don't want them, I don't want them, and I was like, here's the straws, I was like, we're, and I'm just, I was gone by then. Dude, I just, I, I, first of all, not an asshole, fuck those people who forgot your order, <laughs> yeah, fuck I, them with a, with a so broken bad. broomstick, but... Also, you know who else I want to fuck? People who get really upset with cursing, right? If I'm talking to Time Warner Cable and I'm on hold for like 40 minutes and I finally get some fucking thickly accented jackass who might be able to send like the reset message to my modem and make it work again. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy you're here. This shit's making me crazy. And then they come back with, sir, oh, language, no, please. sir, no, sir, no, sir. You're like, I just said, not shit. Don't <laughs> say that. And then, and what some, accent is that? It's Indian. It's an Indian accent. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't know that I can do the needful now. And, and it's just like, fuck. God. All I did is drop an S bomb, and now you're acting like you can't help me, and it's bullshit. I get very I frustrated. Be very, very conscious, never to curse on those lines because they don't I, want to talk to you any more than you want to talk to them, and they want to, you know, stamp your hang up on this jackass, move on to the next person card, and just get it going. But I've, Kyle, I on your gradient, I'd give you like. Because knowing your personality, I'm going to give you like a two because I know that you were not the the patron saint of fast Here's food. Here's my fucking uh, cops. <laughs> you were a little snarky and mean, but there's also no excuse for their level nine assholishness making a passive aggressive comment within earshot of you. A he forgot his order. Doesn't know what he wants. And it's like, I told you, motherfucker. I would have gotten so I don't I have to fucking... remember forever. Like, I, I gave you the information, you give me the chicken. I'm not supposed to submit to questioning at any point throughout this order. Like, you can't come to me later and be like, mashed potatoes, right? Like, like what if I get it wrong? Like, like you're just supposed to know. Yeah, yeah. it's not like, hard fast food. I assume they have a list, and they're like, hmm, who's the next person to come up? Oh, well, that would be the next one on the list. I wonder who the person three people from here is. No, I don't, <laughs> because it's three people down on the list. Like, just go on the list, right? I, I get really pissed off. I get really pissed off whenever I'm dealing with any kind of customer service, but internet issues specifically, because the first time, like, so I'll have an internet issue, and I'll have been on the phone with, like, three different customer support 
motherfuckers throughout the day. I've called the local office and the regional office and and some jackass on the internet. And like this is my th- my third hour of trying to get help and I get fucking Omar and Omar's like have you tried pressing the reset switch? And I just want to be like, motherfucker, don't you know who I am? Like, like, yeah. like I don't want to be hearing about reset switches. I, yeah, I held it for 10 seconds, asshole. Yeah, like, that's yeah, what that's... I did before I involved you people. What like, makes I me really mad, shit. yeah. What makes me really mad is when you know that you are at a level that is probably on par with their understanding of the subject and you just want to get to somebody who's way smarter you want to get to somebody yes. who says shit yes. that you yes. don't understand and you're like yeah. well i don't fucking know how to do that so walk me through it dude yes. so like when you have like an i i remember uh i have since i have fios they i was having like a slowdown on twitch and i was like listen i ran a trace route on my on my fucking computer. Here's it timing out. Here's the nodes that it's timing out on your ISP. Like, go contact these people. The guy goes, "Well, sir, usually when we have internet issues, we ask you to turn off your router." And I just went, "Can I please speak to your supervisor? I'm calling up and I'm going to give the next guy your employee number. I'm going to fucking raise hell." And he goes, "I will get you my supervisor." I'm like, "Hey, man, I ran a trace route. Here's the issue." And he's like, "Okay, let me forward you to my network administrator, who's going to walk you through some shit that you don't know what to do." He's going to get your data, and he's going to fix it. And I'm like, yes. It's yeah. hard to get that guy on the phone. It's so hard to get that guy. a lot per hour. If you have a yeah, business line, you go straight to him. Like it might, Not at this house. My last line, I had a, a business line because um, it was reasonably priced be through Cisco, and I just kept it yeah. forever. And, uh, yeah, you call up. Within five seconds, there's a human on the phone who is an expert in the field. Oh, that's and so nice. yeah, love- and I'll run down like what I did prior to talking to him. Like, all right, here's the here's the deal. Yeah, I, 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 I'm dropping packets. I tried reset. I tried turning off the modem. I tried this. I tried connecting directly to it. I don't know what the scoop is, but it's still dropping packets. Here's a screenshot of a ping, and I'll grab like a particularly rough section to make it look bad. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, <laughs> right, and and like you know, this is what I'm looking at. And he's, you know, he's not telling me to reset my modem. He's not telling me to do all the things I already gave him. It was great service. Yeah, business class is the bomb. That's nice. It but is. it's like 250 bucks a line, and I've got two lines My guy here. will be like, well, the squirrels must have got to the line again. <laughs> we'll see you next month. Yeah. I used to, I used to tear <laughs> into the village people. Yeah, that area right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a lot of squirrel activity down by there. <laughs> Dude, Causes so lots of problems. I used to have a phone service called Vonage. Have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. my God. It's fucking like Vonage. Uh, commercials. Dude, so here's the deal. I had it, it back when not having a phone home line was weird like yes. I, and i was trying to save a buck and i had vonage at unlimited long distance calling which is something jackie needed with her family and stuff so we had vonage and um uh it went out like it would break and it would <coughs> stop working and cell phones at the time only had like an hour hour and a half of talk time so i'd have a fully charged cell phone and i'd call them on that because clearly they needed to like reset shit that would break vonage on the call and uh I'd be on the phone for an hour. It wouldn't get solved, and my phone would cut off. So I start with calls with Vonage, and I'd be like, "Look, twice now, I have had hour-long calls, and my cell phone dies. You are level one support. You don't want none of this." And and they would do it. They'd be like, "All right, get you to level two. All right, level two. You don't want none of this. I've done this. I've done that. I've had two level two guys pass me on to three. Let's just skip this. Yeah. And and they would do that too. And I would just I would be super hardcore with them. Like just I'm not exaggerating. I, I have a hard either. time for doing fucking so, bondage, so, Woody. <laughs> so you, so I melt down before I'm able to articulate clearly to level one and two that I need level three. Instead, I get filled with frustration and anger, and I literally say things like. I don't think you're following along very well. Is there someone else I could talk to there? <laughs> and that always pisses them off for whatever reason. They're like, I, I'm not saying you I'm going to put you on hold, bitch. <laughs> I literally said that to a guy last time. I was, I was like, Damn I don't. Dude. It doesn't sound like you're following along very well. Is there someone else I could talk to? And yeah. that was definitely an asshole move. But he did pass me along to someone who could pick up oh, on what shit. I was saying. I, That's so with great. cables, so I have a commercial grade router, right? I like it because if I get DDoS, I can still work it, and it doesn't freeze. So they're always like, turn your router on and off. And it's like, no, this is not a 1995 router. Like, you don't have to reset things. But I just, I just lie to them. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. doing, I'm doing uh, it now. 
Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. On and off. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty seconds before. It yeah. Oh, the green light's on. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Check your end. Should be up. Yep. Up. Yeah. Right reset. <laughs> I, yeah. I I totally fake it with them. Like, like I've done that. I think everyone has. It's just because because it's easier than being like actually I already did that because they, they might no, bounce no, back. We well, verify. sir. You know, just to be sure, we got to follow the steps from A to B. I can't really go outside those lines or they'll. Kyle, you can't do that. If you fake it, they won't know how to service you better. <laughs> I really hate dealing with those people. I, I, I always get too frustrated, and I always melt down. I liked it, Taylor. All right, let's let's do a couple more of these. These are really fun. Like oh, these. okay. Um, to be fair, though, the only one that was even like remotely online was the first one. I've got one that, that I think is a, a more difficult call. Okay. I went out with... Oh, am I an asshole because I went off on a guy that kept poking me with a pool stick? So I went out with my friend to a bar, and they were playing pool. One of the guys kept trying to show off and predict where the ball was trying to go in next, and of course failing. So I laughed. I mean, it's funny because he was so sure about himself, yet applied no science at all to the game. It's just us. I can't hear any of you guys. Sounds like you shouldn't have laughed. What happened? I can hear all you guys. Oh, okay. Don't, oh, uh, maybe I don't own this call. I thought you, you guys did. there? Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can yeah. This isn't normal. And I'm getting all these. Oh, is it my internet? You're the only one who's blurry on my end, Woody. Same. I can't see any of your guys' videos, but you guys are coming through. But Woody said, oh, there you guys go. Oh, yeah, you're Kyle's blurry. Oh, coming back. Yeah, Woody, you look a little blurry, buddy. I, I mean, I've been working out. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you sound good, so it doesn't matter. But Damn, what are you looking blurry? Yeah. yeah. That's like a new, ooh. <laughs> Somebody photoshopped that shit? You see, oh. Woody, he looks blurry. <laughs> blurry as fuck. All right, so this guy's so you cut. All right, so you cut, out, you cut out with basically, can you give me a little rundown again? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just checking my internet connection, and it seems to be okay. No, it's stabilizing now. Hmm. Like you don't look like a piece of shit. Oh, yeah. well, thanks. <laughs> no problem. All right. Um, I'll start over. So am I an asshole because I went off on a guy that kept poking me with a pool stick? I went out with my friend to a bar and people were playing pool. One of the guys kept trying to show off and predict where the ball was going next and, of course, failing. So I laughed. I mean, it was funny because he was so sure about himself, he had applied no science to the game. Later, he started to poke me with the other end of the pool stick. The first three times I played it off as if I was in his way. But the third time I told him to fuck off and not to touch me again. Now I don't know how I feel. I feel like an asshole. I'm sorry. I don't well, know why, but now I feel like I was an asshole. I'm blurry about this at all. I think that this guy is not an asshole in the least. Someone's poking you and you tell him to fuck off. But it didn't yeah. start with that. It started with him laughing at a guy. It doesn't matter. They, that no, guy there's zero. Differently. Uh, yeah. he, he shouldn't have laughed at the guy. That's a clear way to... Like, you shouldn't have been surprised that he started poking you because you laughed at him. Like, I would not have laughed at him unless I was expecting some serious... Like, especially with something like that. Like, like I think you're greatly underestimating how, how, like, laughing at somebody's pool game might just get you stabbed with a pool stick or beaten severely at, at the wrong place. Something about pool, it, it's almost like this test of athleticism and an IQ test combined that it, it's a little worse to be laughed at. Some than, guys take it seriously. Yeah, like, like yeah. Um, if I'm playing ping pong, not me, but like a lot of people play ping pong, they're just like, yeah, my sense of self-worth is not wrapped up in ping pong at all. Even though they're, oh, look at this, it's all going oh, wacky. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, even though um, uh, maybe, maybe it's another timer thing because the call's so long. Maybe. But anyway, even though you're not a like a, a hardcore pool player people don't want to suck at that game for some reason like they don't just easily accept it pool's a tough one everyone likes to think they can walk up to a it's pool like table. poker too though you know, it's like that but it's mm. also the fact that this guy it, how about if you're not good enough to just be calling pockets like an arrogant pompous prick then don't do it and if you do it poorly expect to get laughed at a little bit sorry that's the way guys play sports and then you if you're yeah you if know, you can't take a little bit of banter like you, you like. What do you, what do you expect? Like that's the whole. Yeah, I, 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 I you can't I, retort a bit of banter, not even banter, just a laugh. Yeah. Like how do you predict more accurately? Are you that bad that you can't fall back on your skill at the game that you apparently care a lot about? This guy's a dick for poking him with the pool stick, and yeah, you should expect it kinda in a game like pool where there are you know douchebags playing it at a bar when they're drunk <laughs> and a little Pretty more bold than they otherwise would be. But this guy's not an asshole at all. The other dude's an asshole. 
yeah, yeah. The, guy, the guy who poked him with the stick's definitely a jerk. Yep. This is like the most clear-cut case yet. So yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, Woody. What the fuck, dude? I felt like the guy who poked him with the stick was being provoked. He took it to time by going four times, perhaps. He was being provoked, but I feel like he, he uh, I, I don't know. I, I, feel like, I feel like he shouldn't have laughed at him. However, I feel like he can't be laying hands on somebody. Like, there's like, there's like, like a... like he repeatedly laughed at him as well. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like everything could have been... I feel like this is not like a huge case of either one's being a gigantic dick. Like, they're just both like handling this situation poorly. And like, like how hard is he poking him, you know? Yeah, like, if he's yeah. like jabbing him and he's like, ah, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> yeah, right? It's different than like, ah, like, you know, like a little yeah, jab. Like, oh, dude, sorry. I put it so, in my head that... Um, he was maybe poking him while taking the shot. That's what I thought. Like, like uh, jamming it back and be like, boom. And then he's like, oh, dude. That's so, weird. But like, well, what a but, jerk. Like, I uh, I, in my head, it was a really gentle kind of like, you know, like a, a, a prodding poke, uh, you know, Gucci, Gucci, Gucci poke. Gucci poke. Yeah, like, yeah, get the fuck out of the, my yeah. way. Know the person. Don't touch them. <laughs> Don't fuck with them. Like, it's just, it's rude. That now, guy. Are we sure they weren't the friends that went together? If they were, then your friend's kind of a prick, and he takes himself too seriously. In which, like, in which case, he's or not your stuck. Friend should be with your friends and at your friends sometimes. Yeah, I, don't know. I this one like I feel like this could be easily mitigated. Don't laugh at the dude. Also, don't have a friend and or stranger like poke at you for no reason. It's just like <laughs> both of you could have handled that better. The end. Yeah. It's hey, true. I can. Uh, I, I don't know how your view is, but I can only see. I can't really see anyone. I you just see got you. Taylor. I you just wanna... got both of you guys, not Woody. Really? Do you it's want all... somebody you else to host the call? Yeah, yeah. I don't have Woody and uh, the Let's other. Let's hang two up and call back. Yeah. Okay. Let me... Oh. Let me hang up, Chiz. I see you, Taylor. I don't see you, Woody. And Kyle did not answer. Kyle's call's failing. I can see you, Tucker, just fine. Who on the call before? Uh, I think you did. Yeah, Do you want to... Oh, I think I have to add Kyle. Awkward. Was it... Maybe it was me. Kyle should be entering soon, hopefully. Well, he, I think he has just ping him to add. I just added him. To ping him to add me just in case that's what it is. And you just don't have a webcam on, Woody. Oh, there. He, he oh, that. that is what it is. I just didn't answer there. it right. Yeah, okay. I see you. Kyle, is your webcam on? Yep. No, it is not. Are you sure you? it's not like with the slash across it? Positive. Double click it. Oh, ah. you're coming, you're coming. Oh, you're coming all over. Yay! Hey, look, we're all in HD. All right, so I want to hear the comments. I want to know how many points we have. One of us has to take the lead at some point. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm on my way. I forgot that yeah. part of it. I think we've all got three points right now. I mean, no, we've all been pretty cut and dry with our asshole. I think we should all vote uh, actually, asshole Actually, this is the first one the where I time. disagreed. I think that I said he was not an asshole because he was so provoked. Yeah. No, that. No, you mean that the guy who laughed was an asshole? Yes. That's the guy who's asking. Uh, He's, you're saying OP is the asshole, not the guy who was poking him. We're saying the guy who poked him was the asshole. OP is not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Wait, wait. You're saying the poker is the asshole? Yeah. No, the poker is not the asshole. All of us are saying the poker is not the asshole, or, or the poker is the asshole. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Yeah, the dude poking the dude, he's the asshole. Building the stick is the prick. There you go. Okay, <laughs> this, you, this is where I fall behind. <laughs> if you will the stick, you're the prick. No, you're a saint for not kicking him in the stones. He was definitely the asshole, although you could have handled it better. You were not an asshole. Nah, man, you could have been more polite, but he was being a total dick and should have been prepared to face the consequences of his actions. Pretty much. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's point. That's right in there. I feel like, again, these are all really cut and dry. I feel like there's not a lot of ones that are like... I feel like a lot of people that are posting here, you know how Woody said initially, like, yo, you're not posting here if you're not sure. I feel like a lot of people posting here are sure that they're not the asshole, but, like, want further validation that they're not the asshole. I feel like very few people are like, dude, am I an asshole? Like, here's what I did, and 
you know, I like deliberately went out and took this girl out and I knew she was dating in love, but like I fucked her in the car and like oh, she didn't want it. I've got a great one. Then oh. let's fucking hear it. Uh, Kyle hurts uh, back. Should we After wait? these messages. Yeah. I, I had a fly land in my wine and it was really upsetting. Like it just killed itself in there. I haven't read it all yet, but I, uh. It's protein. Ugh. All right. <laughs> this has high hopes. I, I, it's relevant to us. I'm excited then. Yeah. I am excited. We have su we live in such a uh, connected area that like everything that could possibly happen to you know that could be conceived as asshole ish, somebody's gonna take it that way. Like there's <laughs> always somebody that's gonna be like, dude, that was such a dick move. Like I don't care what you say. I uh I told my girlfriend to fuck off and got a, a, a like a, a three paragraph email. Uh we were playing like I was playing H one Z one. Mm -hmm. And she came into my into the TeamSpeak channel that I was in, and it was just me solo, but I was unmuted waiting for somebody while I'm playing, and like asked me for about two minutes about if it's okay to eat reheated uh, reheated pasta. And like I love my girlfriend to death, but I was like top five, and I was trying to concentrate. I was like, hey, Sonia, fuck off real quick. Like let me just win this game. He's like, okay. Uh, she she was like, okay. Uh, can I eat this pasta? I was like, go heat up the fucking pasta. It'll be good. And then like she left the TeamSpeak. I got like a three paragraph essay of why I didn't deserve my girlfriend because of that one five second interaction that I had with her online. And there's always going to be somebody that's like, the way you framed it made you an ass, even though it's like the, in the grand scheme of things or not. Are you ready? Yes. Am I an asshole for telling a spoiler in the discussion thread of a fan club? I'm a member of a popular TV show that airs once a week. The way that our meetup works is we show two episodes a week, the previous episode and then the new one. In our final showing, we were again showing two episodes, and when the calendar invite was sent out, someone made a comment in the meetup discussion. The thread referenced something that hadn't happened in the last episode, and a response to someone who hadn't seen the previous episode got upset. I didn't make the comment, but in my opinion, if you're joining a meetup group dedicated to a particular show, you should expect that people will be talking about that show up through the last episode versus an email thread with your friends. In response so to person, petty. In this response is super to, petty. So I, I think basically this guy's on a TV show that airs once a week and he did a spoiler and someone got upset with him. But so, it sounds that this... Wait, can you reread? They posted it about an episode that had already been aired? That's right. Or, the, so so the an episode that was kind of fresh, he spoiled. Um, it had been aired, but it was it was the new one. And someone who was just a little bit behind was like, "Hey, you know, you just told me about the most current show." Is that uh, bad? That's pretty good. It depends on the time frame. Like if they are in a group mm -hmm. where they always watch two episodes or whatever, and he commented about the first one that they were all supposed to have watched, then maybe the person shouldn't be in the thread where someone could potentially talk about it until they've seen the episode. Yeah. Like, it's not like they entered a rant. It's not like they went on Twitter and someone was like, you know, in Game of Thrones, the end of season three or whatever, when everybody like, it was like, hashtag Joffrey died or whatever. So, like, so hypothetically. Like just, just went on there. It, this is, they went to a specific thread dedicated to the show. You're not an asshole. The other person is just dumb for going there and doing it. Yeah. So here's a hypothetical situation, right? Totally not about me. What if you're on a podcast that talks about Game of Thrones every week? And then maybe you say you talk about things that happened in the most recent episode that spoil it for people who haven't seen it yet. Does that make you bad? Why would that make no. you bad? Only if you bring up things that, that happen in books that, that show watchers haven't seen. Are you well, sure you're still in the hypothetical? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in literal land now. <laughs> I mean, hypothetically, like, if somebody, if what you just said is there is a show or there's a meeting or there's a group, if there is a set amount of people that you routinely do the same thing on the same day every single time, you should not be surprised if you go to that area and you get spoiled something that you should have done in that time frame. Like, I, don't, I understand if it's, like, two minutes after it airs and you weren't there and then somebody is like, holy shit. Like, the Red Wedding happened, and you're like, what the fuck? I just got home. Like, you know, that's maybe if they understand that you're not there, that's a dick move. But, like, if you're just not 
on the same pace as the other group that you do this with, that's just like, that's just you're being an idiot for going there. Like, you should know that's what's going to happen. It's a discussion. You, what did I say you know from the books? What did I say? You know what? The, ni the nicest thing so far about being caught up with the series, with Game of Thrones, that is, and pretty caught up with the books, uh, I, you know, I've got a book and a half left to go. However, I feel like I know what's going to happen mostly. Uh, I, I, now I can go to the subreddit, the uh, the ice of uh, the Song of Ice and Fire subreddit, the Game of Thrones subreddit, and I can enjoy those inside jokes. And there's a lot of cool content there, a lot of a lot of original content that comes out of those subreddits. It's really funny, mm -hmm. and uh, and lots of the fan theories and stuff like that. So I, I I'm enjoying that a lot more now that I'm kind of caught up. Yeah, but I don't think that guy's an asshole. Um, it's not an asshole. Not an uh, asshole. He definitely. I mean, clearly, he's he's he didn't do anything in t intentionally. Spoil away. It sounds like a lot of these people that go to this subreddit are just real bitches. Like they don't have real issues to even complain really about. Bitches. Like the what the drugs. The drugs is different because I feel like he literally was like, he, he was conflicted because it's his mother mm -hmm. and it's you know it's someone that he you know instinctively wants to like agree with and he really respects her opinion. That one made sense. Yeah. But like some of these and petty the first bitches. One. The first one yeah. makes sense. First one makes sense, but, but some of these petty yeah. bitches are just like, hey, uh, everybody says I spoiled the last episode of the show, and I wasn't trying to. I was just trying to put out some nice content for the, you know, for the forum, and, you know, I'm a moderator with over 1,800 posts now, and I think at this day and age, now that I got my Excalibur status, I should be able to, like, I don't care about all that. <laughs> like, yeah, they <laughs> seem like a lot of superficial <laughs> bolstering, like, details, like, even the, um, even... You know, even that one is just like, you know, and by the way, I'm an actor on this TV show. So, like, they should understand that I'm involved and know these things. You know, it just seems like a lot of it is just like, please validate me. Yeah, it's I would please. Say show it was. Wrapped in a humble brag. Yeah, it's a humble it's a brag. Big burrito yeah. of narcissism. Like, mm. I have a new topic. Let's hear it. A male contraception method. So, there's yes. two things coming. One is a male pill. And um, it's the first thing to be approved by the... Oh, this, so there's two things coming. One's a male pill, but that's not the one I'm excited about. I'm excited about Vassal Gel. And it looks like it's the first thing that's going to be approved by the FDA for men since the condom. Like for male contraception. Like that... That's literally how old the... the, the Let's do it. Thank God. What's it do? What is it? Yeah. So it's given to you by injection into your i think into your vas deferens it's kind of oh no hang in there I, like with a needle no so all right listen through right i'll it, have 12 kids i don't give a shit <laughs> it, it's in the same it's like an all it's like a better alternative to a vasectomy so with a vasectomy as you might know they give you a small cut operate through it they cut your Vons deferens and they like fold it over and sew it back together right and then that means that that tube can't deliver anything well what this does is they give you a small um anesthetic and then they put a gel into the vas deferens and that allows i don't know what other fluids travel through it but it allows anything else to flow through it but not the sperm it catches the sperm and some people i think it's if you're like super sexually active um, there can be like a back pressure that causes a pain from a vasectomy. My father had that because he's fucking super sexually active. And um, so that's an issue. But it's not an issue with this thing because the other fluids can continue to flow. So basically, instead of cutting your vas deferens, they just put a gel in there and now you're infertile. Yeah. Oh, and it's way more easily, easily reversible. Because How about that totally. pill, though? <laughs> so. so here's the thing with the pill. The pill isn't going to change anything for, for men. Here's, here's the one thing it will change. Uh, you'll know that you're not knocking anyone up. If there is a That's situation great. where a condom breaks or where something happens, it definitely it's not your first line of uh, defense uh, because it's not going to protect though. you from any STDs. It is just going to keep you from getting someone pregnant. So when the moment of truth comes and she's like showing you the, the, you know, the test, you can be like... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Like show her the bottle of pills. Exactly. That's like, what I'm yeah. saying. Instead of in the like the single most terrifying thing, and I swear to God, when I have a kid, like I don't, I was an idiot when I was like 15, 16, 17 years old, and like you're sex sexually active. Like I don't care how much good, you know, education you have. Like you're an idiot, and you're gonna make a stupid mistake. So the fact that I made it out without like having a, a kid or anything like that, I'm super proud of that and not you know fucking up my entire life so the fact that there's a pill now 
that you don't have to rely on somebody who's a teenage girl that doesn't necessarily remember her homework every day, but you know, you have to trust this teenager to remember to take a pill within a one hour window every single day at the same time and missing it even one hour later could fuck up your entire life. Like, whoa, put the ball back in my court. Give me that pill. Both of us should probably not fuck up and give me a condom like nobody's having a kid. Like the there are six the, lines of defenses. The pill doesn't make, so th there's a pill. This article talks about a couple of things. Um, one, the pill's an everyday thing. And I don't right. like that. I, I like for me, I'd love to have like a safer alternative to a vasectomy, a right? That, that to me sounds great. An everyday pill, like, oh, you have to keep paying for it every month. You have to keep taking it every day. Plus a lot of these things are hormonal and what is it going to do? Is it going to give me pimples? Is it going to make me fat? Is it going to make me aggressive? Like, I, I don't know what, is it going to make me grumpy? Like, you know, think of whatever thing happens to your girl when she's hormonal. I don't want that. You know, I'd just rather be fucking awesome all the time. Because I'm a guy. I'm in favor of it. Any more birth control methods for men to have, like, just less little shithead kids running around. Okay, we don't need listen to people. this one. Tell me if you'd want this. Um, there's a clean sheets pill coming, which basically you orgasm, but there's no ejaculation. That sounds frustrating. That takes away half the reason. Yeah, I feel like, what? It's like fucking... I save up specifically to make a, a, a mess that is, that is worthy of several towels yes, of cleanup. This is like, the New Year's Eve be... confetti that we yeah, celebrate. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yay! Like, that's like my... <laughs> invisible ice cream. Like, exactly. Taste it, but I see, it, I my, my auto blows over there. A tear is just running down right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, this is the balloon drop where we celebrate the action. I will say this, though. If I could take that, like, personally, if it was, like, a three-day thing, like, you don't take it for three days, then you're back to, like, being a geyser, like, Peter North status. Great. Let's do it. Because when I'm at home, if I don't have to walk across the room to get, like, paper towels, that's, that's a win for me. Like, let me nut, pull up my pants, and we're back to business. Like, I'm going to edit some videos. Like, you right? know, that's you're, with no cleanup. That's you're going deal. home for Christmas and you're not sure how to handle the whole, like, you know, <laughs> the, what, <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, I just want to, you know, quick gasm. But, but I'm, um, you know, like in my old childhood bedroom and I don't have it, you know, tooled out like I did before. Then, yeah. Clean tooled sheets pill. Out? Tool, well, yeah, what are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> there were so you many. Know, you don't have it kitted out for masturbation like you did back in the old days. So many no, in that. No lube coming from under the drawer. Like, nothing you just like want that. A quick <laughs> gasm, but you're not tooled out. Like what? Do you, what do you like? Like pops his sleeves and like lotion comes out of one arm and like condoms come out of the other. <laughs> 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 the half gadget, just like <laughs> time to put his bedside table and like paper towels and wet wipes come out of the side. <laughs> He opens the drawer. There's one of those like springy things that like strengthens your grip. I've like. got an entire bookshelf dedicated to like vibrators and shit, but all the like pages those... of the books are removed so I can hide things in there. Yeah, con you have yeah, so you can give yourself a stranger with your arm all numb so it feels like a girl. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the clean sheets pill would be good, but I'm sure it doesn't work like that. I'm sure you have to like it's really. But yeah. honestly, it's a thing to keep more kids from getting out there. With too many yeah. kids out there, just yeah. It, the the problem is like I fear I fear that like there's gonna be so many dumb bitches who like believe the guy who says he's on the pill or something like that. Like like I feel like it's not. That it's was not an adequate. Dude, the, it, is that not a problem that exists right now with the exact opposite thing? Totally, totally. Uh, yeah. So Ad if you double up, you get two lion ass hoes, and if they're both like, yeah, I'm on the pill, and they have a kid like. They're, that's Darwin Award level. Hmm. And you're right. Maybe we should do all we can to make sure that doesn't reproduce because that's yeah. fucked. That child is fucked. <laughs> the pill doesn't... That's not what I want, right? I, I, just, I don't want to be taking a daily pill. I don't want to be paying a monthly fee. And I don't want whatever it does to... Like, a pill essentially... Yeah, it sounds bad. I'm not a doctor, but the pill pretty much like semi-fools the woman's body into thinking that she's pregnant, right? That's, like the entire... Yeah, exactly what it... Exactly and like, I don't know. Like, I, I get that it's safe and it's been really widely done and it'll be fine. But it also just doesn't seem perfect. Like, if there was a better option, 
I don't know that it's safe. Like, like I mean, how, how do we know that it doesn't cause like ovarian cancer like 3% of the time? Maybe it does. Like, we don't know what the pill's doing to women. We've only been using it for like 50 or 60 years or something like that. I mean, but that's still like a pretty good sample size. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's decent. Happen. I mean, I'm not going to tell her to stop. I mean, I think everybody, what, what, what he's saying is like if there was like a female equivalent of a, like a reversible vas- vasectomy, everybody would much rather prefer the female like everybody is in favor of a more secure easily done baby proofing than they are with a like non-reliable like oh i definitely took that kind of i like, told you something about low- a lot of the women options they either trick their body into being pregnant or there's the iud stuff which oftentimes is associated with like a really heavy flow and stuff and it's just like it seems like this is fucking you up at least a little bit Right, you get your tube size. It's fucked up in there. I mean, but there's also a lot of people that. I mean, there's also a lot of people that take the pill strictly for hormonal balancing reasons. Like they don't even do it just because they're sexually active, but because like, if they didn't, there'd be like five days a week, a month where they'd just be crippled in bed, like dead. There's yeah. that, yeah. Or their periods would be like two weeks, three yeah. months. Like you know, this. I don't know. Any... They just be bleeding. Con- like women yeah. it helps are with, crazy. It helps with acne as well. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. There's uh, lots it depends of reasons on too. the pill. There can be one, some that hurt with acne. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so um, I mean, it's all crazy. Stuff. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, it it just seems like now now like like t- like Tucker said, you know, sometimes it regulates the woman's hormones and can maybe be a helpful thing. But other times, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's like I'm not convinced that this is all. I'm worried goodness. about like what, how the pill stops sperm production in the man. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like it's, it's one thing if it, like it makes like like what I would want it to do, and I'm no medical professional, but like what if it like made your sperm retarded so that you you kept making plenty of them? That's another one. But, but, but they're just super derp sperm. Yeah, That's, yeah. Like like like, tails, like, like, like oh. now all of your sperm don't have tails. Like, like something like that. Solve. Yeah, like, fuck that, it. That, Kyle, you're a genius because one of the ones that's do. coming, um, let's see if this is the right one. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Jen Darusa is a pill for guys that's coming. It's an anti epin agent, which means nothing to me, but basically it's a non-hormonal thing and it targets the sperm's ability to swim. But what happens if you get a derp sperm that actually like beats the odds and like fertilizes? So you get like a kid with like just like a st- no arms, no legs, just like a stump with a head. Like that's then that's you're what fucked. Sperm is Danny DeVito. Oh stump. my god, and Danny or either that. Ah, uh, a twins so, reference. I, I so it. so here I've got another twins uh, little tidbit. So for the uh, if you've never seen Twins, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. It was a movie made in the '80s or '90s or whatever, where basically the premise was. There was genetic manipulation, and two twins were formed in a womb. One is Arnold Schwarzenegger, one's Danny DeVito, so he got all the good, DeVito got all the bad, and, and they lived separately their whole lives, and it's a comedy movie. They're making a, a new one, and it's going to have, and Schwarzenegger was talking about this on the Howard Stern Show. It's going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito, and their mother dies, and they go and listen to the will being read at the funeral, and they find out there's a third brother. And the whole goal is to find him and to see what he's up to. Third brother, Eddie Murphy. Oh, God. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so it's Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, and their long-lost brother, Eddie Murphy. Can you imagine the boardroom pitch when this happens? And, like, yeah. and the third guy, Eddie Murphy. Somebody probably had a heart attack. Like, what that's the what, fuck? We're bankrolling this? That's what they're working on right now. They Let's said Murphy's on board. I'm yeah. fucking down to watch that movie. Yeah. Right, 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 on- hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> he's black. Yeah. <laughs> he's black. A very Eddie distinguished Murphy. black guy. Eddie Murphy hasn't done Will shit. Smith? Years. No, 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 no. Better. Better. <laughs> Eddie Murphy. <laughs> He's got to be older to be a twin. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker with the goofy eye. They're hey, all I've got old. a name for the movie. Ready? I'm going to name it. Triplets. Oh, good wow. Well, you know what? That, that might catch on. <laughs> I, like the, I like the progression. Yeah, it's I, instead uh, of twins I, too, triplets. Schwarzenegger was on uh, the Stern Show. Like I said, it was a really, really good interview. I liked it a lot. Uh, they talked about Terminator, of course, but he also talked about his divorce from Maria Shriver and like the whole thing, running for governor, and his bodybuilding career and each of his movies along the way. You know, when he was starting out, and it was really good. I liked it a lot. That's yeah, yeah. and that getting Schwarzenegger to talk about some of these things, like the divorce, and I want to know what it's like to be in the Kennedy family. He talked about that. He he was talking about how like uh, she didn't want him to run for governor because like she'd had the whole thing with her uh, with her uncles running for president, and uh, it was a it was a really good interview. He, they talked about money and they talked about 
uh, failure. And, and he's always got this thing like Stern was like, you know, you were getting hit movie after hit movie after hit movie. Like, were you afraid? Were you ever afraid of like, ah, oh, if this next one doesn't do as well, like that's going to diminish my status in the world? And he, and he goes into his whole thing, you know, you know, I'm never afraid to fail, you know, in bodybuilding and weightlifting. Like you fail every day. You don't get that last rep. You come back two weeks later and you get the, and he sort of got that sort of mindset that failure isn't a big deal at all, that like failure is just part of succeeding. And uh, he's really inspirational to listen to. Uh, they didn't really talk about the, uh, the ugly maid that he banged. Uh, at least I didn't get to that part. Uh, Stern seemed to let him slide on that. But they definitely talked about the divorce and, uh, and all that stuff. Hmm. He is a like he is a good role model still to this day. Like whether or not you're into weightlifting or inspirational otherwise stuff, he's got he's got some stuff that he said that's definitely worth a good thought or two. Yeah, he's yeah. A, a bit Bill Burr outlines him better than I can, but you know he's like that guy is just an amazing human being, right? Like it, he could yeah. barely speak the language. He's a hit actor. You know. They, Everyone cared about him working out. He's like, I work out. No one gives a shit, right? But Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> suddenly him working out is this really big deal. And then he runs for governor. He marries a Kennedy, right? It, it's, like, it's like going to the, you know, the UK and, and marrying their royalty. He, you know, he crushed everything he did. But uh, still, cheating on your wife for like a decade and having a hidden kid out of wedlock, like these aren't small character flaws either. It's not yeah, like it's not like he's the best guy in the world, but occasionally takes a handicapped parking space. Like no, <laughs> yeah, he well, had some fuck ups, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to say what the struggles of uh, uh, a world-renowned action star are like. I'm sure there are many temptations that are difficult to to relate to. But that one However, made. I don't well, think they'd be one, hard. <laughs> no, one made, though. I can relate to that one. I've turned down worse than that. That's pretty nasty. That bitch <laughs> was ugly and older as well. Like, Schwarzenegger could have done ten times better. Like, you know, what was it that she showed him? Sometimes you want to go play shitty old games that are objectively bad because of the nostalgia value. Maybe he's just going back to a time where that's the... the tip of what he could get. When was that? Have you seen pictures of this guy when he's 16? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, dude. There's like never been a time where Schwarzenegger just... wasn't getting top-level pussy. I don't know. Like, I'm just saying that maybe he's got so bored with that top-shelf gray goose that he decides he wants he a hand. He just wanted a raunchy bitch, like one that would let him like shit on her chest without an issue, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> honestly, how many pretty ladies out there are you going to be able to just be like, all right, now I'm going to poop on you? Like, you got to knock them down six notches before you can be like confidently, I'm going to shit on your chest and you're going to be okay with it for like a decade. And they're like, yeah. I'm just being realistic. I can't figure out another reason why that he would soup down that low. I don't know what happened, but uh, I enjoyed the interview nonetheless. Uh, he, I, I want to see the new Terminator movie, I think. I do. I, it's got the Khaleesi in there. I'll, I'll check it out, I guess. Uh, they've got a good explanation for why Schwarzenegger is so old in the movie. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, basically, like, basically, he's just an older Terminator in the skin ages. You know? Yeah, so, and they yeah. just need to make him blend in. Yeah, exactly. It's looking weird so, if he's just 20 forever. Yeah, and I saw the CGI of like young version of him uh, compared with like the footage from '86 or whenever the first Terminator came out, and it looks pretty comparable. They do a really good job with CGI now. Fucking stoked! Yeah, I want to see. They do it well. That is. We'll see. Uh, he needs to be I, able I to move know. well too. Like that to me is a thing. Like um, Steven Seagal is a really good act example. Like he's an action star who I don't think can kick above my knee. And that, that's the, the good thing about the Terminator, though, because I feel like he was never like Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. He was always like a fucking robot. He like was always take like, bullets and just like, like he'll just like, grab you. And like, like there was never any like Kung Fu. It was always really kind of slow at times, but but like a robot, like a like a like a piece of machinery. Like when he'd reach out and grab somebody, it's just like it's or quick. Not, yeah. But it's just like, I don't know. It makes sense. Yeah, I see. A, carrying a hearse with a minigun like he doesn't do anything but shoot and carry this thing like he's just a tank that that's true so and, and, and i think that does help a lot but if he walks like his back hurts or his knees hurt then that uh, will kill yeah. it for me i i think he's in decent shape uh the first two i i, I like i like the first two of course but terminator 3 really sucked <coughs> uh, great though uh, was three the one with the like liquid, the hearse and or was it with the girl that's when he's carrying the casket yeah and and stuff. yeah it's, it's the really one lame. it was the most recent one not yeah, it, 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 not a fan. One female had a Terminator. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, female ter Terminator played by like. You're ah. right. I kind of blacked out of that one. <laughs> she, she, she's like, the, she's the chick from the Blood Rain movie. I remember it. 
Anna Krista Coven or some bullshit. Anyway, um, it sucked really bad. I didn't mm. like it. Hey, you want to call a show there? Okay. Uh, Wild <laughs> card. Um, that was Painkiller Ready, episode 236. Be sure to check out Authors on Acid, best goddamn game on the uh, cell phone. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's the best. Big thanks to uh, Tucker for coming on. Jericho is the man. Thanks for uh, having me again. Link Third to time. him in the description. He always does a great mm. job. And um, if you're interested in getting this show early or seeing the midweek Patreon uh, PKN, then uh, there'll be a link to the Patreon in the description. You can check all the stuff out that we got there. Also, paintball. Come play paintball with us. Very good. All right. Bye, awesome. everyone.